Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Morning. Welcome to Sewing Street. Sorry, the camera I was looking in isn't, isn't working. I was really confused. <laughs> Carla's laughing at me now. Anyway, morning and good. welcome to Sewing Street on this glorious, frosty, cold morning. It's lovely, isn't it? But we've got a wonderful day of sewing for you because we've got patchwork quilting and dressmaking and knitting. All in one day, so we are covering everything. But we're going to start with the early bird. So we always have on Sewing Street, if you're brand new to Sewing Street, welcome to the Sewing Street family. We always start off with an early bird, which is our special little deal, something we found or a special offer for you. And today we're starting with the sewing machine bag because we all need, if we've got a sewing machine, a bag to keep your sewing machine. Now, isn't this one lovely? It's full of cats, can you see? It's cats in prints. All different cats, some plain cats, some print cats. It's like um, an oil cloth, so it's wiped clean. So you're going to fit your sewing machine inside. It is 20 centimetres depth, that's that bit. 44 centimetres across the width and height. 38 centimetres. So the Brother Sewing Machine... Um, the Brother Sewing Machine will fit into it and also the 5 Series of Elna. So if you want to 
those are the ones that we've measured. So if you have a check of your machine, you'll soon know. But it'll pre in, pre it will fit most of the, the standard size sewing machines. You know, your extra large professional ones, maybe not. But just measure yours. So you've got loads of space in here to get your machine. And it opens up really wide so that you can easily get it. It's got a hard base and nice padded inside as well to keep it extra protected. And it has a cool pocket in the front so that you can put your pedal and your cables and any other accessories you have um, that all goes inside in the front pocket um, now that price obviously this is an early bird so that price says 39.99 but that is not the price oh it's got carrying handles as well so if you want to um store it because you need to keep it never keep it not covered because of dust dust is the worst enemy of a machine other than water but dust is a terrible enemy and also maybe you're taking your sewing machine to a workshop perfect for that so full price for this 39.99 but not today what's the hannah special price for this hannah special price day 19.99 that's half price half price for a sewing machine bag yes i'd love to see a price comparison so this is exact same bag on the Long River website, £28.53. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I know they've got free delivery, but, but back to ours, 19.99, 3.95 delivery. And then if you buy anything else as well, it's almost free, isn't it? 19.99. It also has a really cool little strap, for shoulder strap. If you want to put it over your shoulders or you want to um, you know, protect your hands, isn't that great? So if, your if you love your machine as much as I love mine, then doesn't it deserve to be looked after? And when you look after your machine, it will last longer because we all know... I mean, so machine bags can be expensive. And maybe you're one of those people like me who has more than one machine, you know? Right, we've got another price comparison. It's not direct because this one's got dogs on, but it's exactly the same size bag. So that's exactly the same bag, other than with dogs, but the same otherwise. That's £32. You see, £19.99. I think you'd get an overlocker in here as well, I reckon. I mean, do measure yours. If you go onto the, on the website, if you put the code in, if you look on the description, it will tell you what all the measurements are so you can check to see if it fits yours. So never put your machine on the floor without it being in a bag because it will get dusty and that's what gums up the machine and ultimately what causes the most faults with machines. But also, I know a lot of you go on workshops, you want to take your own machine with you, this is ideal. Oh, another price comparison. Same size bag, but just different print, but the same bag. $49.99. So we have a, we're paying $19.99. The closest pr price comparison we can find is what? $28? Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? $19.99. Now, that price, obviously, with our early birds, we guarantee that price till midnight or until stocks last. If we've got any left, that price will go back up again at midnight. So get it while you can. It's lovely, isn't it? Uh, the background of it is like a natural linen. It's even got like a linen weave print in it as well. It's very nice, isn't it? There we go. Right, let me just show you that price comparison again. Exactly the same bag on the Long River, £28.53. Today from Sewing Street, 1999. What's not to love? Always good as well if you're not using it for a few days. If I'm not using my sewing machine for a few days, which is probably only when I go on holiday, I always put its cover on or I put it in its bag. Always, always, because they hate dust. And it's... Oh, message. Good morning. I have the dog one with my sewing machine in. I've just bought this for my yarn and knitting from Karen. That's a good idea. A good point, Karen. doesn't have to be for your sewing machine, does it? Actually, that would be really good for my knitting because you can, I can get all my knitting needles in the front there and pat all patterns and you can get all your yarn inside actually that is really good and in fact looking at that i think it would be quite good fat quarter storage because it's about the, the base of it because it's got a hard base oh and it has feet as well if you put it down anywhere that would be really good so, story fabric so although it is a sewing machine bag good point count doesn't need to be used for a sewing machine it is brilliant quality so depth so just write these down if you want to measure your machine. The depth is 20 centimetres, width is 44 centimetres and height is 
38 centimetres. Loads of you coming in for that. Please do carry on because remember, once we sell out, that's it, gone. Good morning, lovely Rebecca. What a fantastic morning ahead from Jane. Good morning, lovely Jane. It is. It is a fantastic because we've got patchwork quilting, sewing, dressmaking and knitting. It's like my perfect day. If only we could just put a little bit of crochet on the end as well, I'd be sorted. But we've got knitting, that's fine. No, it would just be then my perfect day if we had all of that. And I'm with Sewing Street, so it is like the perfect day. There we go. And we've got Hannah and Kat and Bruce. What do you want in life? There we go. Anyway, I will leave that with you. Right, should we have a look at more specifically what's coming up today? So um, we have got eight o'clock Sarah Brangwin. Now I haven't worked with Sarah today before. This is my first time, so I'm very excited about that. Sarah won, runs fantastic workshops as well as doing amazing patterns. I've just been going through her patterns with her. They are unbelievably comprehensive. You are gonna love her too, as. Now her first hour, the Happy Scrappy Quilt, this is brilliant. If you are new to quilting, this is perfect for you. You are going to learn so many techniques, starting off with the complete basics of how to cut strips of fabric, all the way through to um, quilting your quilt and join as you go. And Sarah's going to explain that all to us. So we've got the quilt in various different colourways and I'm going to show it to you in a moment because we're in the new studio. It's my first day in the new studio. So we've got lovely, love loads of space to hang everything up. It's fab. It's so much lighter and brighter in here. So I'm going to show you that. So if you are new to quilting, you will love this. If you've always thought, I'd love to have a go, don't understand what's HST, what's join as you go, no idea what a rotary cutter is, you will love this. If you are more experienced quilter, then you will learn loads. And let me tell you, the booklet that um, Sarah's got is just jam-packed. It is top-notch and amazing value for money. In fact, I think the whole day is top-notch, amazing value for money. And, and then we move on at nine o'clock to Jules. Now, I haven't seen Jules. I mean, she's been so she I haven't seen her since sewing quarter days. And I'm a massive fan of Jules's patterns. In fact, I wore one of Jules's patterns yesterday to show her. Hannah said like I was like a child, show and tell. I said, I haven't just bought it to show, I'm wearing it because I love Jules's patterns. So I'm wearing my favourite Kate dress from Jules. Now, she's coming in with a jacket, which I'm very interested in. It's brand new. We have never had this before because I'm in the process of making my patchwork jacket. And um, I think this might be quite a good pattern for it. I'm gonna have a little chat with her about buttons and fastenings later. Anyway, she's gonna be demonstrating how to make the jacket. It's a really easy to make pa jacket. You can make it as a gilet or a jacket with or without a collar, so many options. And we've got all the fabrics too as well. And I can tell you from personal experience, these patterns are dead easy to follow. Really, really comprehensive. That's nine o'clock. At 10 o'clock, um, Sarah will be back with us. Now she's got a magic quilt with her. It's a pinwheel magic lap quilt. It's really, really clever method of making a pinwheel. Um, and Sarah will be showing you exactly how to do it. We've got it in, um, in various different colourways. It's a sort of a three dimensional quilting, but it's also really good to use as a fidget quilt. You'll really enjoy this. If you like the whole folded patchwork techniques, um, if you're wanting to expand your repertoire, try something a bit different, you will really enjoy that because Sarah's a great teacher. Um, Jules will be back at 11 with the Ada and Helena dresses. Now we have, well, Ada we've done sold out of. Helena we did a long time ago, sold out. So by popular demand, Jules is back with both of these dresses. One is like a wrap over style dress that can also be a top as well. And you can do a skirt and a top and a dress, three patterns in one, what's not to like. And then that's the aid, isn't it? Because it's going the way around. And then the Helena is the, um, the more tunic style dress. So she will be on with us at 11, again, showing all of her tips and tricks. So if you've got any dressmaking questions today, please do messaging, Jules is the woman. Um, and then 12 o'clock is Monday's Yarn Lane. We've got Mandy Cameron in, coming in with Wool Couture Cheeky Chunky Knits. Now this is perfect. Autumn is well on, uh, on us. Um, chunky yarn, super quick to knit. We've got blankets. We've got shawls, we've got hats, we've got hot water bottle kits that even come with a hot water bottle. Very excited about that, that you can personalise. Now, is that not the perfect Christmas present? Uh, look at that. I mean, that is the most beautiful blanket. That's a wrap round yourself and watch a box set, isn't it? That's a great Christmas present for somebody as well. Whether you want to buy them the kit or knit the finished item, 
but it's chunky, chunky knitting, so super quick. And Mandy is an expert knitting teacher. So we've got three fantastic teachers in, whole day of teaching. So get yourself a cup of tea, you are going to enjoy today. Um, anyway, let's talk about first how to shop before we get on with our sewing. So if you've not shopped with us before, there are two ways to do it. You can do it by phone. The call centre is here in the UK, just above us. So you can give them a call. They're really helpful if you're not sure about what code you're ordering or you've done something wrong or you can't remember but they're very, very helpful and some people prefer to speak to someone to shop by phone so just call the number 0800 001 4433 it's a free phone number as well the other way which is a bit easier to be honest is the website only because you can see pictures of everything i also find that easier go on to www.sewingstreet.com and then click on watch live which is at the top and then you will be watching live and then you can message in there so if you've got any questions or messages or comments or you want to share with us things that you've done yourself um that will come across the bottom of my screen to read out. Then if you scroll down, there's the early bird. Then the next section will become two, day, two columns. Coming up on today's show is the items that I haven't talked about yet. And today's show deals are the items that I have talked about. So at the moment, I haven't talked about anything. So this is everything that's coming up. Now, this is your chance if you think, because you know what it's like on Sewing Street, we sell out of our kits. So if you're you know you want to get ahead with it or if you're popping out at 11 you want to make sure you get the pattern then get ahead all the items that are coming up on today's show are there so all you have to do is click on um add to basket and then don't forget to check out because until you've checked out it's not yours you'll pay one postage and pack in for the day 3.95 that's it doesn't matter whether you order one item or 25 items or 300 items and it doesn't matter what they weigh either it doesn't matter whether they come from us whether they come direct from the supplier you will still only pay one pmp which is 3.95 so pop them in your basket and then they're yours there we go anyway anyway we're moving we're using our set today there we go oh i look very colorful am i <laughs> colorful i look a bit short actually um Shall I stand either side of it so you can see? So this is the first quilt. So tell me about the quilt. Anyway, good morning, first of all, Sarah. Morning. This is Sarah. Morning. This is Sarah. <laughs> this is Sarah. Really excited about the quilt, but no, this is Sarah. Lovely to see you. Nice to meet you too. We haven't done sewing street no. yet. I think you're the last presenter. Yeah, I am. Yeah, love your cardigan as well. It's very glitzy, very pinky, much. fluffy. I know, a bit of, yeah, a bit like of glamour. a bit, bit of glamour. So tell me about the quilt then. Okay, so this is called Happy Scrappy. And this was um, a quilt along that we did um, last year for our customer mm. base. And it went really well. It was loved. And the, the whole thing behind it was giving people that were experienced at patchwork a way to use up their scraps. Ideal. But if you weren't new to patchwork, giving people an opportunity to learn um, from kind of a, you know, from a distance. Mm. They couldn't come in to do the workshops. So we put it all together. And um, at the very beginning of it all as well, we gave people the opportunity to watch a video class on how to cut fabric using a rotary cutter so and ruler. So right from the beginning, right assuming from the beginning. nothing. Yes. yes. So if you're going to be a beginner, that's really daunting, isn't it? I've got this bit of fabric. Mm. I don't want to spoil it. Oh, I know. And, they, and it says cutting strips. What does that mean? Yeah. So we did a little class um, that uh, explained that to people, how mm. to use the ruler safe, uh, how to use the cutter safely and yes. the ruler. Um, so that they could, yes, get underway and feel that they knew what they were doing, basically. So this is the, this is your original one. This is the And this is the one. size that our bundles will yes. create. Yes, exactly that, yeah. But next to you is one, because obviously this is one that Sarah did a while ago. So this is one of the colourways, but... Um, but yours will be this size. Well, you yeah. can make it whatever size you yeah. like. But this is just one of the colourways we've got today. So it's a great way to learn. Yes, And absolutely. it's a great way to use up your scraps. Yeah. And we put together, because it was a quilt along and people were having to do it remotely, mm. we put together a really good kind of blog post each month to show them. Brilliant. And then we've um, refined that, got rid of the errors and put that into a lovely booklet now. So if you are new and, and you're a visual learner, you've got your instructions with loads of pictures yeah. and you've got the video as well. Yeah, and there's other lovely. video tutorials that are referenced throughout Gorgeous. it as well. Um, so this one, <coughs> excuse me, if it was turned the other way, it would effectively be like half of this quilt or landscape mode. Oh, I see, mode. yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a wonderful way to, you, well, to just learn things and use your craft. And also these blocks, you can use these for loads of other things. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing is that because big projects can be daunting when you're starting, we put it together so that it could either be a whole quilt and then you quilt the whole thing. But if that felt a bit too much or you didn't want to make the whole thing, we did it as a quilt as you go option as well. So um, 
you can quilt the bits individually as and a block. And the quilt as you go details are in the instructions. Yes, with a full video with tutorial. With a full video tutorial, because I know loads of you, whenever we do quilt as you go, I know everyone loves it because it, the big quilts are a bit daunting, aren't yeah. they? Especially on a normal little sewing machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a really good way of being able to quilt on a normal size sewing machine. And it machine. means as well that you can start piecing it together. And because it's blocks, you know, if you decided, well, actually, I want to make it another row wider, yeah, you, yeah, you make true. it up and then you go, OK, I'm going to add another row yeah. on now because, you know, it feels like it should be a bit bigger. I've changed what I was going to use it for. Brilliant. Right. So let's get on and show them how to make it, shall we? Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, message, sorry, I've messed that up. I was supposed to, yeah, I'm getting used to this new studio. I was supposed to wait until the message came up before I just completely disappeared. Yeah, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, nearly getting there. This is really bright, this colour, isn't it? My hair looks orange. Mm, very orange. Super colour. It's amazing, this new studio. Right, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to go through the bundles and then we can get on to the sewing. So this is, that's, which was the one on the wall? That one. This one. Yeah, this one. This is the bundle that was on the wall. So we're going to start off with this bundle. You get the full instructions. Now, I am going to go through these with Sarah in a moment. So I'll show you exactly. But look how thick it is. Pages and pages and pages with all the links to all the tutorials as well. So you get the full instructions, which I will be going through. And then you get all of this fabric, which is gorgeous. So you've got six fat quarters in these really lovely, the marbled shades. So you've got like a lilac, petrol, you've got a pale pink, apple green, white, dark green, red and salmon pink. All of those as fat quarters. Then you've got a metre of turquoise and a metre of white. And now all of that will make the whole quilt. What's the finished size of the quilt? Sarah. It is 49 by 59, right. uh, 43 by 59. 43 by 59 inches. You get two metres of fabric plus the six fat quarters and the full instructions with the video tutorials with the links to them for just 42.99. That's amazing value for money, isn't it? So that will make the colourway that I just showed you that was on the wall. But it, it will be that colourway, but obviously double that size. That's just a sample that Sarah's made for us. So it will be double that size, just forty-two ninety-nine. So you are getting a whole learn to patchwork and quilt for forty-two ninety-nine with the fabric. I think that's perfect. Right, let's do the autumnal colourway, being as it's autumnal. This one is already selling on pre-order. Now these are lovely. So we've got we've got a couple of prints in this one. Beautiful orangey floral print. These are gorgeous. These are cave fat quarters. Then we've got like a red marb, a scarlet marbled one. And then we've got a plain orange, yellow, brown and cream. And then there's a metre of gold and a metre of nude. So that's your kind of the background and obviously the full instructions. So they talk you right through the whole process beginning to end from how to cut out a piece of fabric to how to quilt it at the end now quarter stock of this one's already gone so you need to get the in your basket but not just in your basket you need to check out because otherwise other people take them and they just go so that's the autumnal colorway it's beautiful isn't it look at the shades in that one quite nice that you get the three um caves as well mm. and then the final one Oh, this is the cool colourway. So we've got the fat quarters. I'm going to go through those first. Oh, these are pretty. So we've got one. So we've got the pretty floral. They're all cut into fat quarters. And then a grey background floral, like a duck egg floral. And then a primrose floral. So this is a very, very pretty colourway. Then um, you get a pink like a duck egg blue, a cream and a navy. So it's sort of vintage floral, I would say. Then you get a metre of grey and a metre of slate bluey grey. So it's a, yeah, it's kind of like a vintage floral. 
palette, I guess. Very pretty. So you've got your sort of, your, you've got your bright planes I showed you at the beginning, then you've got the autumnal, and then you have this one that's your kind of your vintage. Autumnal is in the lead at the moment. And don't forget, the full instructions come with all of these. Now, we do also have, if you want to use this as a scrap busting technique, we do have instructions on their own. £12. OK. Right, I'm going to go to Sarah and we're going to get... This is amazing for £12. Thank you. Isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, it's amazing value because it's super thick. So let, I just want to show people how fab they are. Yeah, thank you. Because they are, they are really good. Quarter of the stock of the instructions has already gone. So you've got so much in here. So it explains to start with what these weird things mean, like HST and WAF. Okay, so there's lots of terminology in patchwork. Yeah. Acronyms in life everywhere. Um, so we just try to make sure that at the front of a patchwork pattern, just like in a dressmaking pattern, mm -hmm. you're used to finding, finding everything at the front. We've got nice descriptions. So a half square triangle, for example, would look something like that. So it's literally a square made of two halves. Mm. Yeah, and then there's things like quarter square triangles. They would look like that. Um, and so that's all going to be defined. OK. Yeah, just... quarter square triangle and a half square triangle. Brilliant. So we go through all of that and then we start. This is what I like is the step one cutting out because I think it's something quarter of the instructions have gone already don't forget this though oh you can color it in you can color it in so if you're sat there and you're a bit worried about how things go you can either color it in in your pattern booklet or photocopy that and just have a go yeah. at working out where the color should go oh that's go. a really good idea so yeah i would photocopy that so yeah, i could keep I changing would. it but i think the cutting out is something we often skip over we say we'll just cut it out yeah we? But you've actually also got a link in here to your website. To sh that's a masterclass. Yeah, because of I always out. get really worried when people are using rotary cutters about how the best way to use them because <laughs> yeah. they are super sharp and they're mm. super dangerous. So in um, yeah, in the video tutorial, it will show people how to go about using that. Right. And, and using it safely and cutting the fabric up. Brilliant. So and then we start, you know, all the basics: how to sew a half square triangle. And there's a lot of information on here. And we've got photos, we've got diagrams, we've got links to videos. So there's even a video tutorial making a half yeah. square triangle. And all of the information for this is in your instructions. How to assemble a block, how to sew a block together. And then we move on to actually how to create each block. Yeah, yeah. So each this block has got its own set of instructions, mixture of diagrams. Oh, yeah, I mean, there is photos. so much information in here. Because when I've asked people, some people really enjoy photos in patterns mm. and some people really enjoy pic like the illustrations. Right, OK. So where we can, we try and mix it up a bit. That's such a good idea. And don't forget, this full booklet comes with the, the bundles as well. Um, I mean, each one of these blocks is a set of instructions in itself. Yes. So we've got block two, block three, block four. They're all completely different blocks. All completely different. Some of them build on techniques, so you'll notice some similarities between the blocks. Oh, OK. But I think that that's really important because patchwork's all about the placement of fabric mm. and, and what colour you put where. And actually understanding that the same block, but made with different colours in different places, looks completely different. Yes, yes. So yeah, some of them build different. on skills, so you can begin to learn that as oh, well. Oh, well, that's good. So once you've like learned a half square triangle, then you'll keep using yes, it as well. Because um, it is yeah. just practice, isn't it, really? Um, then we've got block six. So some of them are rotary cut, which just means you're just going to use your ruler and your cutter to yeah. cut the fabric up. And then when you turn the page, some of them oh, are templates. OK. <clears throat> and I presume with this, you could just trace them so you don't have to cut your book out. Absolutely. Just yes. trace them. So, and so you're going to be showing us. I'm going to show you one of my tricks. How, how to how yeah. to use templates because that's another part of patchwork when people think, oh, I don't know about templates. Don't know. And you you don't have to. You can just trace these. You know, you can use proper tracing paper, greaseproof paper. You know, freezer of paper is the best. But you know, you don't need any specialist equipment for that. Um, block nine. Block 10. I mean, it just keeps going. Each one this as well is, is like a 12 and a half inch. Um, so the actual block itself is 12 and a half inches when right. it's finished. But then you're going to put a border on it. So you can make it any size you like. So any of these could be transferred into bag fronts or cushions oh, or course, all yeah. sorts of things in isolation. Yeah. Over half of the stock of the booklet's already gone. Uh, then we've got to block 12. Mm -hmm. it's, honestly, it just keeps going. Oh, so I'm going to ask, finished size, what did I... Oh. It is. 
No, 45, 45 by 59 inches. But obviously, you can make yours as big as you like because if you get the bundle, you can just add other fabrics. Now, this is the really good bit. So this is how to make up the quilt top with the sashing. Yeah. But then the join as you go. Yeah. Now, I'm really interested about that. Yeah. So join as you go, sorry. So <laughs> no, I've never done it before. So, so join as you go is quite straightforward, but it's a really tricky thing, I think, to put into a uh, picture sometimes. So we've just done a video tutorial. We've mm. just kept it really simple. So when you get to that part, you can pop me on in your room with you and I'll take you through it step oh, by step. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, because I've, I've seen it and I've never actually done it. So I'm really interested to see yeah. that one. And there are different ways of doing it, but that's my preferred technique. Okay, so and there is a video in here as well, so you can watch Sarah do it today, but then once you get your booklet home, all of the links are in there, so you'll be able to see exactly how to do it. And it even shows you, talks about finishing the binding, and again, you've done a tutorial for yeah. that. It's all there. Yeah. Because whenever we do instructions for quilt as you go or join as you go, they always sell really well. Oh, do they? Yeah. So just be warned, because it is a technique that I know loads of you love. Now, well over half of the stock of these have gone. Well, I'm just going to go back and um, just go through the bundles while okay. you get yourself ready and then we'll get on to some sewing. So, the first of all, let's start with instructions on their own, £12. Now, you've seen there is so much in here. You've got um, 12 blocks. You've got how to start, how to cut, how to make half square triangles and all of that. You've got binding, join as you go, sashing. It's all in there. I mean, it really is a complete patchwork quilting masterclass for just 12 pounds this is amazing value for money right we have now got fewer than 20 of the instructions left so if you've got it in your basket you need to get checked out because we are extremely low on stock right now if with all of the bundles obviously there are instructions come with all of the bundles so i'll start with the brights one which is the one that we had the sample of so you get all the fat quarters of red lavender it make that sample that we've got on the wall it makes double that size that's just a small example that sarah's made for us but it makes double that size these are all fat quarters so we've got red lilac petrol pink apple ivory bottle green salmon and then you get a metre of this turquoise and a metre of white. And the instructions, they come with the bundle. Right, if you fancy a bit more. OK, let me just let you check out with this one. There's loads and loads of you who are on the phone and have got this in your basket. So this is the Brights one. And remember, because you, the way that Sarah's arranged her fabrics there, you can move that all around. Because you've got that colouring sheet at the beginning, you can just move them around. And, you know, and there's loads of fat quarters in here. There's a, I mean, basically, you know, if you wanted to make it bigger, if once you start with this, if you wanted to make a bigger version, add fabrics from your stash. Add extra brights in there. Add some prints in there if you want. Have a go at one of the blocks using these planes and then you can just keep repeating it and make it even bigger. So that's the brights bundle, just £42.99. Do carry on checking out for that because I've got to get through the others and I'll let you know about stock-wise. Right, let me show you the old terminal the cat has beautifully arranged for me. Looks so much nicer now. So, oh, hang on, I've missed those. There we go. Sorry, the caves fell off the end. Now, this is the only bundle that's got cave in. So you've got three cave fat quarters here. And then you've got these plain fat quarters in beautiful terminal shades of red, orange, yellow, brown and cream. Then you've got a metre of gold and a metre of nude. These are your sort of the, ba the base fabrics. So you've got these beautiful cave prints and you've got this. So this is the most gorgeous autumnal. And don't forget, obviously, full instructions come with it. Fewer than 20 of this bundle left. It's just 42 99 I can't not get over what good value for money that is. Particularly when you consider the video tutorials. They are, they're worth their weight in gold, including the quilting instructions. Quilting and cutting instructions. So this is your journey. This is your patchwork journey. And if you are a more experienced patchwork quilter, this is how you're going to use up your scraps. And this could, well, this could be, maybe you haven't got time at the moment, but this could be like your New Year thing. Well, I'll get it now. 
And over the Christmas holidays, I'm actually going to learn how to do patchwork and quilting. So I'll get it now because you need to get it now because we are selling out fast. So the final colourway, which is the Ditsy Pastel, you've, we're on our teens for this one now. You've got these um, four fat quarters of print. So you've got like a primrose floral, a duck egg blue floral, one with a bluey grey background and one with the cream background. Isn't that lovely? Good morning all. Would this be okay for a beginner? Thank you from Linda. Yes, Linda, this is definitely for beginners. Sarah wrote this specifically for beginners. We did. We did. There's loads of videos that are filmed that when you get your instructions, all the links are in there so that you can watch. The, so you know what it's like that sometimes you think you read it and you think, oh, no, no, I don't like that. I know I have so many messages from all of you about I'm a visual learner. I need to see how to do it. This is why you love Sewing Street because we show you. But this is a hand holding thing in words, pictures and videos. So, yeah. But if, you, if you're Patrick Quilter already, I mean, you'll buy it anyway for the extra tips you'll get. And also all of those blocks, 12 different blocks. I mean, you could just make one quilt, a whole quilt using just one block. Or you can mix them all together. If you've got loads of your favourite fabric you don't know what to do with, get the bundle and then mix it all with that. So in this bundle, we've got the four ditzy florals and then we've got a plain pale grey and a plain bluey grey. And obviously you get the full instruction booklet there. The instructions on their own are about to sell out. So this is your final chance, really. Obviously, all the bundles have them in them, but this is your final chance to get them on their own because they are about to sell out. Right, so let's... I'm going to go back to Sarah. Let's do some sewing. Let's do so. What's, what are you going to start with? So, I know templates really worry some people, and um, they don't need to. It's just a different way of cutting. But it doesn't mean that you can't use a rotary cutter. It's just a different way of doing things. Right, OK. So to start with then, you, well, you're using freezer paper for this. So, yeah. So when you've got your template, what you would perhaps normally do is you'd print it off, cut it out, and then you'd either stick it on a piece of card like this, or you might put it onto some template plastic, which okay. is a little bit more robust. Right. The thing about card is that every time <laughs> that you draw around it with a pencil, depending on the thickness of the card, it just kind of wears away a little right, bit. Right, OK. <laughs> So um, it does work and it's perfectly fine, but you just need to be aware of that sometimes. But another technique that I use um, is the freezer paper because it allows me to really easily use my rotary OK, cutter. well, unfortunately, we're out of stock of freezer paper at the moment, oh. but it is coming back in. And if you've got some, it's not essential. You can use tracing paper, but freezer paper allows you to stick it, stick. I won't I say in inverted commas because it comes off and it doesn't leave a residue. Exactly. So I'm just going to draw around. And it's see-through. So because um, this is a straight template, I am just using my patchwork ruler. I would normally use um, a normal ruler because I don't want to normally get pencil on the edge of my patchwork ruler. But I'm just drawing around that. So what I've got with a template is you've got your stitch line and your quarter-inch seam allowance. So when you're actually cutting out your fabric, all you need to worry about is that outside solid line. OK. So freezer paper, for those of you that don't know, is um, a normal paper on one side and then it's got a very thin layer of wax on the other side. And the wax has uh, benefits for a variety of reasons. But what it allows us to do using the iron is to get the template, in this instance, to stick to the fabric. So I'm just going to cut that out. The instructions on their own have now sold out. <gasps> the only way you can get them now is if you buy the bundle. But the bundle's amazing value for money. Do you want the iron? Yeah. Yes, in just okay. a moment. I okay. Do. Right, so if I was just <laughs> using a template normally, you'd have cut it out, made it onto card or template plastic, you'd put it on, and then you'd have to draw around it. Right, okay? yeah. If you use freezer paper, you can just pop your freezer paper on top of your fabric. Notice I've got several layers here. This is why I, I quite like this method. I'm going to put it over here. Oh, yeah, so you've... Oh, I suppose because you're going to need several of the same. Yeah. Right. So I've popped that onto my fabric. That's not going anywhere now. And how many layers have you got there? One, two... I've got six. Wow. Yeah. Right, OK. So hopefully my rotary cutter's up to this because I didn't <laughs> put a new blade in and I should have. But you see, what you can do now is just trim it away and... Whoa. 
I mean, you don't it's have to moving. cut that many layers if you don't. No, absolutely not. You could do. But some, actually, but it's labour saving. By using all those um, layers, the fabric stays in place better when you're turning around as well. Well, that's exactly. I really thought. This which is I hadn't rotating thought that. About. I, so I could use that yeah. as well, but. So that's interesting because otherwise, if you only had two layers, it would start shifting. So that's really clever. So even though it's templates mm. and people think, oh, it's the right old faff because you've got to cut them all individually. If you use freezer paper, you don't have to cut them all individually because there I've got there six go. in one go. Wow. So how is that any more time consuming than rotary cutting? No, not at all. No, Though that kind of because sometimes you look at templates and oh. Yeah, well, I don't want to do template, but that really makes it easy, yeah. doesn't it? Obviously, I literally just cut into a stack of fabric there, but you might cut down some squares or something. Yeah, you know, just okay. rough cut to get your fabrics into the bit that you want. So that's my freezer paper technique for doing templates. Brilliant. Um, and then the other thing with patchwork is that you end up with these half square triangles and quarter square triangles. And I just wanted to show people how to trim them down. So when you make your blocks, quite often you're going to end up with something that's bigger and you're going to need to trim it down to size. OK. So um, this has been um, stitched, so I'm just going to give it an iron. I always set the seam first. So I iron the seam first and then I fold the fabric out and then I just use the iron. So quite a lot of the blocks show... Um, use half square triangles don't they yes they do yeah so if you look at this one just to show you so that one does yeah and oh no, that one does that one and that one that one does that one does so this is that one does this is a really so learn how to make them this yeah yeah, is a really yeah, yeah. Great and it's you'll notice that there's half square triangles and quarter square triangles in an awful lot of patchwork okay yeah. right so you've sewn them together so them i've them sewn them press. together given them a press and I've now got to get them to four and a half inch square from here. So a really good ruler to use is a square ruler that's got the diagonal line going right through the corner. It's going to make your life a lot easier because the first thing you're going to do is if I put it like that to start with, there's the diagonal line. So I'm going to slide that so it goes down my seam line. OK. Like that. And then I'm just going to create a, a nice straight edge for myself. And you have it so that you're going to cut two edges at once. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to go along there. So all I've done at the moment is just create some nice straight edges for myself. Okay. Spin that round. Um, depending on what ruler you've got, you may find that one direction you've got half, half inches mm. and then the other direction you've got whole inches. So I've got to make sure I'm using my half inch side and I want a four and a half inch square. So I'm going to put my four and a half inch on that side and that side on the edge of my block. Well, that's why this ruler is great, because it's got the lines that, yeah, that join that up. And then if you do that, you should find that the... Yeah. See, that diagonal line is going down. So you've got it perfect. So I've got it perfect. So there is a lot of trimming in patchwork, but... And a beginner might go, oh, why are you doing that? Because you're wasting all that fabric. And there is a little bit of wastage in doing this method, but it does mean that you end up with a beautifully yeah. square block, I mean, which that is, you come to stitch together. Yeah, that's beautiful as well. Yeah. It looks like it's printed like yeah. that, doesn't it? It's beautiful. So, so the ruler that Sarah's using is a six and a half by six and a half creative grids ruler. So if you want to get one of them, and I would say if you are a beginner to patchwork quilting, get one of these. I love these. <laughs> well, I said to you, I've only got two rulers. I yeah. don't know why she needs more. And that is one of them. So why would you choose a creative grids ruler? Oh, I just love them. So loads of reasons. They've got the lovely <laughs> non-slip bits on the back. Um, they've got it going around the edge as well, so that when you put it on your fabric, it doesn't slide about. Mm. And until you've had a ruler that doesn't have those, you really don't fully appreciate the value <laughs> of them, but they are definitely worth it. And the layout of the lines and the numbers on the creative grid rulers, it, it just works. Just visually, it works. It isn't confusing. It's just black and white. And this is something about the way they've done it. I've got loads of other rulers, and I see loads of rulers come through the studio oh, of because course, of the people yes. that come in. Yeah. And I always say to people, it's quite a good idea to bring your own ruler because mm. people get so used to it. Oh, so I guess you see all the different so brands. I see all the different ones. <laughs> Most popular. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like the black and white. I yeah. think that really easy helps, to doesn't it? Yeah. You don't get confused which is half and which is no. not. No, 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 no. It's really easy to work out which line you're supposed to So fourteen ninety nine. I would recommend this, particularly half square triangles, or while you're cutting down, get this ruler. I think as well, don't they have little tutorials from that QR? They do, yes. Yeah. They oh, do. Yeah, okay. Which, when they're more complex ones, are brilliant, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, But even with these, they, they have them. There's all sorts of tips and tricks with every ruler. I think patchwork rulers are a bit like... Um, 
bit like uh, washing machines and stuff. We use it in the main basic way, but mm. there's other ways of using it yes. that, we, that could benefit us. And sometimes when you go on these tutorials, you think, well, I never. I well, know. I never. Who would have thought Absolutely. you'd use it for that? Right, so I'm going to do a quarter square triangle now. OK, oh, yes. So a quarter square triangle looks something like this. So I'm just going to give that one a press. And that looks like you've cut four triangles and sewn them together. Yeah, but I haven't. <laughs> Which sounds horrible. What I've actually done is, let's just give that a press. What I've actually done is got two half square triangles and placed them so the diagonal's going that way, diagonal go that way. You place them like that. Right, and remember to place them like that. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to stitch them together. No, I've got that wrong. <laughs> you place them with the sides opposite. That's it. So the lines are the same, but the sides it's opposite. It's all in the instructions. It's all in the instructions. Don't worry. Um, and then when you fold it's it, it's very back, early, isn't it? It is very early. It's like that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that would be your quarter square triangle. So make sure you've got opposite fabrics. Yes, that's it. Not opposite lines. Opposite. Fabrics. Not opposite fabrics. Right, so when you come to trim these, you've got to make sure that this bit stays in the centre. Of course, yes. Yeah. So, at the moment... So, when you sew those together, where do you sew it then, across? Yeah, so... I would have a line that would be going like that, and then you're going to sew either side of that line. <laughs> I'm a complete novice, and this is so reassuring. Loving the show, girls, from what, Jackie and Dawson. That I can still get it wrong as well. <laughs> these, honestly, I've read, had a look at these when we were going through the show before we came on air. And honestly, <coughs> if you're a complete novice, these are brilliant. It's going to be a fab day as a beginner for all of us. I want to learn patchwork dressmaking and knitting. What a great idea for freezer paper. Yes, absolutely. Right, so quarter square triangle. So we can't just trim it like a half square triangle because we need to make sure that this bit stays oh, in the yeah. middle. Yeah. So I remember how big this is. So this is four inches at the moment, and I'm going to suggest that I need a three inch quarter square okay. triangle. Okay. So what you have to do with this one is think about what half of your finished size is. So if I want it to be three inches when I've trimmed it, mm. half of that is one and a half. One and a half. So what I've got to do now is I'm still looking for this diagonal line to be going along a diagonal. But one and a half is this line here, is, is this point here. So I've got three there, zero there, and I've got three here. Okay. Okay. So that's where this ruler really does come into its yes. own, doesn't yeah, it? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I know that I've got my three here, and, my th and that's really important. Those threes have got to be on those 45 degree lines. Okay. really hard to rotary cut when the table is so tall. I know, I have to stand on my tiptoes and, I I'm, I don't and the, I'm quite tall. I don't have the pressure, so often I do it and then they don't cut out. But when you're at home, you won't have this problem because you won't be cutting on your kitchen work surface, which, which, which is, is what the height of yeah. this is. <laughs> Try kit cutting on your kitchen work surface and you'll know. Why. Just You don't get the control on the ruler. It's really, well, it's also you don't have the pressure, no, so it often yeah. doesn't cut. So I trimmed one side, so then it's not same done for sewers. I'm going to twist that round. I'm going to put the ruler back on top and I'm going to make sure that my three is in that corner and in that corner going through the 45 degree line and up there as well. And then I'm going to trim that away. And then... So neat. That's so neat. square triangle. Yeah, that is absolutely perfect, isn't yeah. it? Absolutely perfect. So That's brilliant. So for beginners who think... Because <gasps> that does look like... If you haven't done it, that looks like you've cut four triangles and sewn them together, yeah. which sounds horrible, doesn't no, it? No, it's just squares. You're just starting with squares, and that's the clever yeah. thing about patchwork. It's all, it's all in the cutting and sewing. Now, obviously, we can't go through every technique like Sarah has in this hour, but don't worry, because in your book that you get with your kit, these tutorials are all in there. Yeah, all of the instructions that you need are there. We're just picking out some key ones. So can we talk about join as you go? Yes. Because I'm fascinated by this. Some people call it quilt as you go, and some people call it join as you go. I don't know, is there a difference, or are they the same thing? Um, it is kind of the same thing, really, I would have said. Quilt as you go, okay. you quilt it and you join it together, join as you go. Join as you go is something that maybe is a little bit more something I would think of in crochet, to be honest. Yeah, well, I do like yeah. join as you go yeah. in crochet, but we do in patchwork too. Right, so there's a couple of blocks here. So the bundle doesn't have the backing fabric. You will need, we'll talk about that. You need, um, what, how much backing fabric do you need? 
we need half a metre for the binding. We'll, we've got backing fabric, we'll show you that in a bit. So just to let you know, the, the fabric that you've got in your um, bundle is for the front. Yes. Okay, yeah. so yes, show me what you do. So you. So these are just two blocks. That oh, that's nice. Part made up. That's the autumnal one. It is, it oh, is it the autumnal nice. one. Yeah, that feels quite spring as well. It does, doesn't it? Oh, that yeah. looks lovely. Okay. Nice colour work. So when you're going to quilt as you go um, and join as you go, what you're going to do is you're going to make your block and then you're going to add on some sashing strips around the edge and then okay. you're going to quilt through your block but not through the sashing strips. Right. Okay. And how have you stuck them together? Oh, so them together? Um, when you're quilting, the best way, in my opinion, is 505 spray. I love 505 spray. OK. It's super simple with something this size, quick spray, and you've got your backing fabric laid down, you spray, you put your wadding on top, you spray, you put your block on top so of So you've that. got the backing, then yeah. you've got the, well, I can't separate because they're stuck together, then you've got the wadding, yeah. and then you've got the top piece thing. Yes. And you spray the wadding or the fabric? I always spray the layer that's on the table first. OK. So I would put my backing fabric nicely pressed down on the table, I would spray that, put the wadding on top, Spray the okay. wadding, put the front. Right, and that's quite a manageable because of the size oh, of it. Oh, completely manageable, Unlike yeah. your massive quilt, which yeah. is unmanageable. And then that means, I mean, I've just literally put one quick line of stitching across that diagonal, which is called stitching in the ditch. But you could have real fun with this block. You could shadow quilt around each of the sections. Because it's smaller, it makes it so much easier to mm. have fun with the quilting. You could okay. free motion quilt it. You could do whatever you wanted. And don't forget, this This is all in the instructions for you. So remember, this is all in your instruction booklet. And there is also a link here for a video tutorial. So that's all in your instructions. Yeah. OK, so we've done two blocks and you've just, just put some the just quilt. Put, yeah, just put some quilting on and you only quilt the block because you, you're going to quilt the sashing later. OK. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take two blocks and you're just going to peel back the, um, the sashing from the wadding. Oh, and the 505 spray is peelable. Yeah. And then you will join those two bits of sashing together. So shall I quickly whiz that yes. through the machine? So you keep, you've got one layer of wadding I've there. Got, yeah, one layer of wadding on each bit. Oh, but you've taken all the wadding out. Yeah, oh, okay. so all right. I've got is just the two sashing strips. Right. So. Now this is the bit that I didn't understand. Okay. So I guess you need to use a spray or something, not tack it, because you've got to be able to peel back the wadding. Yes. Right, so this is where 505 spray is brilliant. See, I, this is where I've got confused. I always thought you sewed through all the wadding and I thought, won't you get really bulky no. joins? Good job I've never done this, because that's what I would have done. It would have looked rubbish. So from the front, yeah. we've now got our sashings joined. Right. OK. And then from the inside, there's your seam. And you could press that in one direction, you could butterfly press it, whatever you feel What's is best that? for your project. Butterfly pressing. So butterfly, oh, controversial in patchwork, but butterfly pressing <laughs> is when you press it open like you would in dressmaking. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's butterfly pressing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's press open. Yeah. And sometimes it's beneficial to do that right. because actually it reduces bulk, et cetera. Oh. So, you know, you can do whichever way you want to do it really. Um, dependent on what you've used for your sashing and, and, and sometimes... Oh, quilting can always be controversial, yeah, doesn't exactly. it? Because there's no right or wrong way, but people have no. specific things. Right, OK. Right, so having done your seam, what we've now got is this issue of wadding at the back. Yeah. OK, and we don't want two layers of wadding going down all of our sort of sashing strips because that's bulky. And you'll notice it from the right side. So what we do is we lay those two bits of wadding so that they are on top of each other like so. So I've just literally folded one down, folded one down. Mm -hmm. I'm then putting my scissors so that both layers of wadding are in the scissor. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm aiming for that, um, that stitch line that I've just created. Does it matter if it's exactly on it? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay, I'm gonna cut. Oh, and hopefully not cut the front of the quilt. And as you cut, you can peel it away and just see okay. how well you're doing. So it needs to be 
as close as you can get just to it. in that area but okay yeah. let's i mean it's not going to worry it doesn't matter where it ends up okay because this is really clever or and i guess you the line needs to be sort of straight but does ish it, but again it wouldn't matter it doesn't really matter okay. yeah i'm just checking because yeah. i'll have a go at this <laughs> <laughs> right so i've cut so on the top layer there's the bit mm -hmm. i'm peeling away on the bottom layer there's the bit i'm peeling that's away that's really clever and now you've got no that's really clever because i would have tried to butt it up and then trim it that's yeah, really no. clever so if you've done that well and with it in your own time at home you'll find that they are yeah. now butting up that is really clever okay what you would do now is what i call frankenstein stitching <laughs> okay <laughs> so we've it, done butterfly it, pressing frankenstein it stitching. doesn't have to be pretty so all you're doing now is going through. oh i see you mean like frankenstein's mouth yeah got it all you're doing now is just going through those two layers of wadding and stitching them together okay you can do big stitches little stitches whatever you want to do um this is actually a gray thread so you it's probably not as easy to see. remember there is a video that you'll see the details but you're literally just going to whiz up their stitching so and it's not pretty stitching it doesn't have to be that's amazing so so why so well i mean i know why I, I would want to do this why is this such a popular technique because it means that you don't have to put a quilt top that is 43 no i can't remember 45 <laughs> by 59 mm. through the throat of your machine all in here right and we're talking quilt top wadding and backing okay so to quilt yeah. it and put it all through here that it's completely doable but if you're new to it and you haven't tried it before this is going to get you a nice effect. Yeah, no, I mean, and I know so many people, including myself, who make quilts and go, oh, God, sort of quilting it. Yeah. And I do do it, but it's just... Oh. Well, you see... That's so... So you just sort of... You're just going to Frankenstein stitch, stitch it. all the way up there. So Frankenstein stitching, not beautiful stitching. Um, just think of the, you know... The, yeah. And just, all I would do is just make sure that your thread is relatively colour matching so it doesn't show through unless you've got... If okay. you've got a light backing fabric. Fab. And do you have to sew or can you stick it? No, you kind of need to sew it because you've butted it up. Right, okay. But yeah, just, you know, minutes. And it okay. doesn't have to be pretty. Right. You don't have to be good at hand sewing to do it. Right. Okay. Just roughly. Yeah. Got it, okay. Got yeah. it. Now, you've now I've got, got all this backing. fabric. So, two schools of thought on this. You could trim some of it off um, if you wanted to, but that can be a bit of a faff. So, what I do is I lay that one all out really smooth. I would press a fold into that. Like that and then we're going to fold that over like that if you're going to do quilt as you go what you'll notice now is that if you were to look at that from a distance it's pretty tricky to see where that join is yeah because yeah. the back is a really busy fabric mm -hmm. so you've got nice backing fabric choices you want nice backing fabric choices that are busy on the back um, that are going to You don't hide. want to be matching. Oh, you don't want to have stripes. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, or large. Yeah. yeah. You want something on the back. Plain or busy. Where the pattern is going to, you're just going to look at it and not notice where okay. it is. Yeah. So no, with nothing that's too prescriptive. Right. Good tip. And then um, I would hand stitch that down. Mm. You could, if you wanted to, machine stitch that down. And then you would have a line of stitching coming through to the front, mm. okay? Which is completely um, doable because, let's just imagine that that has been stitched down. When you've joined your blocks together, oh, look, I almost managed it. You're then going to add some lines of stitching in here. Oh, I see. So if you've got one coming through from the front, just put lots of lines of yeah. stitching going up and down your sashing. But like you say, if you even if you roughly hand stitch that, the quilting on top yeah. will... Oh, we'll hold it in we'll place. Hold it all together. Yeah, yeah. So you will stitch this bit after you have joined yeah, your yeah. rows together. And when you've joined your rows together, you then join. Sorry, when you've joined your blocks together to make a row, mm. you've then got to join your rows together. And it's exactly the same technique. It's just you'll be doing it along a longer edge. And does it matter this sort of overlap? How big that is? Is there a sort of a this size? I always go a couple of inches bigger than. The, the finished size with the sashing. Oh, we've got a message from Jill. Wow, I thought I'd given up making quilts as I can no longer manoeuvre them on the sewing machine. Join as you go for me from now on. Silly nanny Jill. Silly nanny Jill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. This is fantastic. And you know, I've seen people demonstrate it, but never really quite got it. Yeah. I finally got have it. Have you? Yes. You've had your ta -da! I have, I know. And I've, well, because honestly, I've obviously never concentrated. I thought you sewed the two layers of wadding and I thought, oh, I'm never going to do that because I don't want all that bulk. Yeah, no. 
trim them away. Clearly, clearly was not concentrating on any method, but you don't have to remember this and I won't. They're all in the, when you get the instructions, there is the link to the tutorial so you can watch it all again. So yeah, so I could just slip stitch that and then yeah, slip stitch. It. And I guess then the only quilting you've got to get under your machine is that. Yes. So if you've got you want to, that bit. You don't yeah. really have to. You don't really have to. So most weddings would cope without that being quilted. And then when you've got your rows, again, you've got the rows of the way you've joined your rows. So I guess together. all you do, you need sort of a bit here to be able to peel back. You need like a sashing width. How much yes. do you need a set amount for, when you do for, for the peeling join it, back yeah. bit? So I normally put on something like a minimum of one and a half inch strip. Oh, just to okay. Give enough right, space. and then that's enough. Yeah, this is a bit wider because it just feels a bit But nicer. it also means, you see, when, you know, when I always think, oh, I'd love to do a really intricate quilt. Oh, I can't be bothered. I have to turn that round so many exactly. times. Exactly. But I could turn that round lots. Yeah, and make it, you know, really go to town and enjoy the mm. process of the quilting. Which really you don't know. when you're fighting with no. your machine. No. This is fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. That has been brilliant. Really, yeah. really brilliant. Excellent. Um, I'm going to recap the bollocks, but before I go, you'll be back with us at 11. I will. Doing magic. Magic. <laughs> magic. <laughs> magic. Don't overdo so, the magic. The magic pinwheel. So you're going to love that. I mean, you can see what an amazing teacher Sarah is. This, this is fab. If you've got any more questions, save them up for 11 when Sarah's back. So I'll see you back here in an hour. Yes. And then I'm just going to go through these. I'm just going to recap the bundles. Now, the autumnal bundle. Oh, you can't see it behind the graphics. There we go. The autumnal bundle. Now, that was the, the little sample that Sarah's just showing you there where you've got the three K fat quarters and the, um, the five autumnal ones and then the gold and the nude, a meter of each, and instructions. And the instructions on their own have sold out, so this is your only way of getting hold of the instructions on their own on the, at the moment. That's the autumnal one. There's also the brights one. Oh, you can see that one. Autumnal single, we're on single figures and we've got more of the autumnal bundle in baskets than we've actually got in stock. So that one's gonna sell out. The Brights bundle, there you are, you can see some of them are plain, some of them are slightly marbled. That was the um, sample that we had hanging up. There's only 12 of this one left. Remember, it does have the full instructions with all of those tutorial links. This could be like me, the light bulb join as you go Point. And I love all of these blocks as well. I just, I'd like to actually just have this just to keep those blocks and think, oh, yeah, I'm going to use those because I can imagine like just use making one block, but 12 of the same block and join them all together would be fab as well. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Just think all these scraps. I would get one of these bundles and then choose some other scraps from my own stash to make an even bigger quilt. Now I've worked out the join as you go method. Right. So that's the brights one. And then the final one. Can we see that one without me moving it? is the, the pastel one where you get the four floral pa pastel prints here. And then you get the fat quarters in navy, blue, pink, and ivory. And then you get the two half meters in gray and a bluey gray. And again, don't forget full instructions, the only way to get them. That one is on single figures as well. So um, wadding. We've got loads and loads of different waddings here. Right, so we've got a 100% cotton one. Well, it's a, is it, yeah, 100%. Five, now this is 599. This is 228 centimetres wide. This is super wide. Although if you join as you go, it doesn't matter because you just cut it on squares, but it's very good value for money for half a metre, 599. And remember that wait, if you want more than a half a metre, put that number of units in your basket and it will be sent to you as a cut continuous length. Um, that's the cotton. If you prefer a softer feel, this is the cotton bamboo wadding. It's, um, it, well, they say, which I don't really understand, that it's actually the same weight, because I was looking this up. I was doing some re wadding research the, last week, so I wanted to have a go at bamboo. They feel very different. The bamboo has a much lighter feel to it, so it's fantastic for quilting with. Um, it just depends which one you fancy, really. And this is more eco-friendly, the bamboo. But it's, it's a bamboo cotton mix. Again, it's one of those waddings that once you finish your quilt, chuck it in the machine at 30 degrees and it will shrink very slightly. Bamboo apparently is only supposed to shrink up to 3% because I was trying to work that one out as well. So it'll just shrink just a tiny bit, but it gives you your quilt that lovely antique make. But 
We've got loads and loads of different waddings. These are ideal because they are so wide and you can have it sent to you as a big cut piece. So whether you're just making a cushion from one of these blocks or making a full quilt, always worth having. But have a go with the bamboo. It has got a really nice soft feel to it. Do you like it? You might not have, well, it's the sort of thing you might not be able to get locally, but um, because I've been researching them because I want to have a go at bamboo. So I bought myself some of this. I'm going to have a, have a go. Um, backing fabrics. We have got some backing bundles for you. Um, we've got vanilla. So if you just want a plain, because then that won't matter with your join as you go. These are two and a half meter bundles. So this will be absolutely fine for that finished quilt. 16.95 and there's a two pound saving. They're not um, extra wide, but if you're doing the join as you go method, that's the beauty. You don't need the extra wide backings, do you? 6.95, a little two pound saving on there. A little cheeky saving. Um, we've also got it in pale. Oh, that's pretty. I haven't seen that colour for a while. That is so pretty. Sixteen ninety-five. It's so pale. It's like that paint, a hint of blushy pink. So again, sixteen ninety-five. Um, we have got some extra wide backings as well. Have a look. These are the ones we've got. They are all on the website if you go on to um, watch live and scroll down. You don't need extra wide if you're doing join as you go, but you might not be doing join as you go. But these are the sort of prints that Sarah's talking about that are nice and busy so you won't be able to see those seams. This is the sort of thing that you need. Um, don't forget the 505 spray as well. Right, we're going to go for a quick break and I will see you back here in a few minutes' time. Um, the jacket, it's the jacket, it's um, Jules, Jules and, the, and the Greta jacket. Um, Jules is a fantastic dressmaking teacher. So again, if you're new to dressmaking or an expert, you'll love the next hour. I'll see you back here in a few minutes' time. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, 
click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford upon Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three course dinner, half a bottle of wine, and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party, and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday the 25th of November. See you there. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Welcome back to Sewing Street. So this hour is all about dressmaking. We've done patchwork, now we're on to dressmaking, which is great. Look at this beautiful jacket. Um, this is just one variation of it. The pattern has four different variations, really, doesn't it? Four. This is one of them. I love this one. Look, look at the. It's got the lining with the turned over cuff. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's got pockets. Very important. Gorgeous on the back as well. That's beautiful. Now I know loads of you have already bought it, so well done. This is new to us today, and what's more, Jules is going to show us how to make it, which is fab. So this is the pattern. £24. Now, this is um, a massive size range. So it starts extra, extra small, which is um, in bus terms, 77 centimetres. What's that? It's about a size eight. About so a size six, eight. Six to eight. Yeah. And then it goes up to a size 32. Well, it's the, yeah, 32, 34. Whoa. Mm. So it's a really big size. So it goes from a 77 centimetre bust all the way up to 153 centimetre bust, which is great because quite often patterns don't have that big range, which is a shame. I know. It? We want to be as inclusive as we yes. can. Yes, so everyone can make it because it's yeah. a great jacket. It is, actually. Yeah. Lovely. Um, that's the pattern. There's the sizes on there so that you can see the size range. I'm just going to go over to Jules. I'm going to bring my jacket with me. So tell me why you um, designed the jacket then, Jules. First of all, welcome to Sewing, Hello, yes. Sewing Street. I've Sewing got Street a stinking me. cold, Aww. I'm afraid, today. So I will try I and keep my germs to myself. <laughs> <laughs> under the, you should be under a duvet with a packet of biscuits. That would be a really lovely place to be <laughs> right now, actually. Yes, it oh. would. Yeah. Um, well, we named, well, we called this Greta. Mm. Um, as you know, we started off in Stratford-upon-Avon. Yes. So we named all of our patterns after Shakespearean heroines. Uh, indeed. And of course, we're getting to a point where we're running Are out of running names. Are you running out? And I really don't want to name a pattern Goneril or something like that, because I don't think no, that would work, really. No, no. So we've started to uh, name our patterns after women of note. Oh, OK, so real-life so, heroines. Yeah, exactly, yes. So Greta. Of course. As in Greta Thunberg. Mm. So... Um, we wanted to create, and I think she would almost wear this. Oh, yes, she, yes, she would wear this. Yeah, yeah. so yes. we've kind of tried to, to work on that sort of basis, really. Okay. But it's a brilliant pattern because you can mix it and match it and do so many different things with it. I love it. So you can do it 
um, collarless. Yeah. So this is the simpler version. Yeah. With or without pockets. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we've done it here as a gilet. So collarless or sleeveless. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you could even put pockets on the inside as well if you wanted to have interior pockets oh, yeah. too. And the same could be the same. Yeah, before. exactly. Yeah. Right. And then if I pull up, because I want to show you the collared version. So this is quite nice. It's got almost like a little funnel neck here. Um, and that's the one that I'm going to show you how to do today. Mm. Um, we're going to do the gilet version of this. That's lovely. So it's just got that kind of little mandarin almost collar. It isn't is, it? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it just kind of stands is that up. A mandarin collar. Is it is, it, is, it, it is almost like a mandarin <laughs> collar. Yes. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Would it work as a patchwork jacket? Absolutely. I'm a little bit of a patchwork jacket fan. I had gathered that. Yes. <laughs> and it definitely would. It would really. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is one of the things because it's such a simple shape. Yes. There's no darts or anything in there. It's a really boxy, simple kind of shape. So you can make it out of absolutely anything. And I anything, love really. the fact that you've put funky lining in. Oh, yeah. Lovely. And that's all in the instructions, the lining as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Wow. So you could quilt the lining or you could quilt the outer if you wanted to. You can um, make it in patchwork, as you said, mm. denim, boiled wool, different tweed. Yeah, We've made them in corduroy or a denim. Um, so, yeah, it's a really versatile pattern. It makes up. And how easy is it? Very easy. Is it? Yeah. That's really encouraging me as well. I love the little collar. Really nice. But I like the fact that you can, that's where you can put something a bit. Well, that's, yeah, so you can kind of just give a little flash. So, then, what yeah. sort of weight Funky fabrics lining. do you need for this? Well, a, a medium weight. Okay. Works with wovens, not, nothing stretchy. Right. Um, so things like a corduroy, a denim, boiled wool. Um, okay. Or if patchwork. you're going to use patchwork, yeah. then quilt it to give it yeah. a bit of yeah, a bit of weight. It needs to have a little bit of substance. To okay. It. Yeah. It's fab. It's really nice. And I've just noticed actually that the back. Yes, it's slightly dipped. It's got a dipped. Back. Yeah. Is that the same on all of them? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. That's for you don't often see that on a jacket. Ah. Let me show you if I turn it round. Can you see? Because it's lovely it having that when you've got a t-shirt. I like a dip back t-shirt. <laughs> it just covers the right bit. It just covers your bottom. Yeah. Yes. But then not that bit. So you don't often see that on a jacket. I think that is a lovely detail. And it's bound as well. Yeah, that's why we thought we'd do a really quick and easy binding mm. to kind of go with that curved hemline. Yes. So a binding is just the obvious choice, really. It is, isn't it? So you well, could, it you is. could have a contrast binding then if you oh, wanted to. Of course, to. yes. Right, I'm just going to get the pattern. I'm going to take the pattern. Um, so, as you all know, I'm a great fan of um, Jules's patterns. So, this dress I'm wearing is the Kate dress. We don't have that pattern available today, but we have done. It's fab, isn't it? I love Jules's patterns. And as, I mean, any of you dressmakers out there, I think the first thing that sells it to you is the garment. Obviously, you're not going to make it unless you love the garment. Exactly. But yeah. then after that, it's the pattern. It's what's in the pattern. The quality of the paper is important to me. Yeah, And the quality make of the instructions. Yeah. And even things like the fact I can close this pattern afterwards without having to ruin it. Yes. Because I want to put all my pieces inside. Exactly. Yeah. I'm too lazy to trace. So. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. I've bought the tracing paper. I've never actually got round to it. So when you open it up, you've got full instructions here, which are really comprehensive. Yes. The, this, with, this is important as well, so you can really choose. Yeah, so you can see all of the styling detail and where the stitching lines are and stuff like that. Mm. So then you can kind of understand how it's all put together. Okay. And I guess you get so much feedback and input from people on what works oh, and what yeah. doesn't. Absolutely, and... yeah. People are very happy to tell us when things don't work. <laughs> That's not fair. Well, I'm going to tell you when things do work. I love my dress. Um, it tells you how to use the patterns. We've got laying layouts for all different sorts of fabric as yeah. well how to sew and then the diagrams are very very clear because this is the important bit isn't it exactly this is the bit now we've thought about using photographs mm. but actually when we've done photo tutorials they're just not quite as clear no they're not i so that's I why we've like, stuck yeah. to brilliant really clear little illustrations i think for dressmaking you need to be able to see where the lines are how you turn it over it yeah it is, it is a lot easier so they're really really comprehensive and we try to make the bit that you're working on so if you're sewing a seam or something mm. like that we've colored that so that you've got a slightly yeah, different color there right okay so we go it tells you all the details in the pattern um 
Then we get the pattern pieces. This is really important because look at the quality of the paper. So these aren't going to rip. No. I was, um, I was unfolding a pattern the other day and it just it just all ripped and it was, you know, a tissue paper one. Oh, yeah. Because if they've been folded for a while... I know. They just, yeah. And then you have to tape them they all back together forever. again. Good yeah. morning. Please, could I ask the different styles... If the different styles have different pattern pieces, thank you from Sue. Actually, they, well, no, they don't. If you want to do um, the gilet, yeah, now on here, this is a good example. Okay. So the body part of the jackets are exactly the same. But if you want to do the gilet, what we've done is we've shortened the shoulder seam. Oh. So you can follow the inside line. So that would be the outside line. So really, you, and follow should, the inside you should line. trace these if you want to use it again. If you want to, <laughs> yes. Because you might... You could, yeah, I mean, otherwise you could just snip in and just fold it under oh, if you yeah, wanted to. True. But, yeah. So we've tried to keep it really, really easy. So the, the body parts are exactly the same. Um, and you just decide whether you want to have a slightly longer shoulder um, to fit the sleeve or whether you want to reduce the oh, shoulder okay. and have... And what about with the version. collars? Do you have different patterns... For the collars now there are two different fronts because we fold it over that way there we go oops actually if we fold that bit that way <laughs> and open out that one i bet you're good at folding that there so <laughs> because we've got a curved edge here and we've got a grown on front so we go past the center front which is where the buttons and the buttonholes are so we've got a separate pattern piece for the front, which is that one. So you can see it's got that curved shape. And then we've got a square neck oh, edge. I and that's see. the bit that the facing or the button stand gets attached to. So it's so, like, yeah. so you've got all the pattern pieces. For but all, all the pattern right. pieces for all the versions are included in the pattern. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Love them, absolutely love them. Right, I'm going to go back and show the fabric. <coughs> and then we're going to get on with the sewing. Shall I <coughs> Pattern. I'll let you have a little cough and I'm going to take the pattern with me and take my lady with me. In fact, I'll just wear her because it's a bit chilly in here and I actually quite fancy trying the jacket on as well. <laughs> Any excuse? <laughs> Any excuse? Jules's patterns are great. I remember buying them the first pattern she produced and I still love her designs from Sue. Uh, would you like a drink of water? Yeah. OK. <laughs> right, I'm going to go through the fabric. Oh, yes, this is very nice. Can we come back to me so I can have a look? Hmm? <coughs> yeah, sorry, I've just got the pattern in the way. There we go. This is very nice. What do you think? Yeah, it's cute. Mm. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Oh, I like that. Mm. And it's nice and warm <laughs> as well. Right, so there's various different fabrics that you can use for this. Obviously, if you're going to use um, a a cotton fabric you will need to give it a bit of body but you would want to be quilting it anyway but we have got some lovely ones i'm going to start with the denim seeing as i'm wearing a denim this denim is perfect now these are three meter bundles and there's enough fabric in here to make up to the largest size which is your size 32 that's not 32 inch bust that's size 32 so this is a four ounce wash denim cotton and it's three meters and there is enough fabric here to make the largest size with sleeves and everything. So you won't need any more than this at all. But this is obviously the outer fabric. Obviously you will need extra fabric for lining, but this is for the outer. It's 22 99 bargain for denim fabric. Um, how about a lovely tweed? This is a nice weight as well. Really nice thick tweed. This will give you a really substantial jacket. It's very posh, isn't it? Stylish. Again, three metre bundle. So this is a 70% wool, 30% polyester, tweed fabric, 59.99. Remember, this is enough for the largest size with the collar and the sleeves. 59.99 for that one. Um, let's go boiled wool. I love this shade. How gorgeous is this? It's like um, magenta, fuchsia magenta. Yeah. What would you call that? A pink, isn't Beautiful. It? Quite a bluey pink. They call it sangria. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Sangria raspberry. Yeah. Gorgeous. 
So you obviously, with these fabrics, you won't need, the only time you will need a wadding is if you're having to quilt it because it's a lighter weight, but this will be absolutely fine all on its own. It's a beautiful fabric, 64.99. You've got three meters here, but this will make you one stylish jacket. Right, next we've got bo boiled wool, but in black. Classic black jacket, goes with everything, gives you an excuse to knit a really bright scarf. And remember, this three meter bundle will do the largest size with sleeves and collar and everything. You will need lining fabric separately, but this is your outer. Um, but we have got lining bundles, should you need some lining, and these are lovely. Right, so I think this one, if you're using this boiled wool, if you're fancying the, um, the boiled wool, how about that for the lining? That's a viscose, that's so pretty, isn't it? That's beautiful, isn't it? Quite fancy, that one. 29.99, there's two and a half metres. Again, that's enough for the lining, for the largest size. That's a lovely combination. Um, then you've got this really nice um, autumnal leaf print. This would go nice with any of them. In fact, it'd look nice with the denim because it's got the blue in it. It'd like, look nice with the hounds too. And you could put it with the black as well. 26.99, so that's a viscose poplin navy floor on green two and a half meters so that is enough for the lining for any of the sizes and then the final one actually this would not look this one would look nice with the black wouldn't it because it's a sort of a gray leafy print 1999 that's 100 percent cotton slate leaf lovely now if you are going to do a patchwork jacket we've got some wadding here so we've got H H630, which is like H640 as in it's fusible. It's just a slightly lighter weight. And this is pre-cut into metre pieces. So you'd need to work out, I would say you'd need probably three pieces of that for your jacket. H630, that's just, it's, it's just a slightly lighter weight than your, but it is fusible, so it makes your patchwork a lot quicker. Um, and then the next one. Now this is new to us, this wadding. So this, so this is cut by the half meter. So this is a low loft volume white fleece. So it's a Vliseline wadding. So it's not fusible. You'll have to sew this in, but it's a nice low loft. So it's perfect if you're doing patchwork jackets. 445 for half a meter. Brand new to us. So if you want more than half a metre, it will be sent as cut pieces. We will cut it to order. Just £4.45. But that's great if you're, well, if not just patchwork, but if you're using a lighter weight fabric or you want it to have a bit more body, um, then that is perfect for that. And it is recommended for clothing as well as quilts. So that's new to us. It's very soft, actually. It's a really nice, good, nice quality. And machine washable to 60 degrees, which is very useful. There we go. 100, is it 150 wide? Yeah, that's really wide. That must be 150. I can normally tell by how far I have to stretch my arms. <laughs> right, fab. So what are you going to show us today then, Jules? So I'm going to show you how to put the pocket on. Okay. Which is quite a nice one. Like and the then pocket. what we're going to do is attach the collar right. and the facing, or the bottom stand as well. So the first thing I want to do is to do a little bit of prep on certain okay. pieces. So on my pocket here, so this is that way round. That's a funny shape. <laughs> there we go. Now what I've done, because we've got this curved bit on that front edge, mm. I've done a, an easing stitch through there so that we can pull it up and give it some shape. And I've also put a bit of interfacing across the top section here. Now there is a pattern piece for this in the instructions. So that's gonna just help everything stay put because we've got everything cut on the bias here. We don't want that to stretch out of shape. So if you've got um, edge tape or form band or something like that, that will do exactly the same thing. So all I'm going to do first of all is just to overlock that little bit there. There we go. Um, what if you haven't got an overlock? You could um, zigzag it. Right, so just yeah, just, just finish it off so that you have got um, 
a nice neat edge. There we go. And now I can fold that over and give it a quick press. Let's pop those bits out of the way. These little pressing mats are really handy, aren't they? So I'm folding that over. So the overlocker that Jules is using is the Pro. Oh, and that price is actually reduced at the moment. Sorry, £559. Is we're actually reducing that one to two, 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 479 So if you're if you're like me, you think I really ought to get an overlocker. Makes my life a lot, just making life a lot easier. Oh, it really does. It does, it doesn't really, it? I need really to, does. I yeah. need to commit. £479. That's not bad, actually. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's very For good. For a pro overlocker. Yeah. So now we've got that bit, the facing part, folded under. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So what we can do now is to fold in the rest of it. Now, what I want to do is to do the long edges first. So I'm going to eyeball this, but your seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres. So I'm kind of avoiding that curved bit for the, se for the moment. And I'm going to do the bottom edge as well. So I'm going to press that up 1.5. And I'm going to leave that kind of corner curved bit there. Okay. So what we're going to do with the easing stitches is just pull up. Oh, I see. So it's a bit like a shower cap kind of thing. Yeah. That's such a good idea. So, so I'd be like really trying just to press it round and it's if you, jagged. Yeah, if you and then you get like a kind of a stepped angled yeah, kind of curve. Yeah, yeah. But if you sew the easing stitch oh, close to the idea. edge of the fabric, mm. then you're just taking away all of that. So you can see it just wants to sit now in that nice little kind of curved shape. There we go. So if we turn that over, you can see how it just oh, that's wants really to sit. Neat. What a good idea. And then we can just give it a quick steam. That looks much better. And then I can fold in. Oh, a message from Sue. Jules's patterns are great. I remember buying the first pattern she produced and I still have her designs. Yeah. Oh, okay. thank you. They are great, aren't they? In fact, the cake was one of the first ones we ever did. I think it was. Yeah, yes. yeah. Still love it. I know. Gosh, that's she's over ten years old now. And I didn't trace it either, so I can never change size. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So all I'm doing now is just going around and pressing in the rest. Now you could mitre the corners if you want to. Okay. When you're pressing, right. so you're not going to get anything tucking out. So by mitering, I mean folding it in and then folding it back on itself. So you're getting little angles on the corners yeah, there. Yeah. And will that give it a neater finish? It does give it a little bit of a neater finish. So you're not sewing, you're not showing the kind of out, that sort of bit doesn't poke out when you're stitching yeah, down exactly. the edge of the pocket. So let's just do the same on that one. We'll fold that in. Half of a mitred corner always wants to sit better than the other half. <laughs> it's a bit like hair, isn't it? Yeah, always, always. Yeah. But then it's worth spending the time on these pockets because, you know, you're going to be putting your hands in all the time. And well, exactly, like exactly. There we go. So we've got the pocket is now prepped. Now, where we folded that edge over, we can actually stitch that in place. So I'm going to swap over machines. Um, <laughs> morning, I've taken a leap of faith and bought the pattern for the large size, which is not always available. Um, it's a patchwork jacket from Sue in Beeston. Oh, yes. There we go. It's, it is worth it. And remember, the size range is, well, uh, Jill says it's like a dress size 32. But if you think in centimetres for a bus size, there they are there. So 77 centimetre bus, which is 
32, did you say? 32 inches? Yep, about that. And then well, up to yeah. 153 centimetre bus. So that's a really nice big size range. And I think quite often we don't buy them because it hasn't got our size in, but it is worth having it as well. And you think of all the fabrics you've got that you could use it for, whether you, you could even do a denim patchwork jacket, which would be even fab. 24 pounds, and honestly, they are brilliant. They really does make quite a difference um, using a decent pattern. And there's different options. So you've got collar, without collar, with sleeves, without sleeves. So you can make yourself your quilted gilet. Yeah. Your denim jacket. Yeah. Or you can make that love, lovely um, raspberry boiled wool. That would be nice, actually. That would be nice as a collared one, actually. Ooh, yeah, I'd, I really yeah. like that one. So those are all the different options. So you're getting four jackets in that big size range. So if, you're go if you are going to use it for lots of different things, then I would recommend tracing it because you might want to make it one day um, with the gilet, so you don't really want to cut the pattern then. So do trace it. Have we got any tracing paper, Hannah? Have we got any tracing paper? Oh. Okay. Might not be in stock. But we've got it on reorder. So if you have, if you are going to use, if you think you're going to use it again, then do trace it. And I know it's a faff. I hate tracing patterns, but it's um, actually worth it in the long run. It is. You, you know. need to not be so lazy yeah. like I am, and actually trace them because it is worth it. Because then you can use them again. <laughs> exactly. Well, the thing is, you want to be able to use your patterns again and again. Don't well, you? you've developed this, so there is a choice. So <laughs> yeah. So once we've got the pockets pressed okay we can then position it so there are little markers so we've got one in the top corner are those and on got, the pattern and these are on the pattern Unreal. so what i've done is because i've got like a little hole punch i tend to punch through the markings on the pattern so i've got a little mm -hmm. tiny hole and then i can poke my pen or a rub a bit tip. of chalk over it or something like that so it makes it a little bit easier to actually see where you're going with everything. So I guess if you don't want the scoop bottom, you could just cut it straight across. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have had um, a lady in one of our workshops extended it and made it into almost like a, a long kind of jackety kind of... Well, actually, it's wide coat, enough. Actually. You wouldn't need to widen it. You just lengthen it. Yeah, yeah, just take it straight down. Full length? Yeah. I wouldn't get so wet walking the dog. Make it an oil cloth. <laughs> Do you know what? You absolutely could. You absolutely could. Maybe not yeah. as thick as oil cloth, but yes. So can you imagine walking around in like a tablecloth? But it's actually wide enough, I have to say. This is nice actually. What size is this one? Now I know what pattern to get. I think that's a medium actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is lovely. Yeah, yeah, well, I like to have a jacket that I can actually wear something underneath. I know. You know yeah. the jackets where you can only wear a t-shirt underneath them. And I feel like this is big enough I could actually wear something underneath. Well, again, it depends on, uh, you know, how big you want to make it. Because if you look at the finished garment measurements, then you can see the difference between the body measurements and the finished garment measurements. And the difference there is the amount of ease that's in the garment. Well, I guess you can measure a jacket yeah so susan says i've got my pattern i've never tried button stand buttonholes or collar so i'm going to have a go well you don't have to use buttonholes just no. saying susan because like this one i've got here has got snaps so i was having a chat to, to um jules about this earlier because i don't like it. i quite like this look and um, these are just the snap and you can buy these kits that we've got them haven't we just saying you can buy them we've got yeah them. they're great actually you can um these and then you just clamp anorak them. press fasteners yeah. And, it, and this pack, this comes with the tool. So those are 15 mil. So that's that's the same size as these. Um, and they're in a, like a dark metal. I wouldn't say black, like a dark metal. Like a gun metal yeah. kind of thing. So oh, these right. would be ideal. So if you don't want to do buttonholes and buttons, get yourself a pack of these because the tool comes with them. And then you don't have to do that. But I... But um, it's a good idea because I think when you do do dressmaking, try and buy a pattern where it's using a technique you haven't used. So if you haven't done like a collar before. Well, it's all about learning, isn't it? <laughs> really? Yes. You know, yes. you kind of do and learn at the same time. Yeah. And there's 10 in here, so you can have a practice with one. 
So are you sewing the pocket on now? I have just stitched the pocket on and what I'm doing as well is a little bar tack on the corners just to kind of help. What's a bar tack? A bar tack is like a, a little bit of satin stitch. Right. So a wide zigzag but a short stitch, short so stitch length. Does your machine, does that machine have that as a set or are you just doing it? I've just done it, I've just eyeballed it basically. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so all I'm doing is the setting on the machine is um, number seven for a zigzag stitch, and then the stitch width is four, and the stitch length is 0 0.9. Okay. So I just want to literally about a centimetre. So when you get your pattern, if you're not sure what size, just get a jacket that you know you like the look, the fit yeah. of, and just measure it because the finished garment measurements are on here. There we go. This pattern is really, really, really popular, unsurprisingly. Well over half of the stock has gone already. <coughs> £24, you've got four different jackets in there in a very, very big size range. And it can be used for a patchwork jacket and it's lined as well, which is really important because I know a lot of people have... Um, or you could do a patchwork gilet. That would be nice, wouldn't that it? That would be really cool, actually. Mm. I like the idea of a denim patchwork, actually. Because my cool. patchwork jacket is going to be lined, but not quilted into the lining. Oh, nice. Um, because I don't, want, I don't want that quilting in the lining. Yeah. I don't want that. So I'm going to back mine with um, lawn yeah. and quilt it with cotton lawn so it's not too layered and then line it. Oh, I like the idea of mm. that. I am going to make this jacket. I've planned it all. I've even bought the cotton <laughs> lawn. I've got that far. Well, I don't want it because uh, because I want it to be lined. I don't want to, otherwise you have to have bound seams, don't you? Oh, yes. I don't want no. bound seams. It's actually much easier and quicker to line it. People get put off by lining things, but actually it's not that bad at all, actually. And this is lined, so this is ideal, but denim patchwork. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Next time I see you, Jill. Yes, I'll hold you to that. Yes. Yeah. All I need is a packet of these. <laughs> <A pattern. laughs> That's cool. So now we've got two pockets attached, because mm. I did one earlier in okay. true Blue Peter style. And I've also stitched the shoulder seams together. So these are basically just um, normal seam allowance, 1.5, and I've just pressed the seams open and flat. Okay. And I've done exactly the same with the lining there as well. So now, I can put the collar on. Right. So again, this is very straightforward. I've got my outer collar that's got interfacing on it because we okay. will need that one to be supported. Right. And then I've got my inside collar, which doesn't have any interfacing on it. So, so that's, that's the, the bit that goes. Yeah, so that'll be yeah, the, the, the inside, inside one. So I can, now again, I've got my uh, dots on the collar marked because those are going to line up with the shoulder seams. So again, you can do little snips if you want to, or um, I've, again, I've just made little holes in the pattern mm. and then just dotted my pen through those. So we want to make sure we get it round the right way. So we want happy curve and we want a sad curve. <laughs> I love that. That's so better than convex and concave. Isn't exactly. It? It's so much easier. I can even remember that one. Yeah. Happy so curve and sad curve. Sad curve. So we're going to put these together. Now I'm going to find my centre back on there, and I'll find my centre back on here, so that we get those points matched up. So it, the um, Jules has been using black interfacing on hers because. I presume because you're using a darker colour. Yeah. Um, we've got yeah. that. We've got that. Two ninety nine, and again, that's cut to order. So that's half a metre. Just two ninety nine for half metres. Well, you won't need more than <laughs> you won't need more than half a metre for this. No. But it's one of, another one of those things that's not always easiest to find. No, but it's also it's something that you need. In but your you stash. really need it when you need yes, it. That's it. So what great to have to in your stash because it is something you when you need you need it. Exactly. I'm going to try on the other jacket. There we are. So where I've got While my dot, I know that that is going to be for my shoulder seam to line up to. Okay. 
and then it should go all the way to the end. There we go. And then I'm just going to make sure that the raw edges are all flush and sitting nice and neatly. Oh, so I guess because you've got that anchoring point. Yes, yeah, so if you start from the centre back and you know that the shoulder seam works yeah. and then you've got the front end so you can just make sure everything else fits. Every time you, they come to you, you're going to be wearing a different jacket. Yeah, I know. I'm loving this. I'm, lo I'm liking this green one. Loving the green one. Oh. We've got another message. Good morning. I had a quilted jacket like this in the late 70s, <coughs> early 80s, and it was reversible. I absolutely love it. Going to replicate the jacket again from Penelope. Absolutely. What do you think about the... Oh, Is it the colour or is it the colour? I think I prefer this one. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Well, no, you could make it reversible, actually. Could you? Yeah. I mean, if you, um, instead of where we've got that overlocked edge on the inside. Yes. If you tucked it under and top stitched it in place. Oh, OK. So, and then yeah. if you had pockets on your lining. Yeah. And then just bound the edges, then you could make it uh, reverse. Yeah, so you'd see that, but that would look nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, This is lovely. Mm, no, I'm liking this one. This is going to make a great. And isn't it nice that you can turn the sleeves yes. up? Yes, you can roll those so you can back. Show, so if you've used something really cool on the lining, or even if you just put on the lining a bit on the bottom that's nice, so that you can, you can Absolutely, see Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, again, what I'm doing is just making sure that all those raw edges line up. Am I going to have to count the jackets when I take them back later? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you only had two. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> it was never, you forgot the green one. There we go. It's a lovely call. Well, also, this, you see, nobody else will be wearing this jacket, will they? No. Nobody. This is going to be so unique. Especially if you make it as a patchwork one. Oh, well, yes. That would be yeah. incredible. Scrap buster. It could well be, actually. Yeah. That would be a brilliant idea. But my adv I've done a lot of research into this, and my advice is cotton lawn. Cotton lawn. Because you don't want all the bulk, because the problem no. is if you back it, you've got loads of lining then going on. That's the, th that's the trouble, isn't it? Yeah. And also, if when you make your patchwork pieces, wash them before you cut them out as well. By the top tip. But it sounds like you have been doing your research. Oh, I know I have. I have. Yeah. But if you... Because they're going to shrink once you've quilted them. So yes. if you make them as big squares, if you measure your pattern piece and add like um, four inches, that's what I've done, and then you wash them after you've quilted them, yeah. then they'll have shrunk already before you cut them out. Oh, that, that's a very good tip. Because once you wad them, they start going... Yeah. Don't they? Oh. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. <laughs> okay, so all I'm doing is sewing round here with a 1.5 seam allowance. So I think collars can be a bit intimidating, can't they? Yeah, but this isn't really this isn't like a collar. This is a okay. really easy one, actually. Right. It's a very easy one to do. So, yeah, what we want to do... Uh, well, you, you haven't been over to our new place yet. No, I haven't, no. Yeah. I really want to. Since I get all of your emails, <laughs> I'm very excited by all the things that you're doing. Can't tempt you into a fire walk then. Fire? Oh, that would be nice. We've got one of those coming up this weekend. Oh, is it this weekend? Yes. Yeah, I can't do it this weekend. But you do some great workshops. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, you could come and come and watch me do a fire walk this weekend. <gasps> I know. I'm mad. Why? Why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's something I've wanted to do for really? ages. Really? I have yeah, to say that's been on my I bucket list. Have, to do. have you yeah. practised? No, but what we do is we do like a little hour and a half workshop before and um, that kind of gets you into the right mindset. Right, so you and don't then, burn your feet. Yeah, no, you don't burn your feet. That's the whole point. No. I can't understand that. You see, that doesn't make sense. No, 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 the science behind it when you, your foot is in touch with the hot coals for such a split second, 
Right. You know, you can you can pinch a flame. Yeah, with your yeah. Feet. It's the same principle. Does it mean you have to run really fast? No, that's the one thing you shouldn't do, apparently. <laughs> Because that's when the pressure, your feet sink into the coals and they get... Oh, because you're... And then the coals get stuck between your toes, oh. which is what you don't want. I think you're very brave. I tell you what, you let me know how you get on. That's fine. <laughs> It'll be all over our social media. No, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. Mm. There we go. I'd love to do it if I didn't burn myself. No, the guy who runs it has been doing it for ages and he's never had anybody hurt themselves. Really? Yeah, yeah. Which is very reassuring. Mm, quite tempted now. Yeah. There we go. So we've got the collar on. Fab. And that it's was... and, and because you've engineered it all, it all fits. It just you haven't fits. got to think about that. Yes. Yeah. Anchor it, sew Absolutely. it on. Yep. So we've got we've got the, the So collar do you oh you outside. line that in the same fabric, don't you? Um as yes. in the inside of it. Yes. So I mean you could have a a contrast if you wanted yeah. to. But it does show. Um, yeah. You will see it a little bit, yes. So what we're going to do now is exactly the same thing on the lining, but with the collar that hasn't got the interfacing on it. So if I fold that and make that. We have, once everyone's checked out, back. we have got fewer than 20 patterns remaining. So you do need to get checked out if you want to make a gorgeous jacket. That's good. I mean, these are lovely because you could have this now, I don't know if you've made our Bianca coat. No, no, I haven't. Ah, maybe we ought to bring her back again. Because you could have the gilet version as like a little waistcoat. Mm. And then you've got the big loose Bianca oh, over okay. the top. And that looks really nice, oh, that actually. That would be nice. Yeah. So you sew the sort of the lining collar-ish to the yeah. lining. Yeah. And then you just literally join the, the top edge of the collar. It's so straightforward. It really is. Uh, people shouldn't be frightened about doing collars yeah, at all. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I kind of, I suppose because it's a bit of a structured thing, isn't it? It involves interfacing and you sort of think, oh, I know. Tailoring. It's a, yeah, it's a bit like buttonholes. People freak out about buttonholes as well. Mm. That's why I like snaps. <laughs> <laughs> I love the funnel neck. It doesn't come up too high from Adele. No, it doesn't, does it? Because look, I think that's, you know, it's not getting in the way. No. Because if, if it gets up too high, Depends on your hair and everything, it just gets in the way. Yeah. Well, I've got quite a short neck, to be honest. So, but it isn't too high. Well, some people have much longer necks, don't they? Have you seen Ben? He's got a wee, he's like got a little giraffe neck. <laughs> if it goes funny, then that's my mic. What do you think? See, when you do it up. Oh, that's that's nice, nice, yeah. It's quite nice, isn't it? It should kind of sit away from your chin, so it's not going to, you know, it's not going to get in the way. Yeah, no, that's lovely, look. Mm, I'm liking this jacket. I think this might not be going back to kill. <laughs> Sadly, I think she'll know where it is, though. Oh, dear. And it's quite cold in this studio. Which is good, because you've got a cold, so I expect you're hot. <laughs> it is actually quite nice having it a bit chillier. Isn't it? Yeah, that's true, <laughs> actually. Yeah. I do feel for you. How long does it take you to drive home? Oh, luckily, we are... I've got to go back to work this afternoon, so um, we are literally 15 minutes down. Oh, there. wow. Yeah. I didn't realise it was that close. Oh, gosh, yes. We're literally um, the other side of Studley. Oh. Yeah, we're just Ulster, so, yeah, we're literally down the road. Yeah, no, that's not far at all. I'd forgotten yeah. it was that close. Yeah. Oh, well, you need to go back to bed then. Um, Johanna says you've got five minutes left on demo. Ah, uh, OK. So, basically, what we would do is stitch this. Yes. And then you put the two collars. If I pin this one, and then I'll show you how it goes together. OK. So we've got... You would sew this around again in exactly the same way. Let me just pin that in there. And then we match up the top edges of the collar. There, like that. So that's stitched onto that bit. Mm. And then all we do is match those bits up. Yeah. And then okay. flip it over. So if I can stitch this bit quickly. Yeah, you do that. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish it off. Well, you stitch that and I'll talk about the pattern. So okay. remember this fab pattern that we have. How many have we got left? Right, we now have more people who've got this 
gorgeous pattern in our baskets than we've got available. That doesn't mean you say you can't get yours, but if it's in your basket, you need to check out. Because if everybody checks out, then we've sold, we've, we haven't got enough. But if you've got it in your basket and you want to make this fab jacket, um, and just think of all the options. I mean, I, you could make a summer one without a collar, a winter one. I mean, wouldn't it look amazing in velvet? Ooh, wouldn't nice. Wouldn't it? Christmas yeah. parties. Yeah. When it's a little bit chilly, look lovely in that, wouldn't it? That'd be gorgeous, really nice. isn't it? You could even use, if you wanted to do it as a plain outer like this, but you could even do a patchwork lining with all your cotton scraps, which would look fab. So when you open it up, you could have patchwork lining. That would be great. Um, it goes from size, well, it's extra small to extra, extra small. <coughs> uh, dress size 8 to 32. Really, really big size range. Um, the fabric that you'll need, obviously it depends on the size that you're making, but the three metres that we've got the bundles of is enough for the large size with all the sleeves and all the pockets and everything. And for the lining fabric, you need, yeah, two and a half maximum. Um, so we've got a variety of fabrics. If you fancy denim, we've got a three metre bundle of denim. There we go. Three metre bundle of denim, that will be enough, just $22.99. So this could be your this could be your starting one. I mean you could quilt this one if you wanted to, but with you know with your lining as well, it'll be fine. Obviously, the heavier weight fabric you use, the more structured your jacket will be. Um, gorgeous, my favourite. It's called Sangria, but this is this is beautiful. This doesn't need any extra anything. It's a really lovely, lovely fabric. Yes. You, I mean, you could, you could almost make the jacket in that and have it unlined. Oh, okay. And then have it almost like a cardigan yes, or a coatigan yes. or something like that. Because it's got a really nice weight to it, hasn't yeah, it? It's a lovely, lovely structure. I love that one. We've also got black boiled wool. Gives you an excuse to buy a really nice bright scarf or knit one. That would look nice with the collar, wouldn't it? Um, and we've got some lining. So if you fancy the, um, the raspberry, well, obviously you could use this one for anyone. In fact, this would be quite nice with the denim as well, wouldn't it? But particularly nice with the raspberry. So there's two and a half metres in the lining bundles because that's what you need. And, that's the la and that will cover the largest size. So that's a viscose cotton blink flax. The sangria boiled wool, 64.99. Um, there we go, that side. I still can't do that. Um, that will look lovely with this one. And um, then we've got two other lining fabrics. We've got this lovely viscose. Let me open it out a bit so you can see. Isn't that beautiful? $26.99. Viscose poplin prints, navy floral on green. Isn't that lovely? See, that'll look nice when you're folding your sleeves back as well what you have to think about. And then this one is really pretty. I love this one. It's a really lovely charcoal background and then you've just got these falling leaves on it. Wouldn't that love, look lovely with um, the black wool? 1999. Okay. Oh, right, you've done it. I've stitched those together, but because we've got a curve, we need to release the tension. Right, in okay. the seam allowance. And this is all in the instructions? All, every single, everything that I've done today is all in the instructions. Okay. But it's nice it's to really, see it though. <laughs> really easy to follow. <laughs> there, so now we can fold that back through and you can see how that collar sits. So normally I would understitch this. Okay. So by understitching, I mean, we would sew through the under collar and the seam allowance. So that literally helps the collar to sit in the right place. Yes, because the collar is the collar tops. No, it's not. It's just under stitched. No. Yeah. So then we've got. It's a lovely colour combination. The. Uh, <laughs> so that's your front edge there. Mm. And then we've got the other front edge there. And that's, you've got your collar sitting nice and neat there. And then we've got the button stands. Oh, were they sewn on both sides? Stitched on 
either yeah. side. So yeah, and then that gives you your finish for the jacket. That's fab. That actually look, doesn't look too intimidating. No, it's does not it? at all. It doesn't look yeah, at all. Really <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Jules. No. You convinced me. Convinced me. I love this. So we'll see you back here at 11 o'clock with two dresses. Yes, yes. Two dresses. Two dresses, yes. And they're really lovely. So those are ones that were, well, one that we were both we sold out of, but one you did a long time ago as well. So. We have, but it's actually one of my favourites. I'm wearing it today. Oh, is it? Oh, yes. OK. So, although I've got covered in orange fluff now. Yeah. But there it is the one you went. Okay, yeah. that's brilliant. Um, so if you've got the pattern in your basket, you need to get checked out. We have fewer than 20 available, more than 20 if you have it in your basket. So you need to check out if you want the pattern. Remember, it has a really big size range. There's four different options with, without sleeves, with, without collar. Um, you can do it in a variety of different fabrics. It can take you through as your spring jacket, your summer jacket, your winter jacket, your party jacket. We'll do everything. You can even make it long length and have it as your rainproof dog walking jacket. Um, <coughs> And also the wadding. So if you're thinking about either, it doesn't need to be a patchwork jacket. If you were using a lighter weight fabric and you needed to add a bit of weight to it, this wadding is ideal. It's washable up to 65 degrees. It's brand new today. It's a um, Vliseline product. It's a polyester wadding. It's very soft really flexible it's cut to order so it's only 445 for half a meter but obviously if you're making the jacket you'll need more than that but if you order more than a half a meter put that number of units into your basket and um it will be set as whole piece it's 150 centimeters wide it's extremely good value for money but worth getting if you um want to either do a quilted jacket or you want to add it to put put a little bit of weight depending on what you're going to make yours in and don't forget the snaps if you don't want to do buttons, these actually come with the tool to insert them. So these are similar to the snaps that were on the denim jacket that I was just wearing. They're like a black metal, like a gun metal. They're like a black gun metal. How many do you need for your jacket? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And there's ten in here. Oh, so definitely care. practice with one first. <laughs> just to make sure you know how to put it in. But if you don't want to do buttons, don't let that put you off doing the jacket. Anyway, um, I'll see you back here in a few minutes time and Sarah will be back with us showing her magic pinwheel technique. So if you'd like to have a go at that, you fancy a bit of folded patchwork, really good for a fidget quilt as well. Um, I'll be back with you in just a few minutes time. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favorite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. 
back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford upon Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three course dinner, half a bottle of wine, and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party, and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday the 25th of November. See you there. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Welcome back to Sewing Street. I hope you enjoyed the last hour and um, remember to check out on your pattern if we've got any left. That was lovely. Um, now, Sarah's last hour. Welcome back, Sarah. You pattern sold out. <gasps> we have got a Love few it. of the kits left which have the patterns in them. That's the only way you can get hold of them. Um, but this hour we're going to make, look at this. This is so clever. That's why it's called magic. It is magic. Magic pinwheel. Totally. These are so clever, aren't they? Thank but they look really good. And we've got um, 
we've got patterns and bundles for these and the patterns are really comprehensive, really easy to understand. Now they're quite good as fidget quilts as well, aren't they? They are very good for anybody that just likes to have that kind of tactileness to sit and play with something. Mm. Um, so youngsters, yeah. anyone a bit stressed or anxious, uh, dementia people, you know. It's lovely, yeah. isn't it? And it's beautiful as well. Really, really pretty. Now, we've got three options on the bundles for you. So um, the first one is the pink one, which is um, what this sample here is made in. So once you've learned the technique, get the fabric pack. It's only $22.99. So in the fabric pack, you get five fat eighths of print fabric. In this one, you've got um, all Liberty prints. All Liberty. And then a half a metre of the white fabric that's used for the background. And more importantly, you get the full instructions. So the great thing about this is once you've learned the technique, you've had a go at this, you've made your um, sample, then, or, you know, your small quilt, you can then use this to make an even bigger one. Use all your scraps as well, because you're only using little fat eights for those. So you get full instructions. Um, does this have videos? Uh, so there's a video for the binding technique, fab, but the rest of it is all just in the instructions. Right, yeah, and you're going to show us yeah. anyway. So the video is here today. So that's that one. Um, the next one that we've got features um, a William Morris, because I can see a little strawberry thief there. Look. This one's been very popular. So it's got, this is what a fat eighth looks like. So you get, because you get five of them. A fat eighth is basically a fat quarter cut in half again. So I can't give you the exact size because fat eighths do depend on whether the fabric's cut vertically or horizontally. It also depends on the width of the fabric. But basically, it's a fat quarter cut in half either horizontally or vertically. And it does, and it does differ with different fabric makes, whether they're cut horizontally or vertically. It's usually about 9 by 22 but it can vary, but that's what our fat eighth looks like. There are five of them in this bundle, including the, um, this William Morris one. So can you see all of those here? They're sort of nice autumnal shades. So if you like that, that was the most popular of the quilt earlier was the autumnal shades. Um, and then you also get half a meter of nude, nude, half a meter of nude. And full instructions, obviously. Full instructions come with all the bundles. And then the final bundle, this one here. I want to just have a look at this. This is all Liberty, isn't it? Beautiful. So you've got some floral prints. Oh, do I need to? There we go. So you've got um, Liberty prints in blue, dark blue, and then you've got some pretty floral ones, all fat eights, and then you've got half a metre of light, light grey that goes with it. So it just depends what colour range, whether you want to go the pretty pink, more autumnal, or the floral. We also have instructions on their own. There we go. 9.99. Now remember, in Sarah's last hour, the instructions on their own sold out. So if you want the instructions, you want to use these for your scraps. They're 9.99. You need a f you need a fat eighth for each pinwheel, and if you've got the instructions on there, you can make a quilt or a cushion or whatever you want of any size, because this shows you how to do it. Uh, Sarah's going to show us now, but you will need the instructions for the measurements, etc. Right. Let me take my sample over. So what was the original idea was this? Did you, uh, did you fancy folded patchwork? I just think it's nice to have something that's a little bit more three-dimensional and a little that's playful. Yes, yeah. Well, it does, fit, it's got so much movement in it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's a great, uh, you know, it's just a great way of using up scraps as well. So, you know, you can just, you don't need a lot of fabric. That's what I like. So they're, they're so they're attached sort of in the centre, but these are... Yeah, they are the, stitched in, bits. but there's a, there's, a, there's a loose edge. So there's nothing see. that's going to come out if you play no, with them No, nothing's going to come out, and it's a nice folded edge, nothing's going to fray. Mm. Yeah, but you can sit and stroke it. Like some people, I had a boss once, and he always stroked his tie when he was thinking. <laughs> really? No, yeah, because we, we all have We all have picks, something, yeah, yeah, and then we do. Yeah. yeah. And then, the, I mean, we haven't put the ribbon in the bundle, but the ribbon you can use, you can put your own ribbon So in. this was building on the idea of the whole kind of fidget and, mm. and sort of... Um, 
you know, uh, f feeling something. So you yeah. could use the ribbons to hang it, but if I was going to do that, I'd have put them on the back. But this was just building on the fact yeah, that just they can hold that in one hand and fidget with the other and, you know. Mm. It's quite nice. Yeah. There's something about stroking, isn't there? That's, that's why we like stroking our pets. Oh, no, it is. It's no, it's very tactile. But I also think if you made it, if you use this technique to make it into a full quilt, it would be beautiful. Wouldn't yeah, it? absolutely. It's, it has real yeah. movement. But you've also put binding instructions in as yeah, well. Yeah, I have as well. And this is also because of the size of the project, it's also a really great project for if you fancy having a bit of hand quilting, doing a little uh, bit of hand okay. quilting. Yeah, because yeah. you haven't got too much, have you? No, I've got a different sample here, which is one that I did at home. Oh, okay. And you oh, that's beautiful. It looks with some. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So it's a real, you know, it's a great way to just practice new skills when you've got a small project. But it's a real learning project yeah, as well, absolutely. isn't it? Yeah. So, and even if you don't buy the bundle, you can get the instructions just on their own. Because they are so detailed, aren't they? You've put all the requirements, and that's for 19-inch square, which is this one here. what this size is. Um, but then you've said that you've, that you've got different instructions for cutting for a laptop. Yeah, so if you well. want to make it into a bigger quilt, you can scale it up using exactly the same size. Or you could, right. actually, you could even supersize it. You know, if you've got if you've got a mathsy head, okay, you can make it even bigger. <laughs> yeah. but if you wanted to make someone a lap quilt so they could play with it, then yeah. you've got all of the yes, measurements exactly. in there. Um, and then you've got photos okay. of how to do every single section, yeah. how to construct the quilt. Um, you've got tips and tricks videos yeah. as well. Um, and then all about the quilting as well, because yeah. I, I love the hand quilting on that. And then there's even the video tutorial link here about how to attach and finish your binding. So you're going to learn absolutely loads from this and make something beautiful as well. Transferable skills, isn't it? It is. So Every little bit of patchwork you do, you mm. take something to the next project. It's a bit like if you're a general crafter and you might do something in card making, and you might do something in uh, weaving, and mm. then you go back to sewing, which might be your main hobby, and you find that you're just taking what you've learned and you're just processing it and doing yeah. it. Yeah, in, in and you just use it for something it. else. Yeah. Well, and also once you've learned this thing, oh, I know what I'd do with that. Um, Carol says, I think that would make a lovely fidget lap quilt for dementia patients. Yeah. Oh, I think it would, yes, if you made a whole lap quilt and the um, measurements are in here as well for the um, lap quilt size, then it's lovely for somebody, as yeah. particularly <laughs> keep them warm at the same time, but really to play with as well. And a great, you know, it doesn't take up loads of fabric. So if you're, you know, if you, if you enjoy making for charity mm. and you've got a local care home or something like that. Oh, that's you, true. Yeah. Also, I was thinking memory quilt. Yes. So you could use specific fabrics. Oh, how nice would that you? be that they might remember mm. as well? It might have a real, yeah. Because it could have certain th memories or echoes of different people. Long-term memories yeah. do come back, don't they? Yeah, could come in fabric as yeah. well. Right, so I'm going to um, let you show me how to make it. Okie okay, dokie. <laughs> I'm going to move my quilt out of the way. <laughs> right, so we're going to need um, a stack of uh, plain squares for the background. And then we're going to use our coloured fabric. So I've got the lovely blue palette here that I'm working with. Okay. Um, and we, I just wanted to show people how I would go about cutting fabrics en masse if I wanted to speed the process up. So I've got here my strips that I'm going to be using and they've already been cut to four and a half inches wide and now I need to cut some four and a half inch squares. So the thing about your fabrics when you get them is that the edges of the fabric won't always be level or straight or anything like that but I've cut strips so I know that those strips are straight. So I'm just going to take a moment and stack them on top of one another. And I'm just trying to match up as best as I can, but not perfectly, one end of the fabrics. So the bundle that Sarah's using is the one that's on the screen at the moment, if you want to get that, that one. Beautiful. Liberty Mix florals. It's a really lovely palette. So I've just really carefully stacked those on top of one another. And um, to do this, you do need to have a really nice sharp blade in your rotary okay. cutter because I'm going to cut through multiple layers. But um, some people get put off by the fact that everything needs to take so long. So like in the Happy Scrappy with my mm. piece of paper, being able to cut multiple layers is a bit of a whim. So I know that I've got to cut um, four squares out of this. And I don't know, I can't get them all to match at the end because they are all cut slightly differently. So I'm just going to trim the end off by putting my ruler on. I could do it from the other direction. I'm quite happy doing it from this direction. I'm just going to trim as little as possible. But you might find it easier to put your ruler on that way and trim a little bit off and do it the way I'm doing it. So there's my straight edge. And now I'm just going to cut my four and a half inch. Oh, no, three and a half inch, she says. 
three and a half inch square. It's all in the instructions. It's all in the instructions. <laughs> I haven't had enough cups of tea yet this morning. Yeah, it's very early still. It's only quarter past ten. It's going to really throw me when I go home. I'm used to being on at 11. Oh, yeah, you go. Oh, it's all early. <laughs> And actually, they're four-inch squares because I've just realised that I'm reading my ruler from the um, from the half-inch side. So if I put it on properly, I'm actually cutting four-inch <laughs> squares. So there we go. I think that's four and a half to three and a half to four. But it doesn't matter. It All doesn't of the matter. measurements are in the instructions. They'll tell you what the measurements are. Yeah. Comedy hour with me today. So I've now got four squares, and I'm going to need four squares in each of my fabrics. Okay. So... First thing to do is to take those squares and just iron them on the diagonal. So I'm folding them in half, right sides together, uh, wrong sides together. It is comedy hour. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Are you feeling that you're in safe hands with me, Rebecca? Yes. Yeah. So I'm on the other desk. I can't get burnt. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, it's all in the instructions. All in the instructions. This is really good if you're using scraps, though, isn't it? I like yeah. that. And, you know, there's no reason why your pinwheel has to have all of the same or fabrics. charm squares. Charm squares would work. Yeah, I mean, if you've got the instructions on their own, in fact, you... Oh, I think it would make a really nice big quilt. So I'm just going to do it. And I guess you could do join as you go, so you could... Because you could do, like, a block this size. If you yeah. want to make a big quilt, couldn't you? Yeah. Now I'm converted to join as you go. You liked that, didn't you? Yeah, I did, actually. It shows how much I don't concentrate, because I've always thought, oh, I'm not doing that, because I don't want all that wadding. <laughs> so how much patchwork do you normally do? Loads. Do you? Yes. Love it. I absolutely love patchwork. I do loads. And I either quilt them myself, which I hate, or I send them away <gasps> to be long arm quilted. Yeah. I actually don't. I don't enjoy... I enjoy quilting like this size. Yeah. I enjoy the process of quilting, and the, but the big quilt, horrible. Yeah. Mm. I do do it, though, but not many lines. Not many lines. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm going to lay out four squares on my cutting mat. And then I'm going to have the colourful, pretty floral. So I've laid out four squares, and then I've got on top of that, I've got my, um, my pinwheel fabric, and that's been pressed in half, wrong sides together, and I've got that nice fold coming across, mm. and I've got all my raw edges matched up. Okay, okay. yeah, that looks lovely. What I'm going to do like that, to is be I'm going to take that corner, so that was the bottom left, and I'm just going to pin it there, pin it, clip it. And then I'm going to take that one and bring it down and clip that one and then I'm going to take that one and bring it across and then I'm going to take this one and bring it up so, on each so like when you do a pinwheel quilt where you have to go in different directions yes yeah, so as I've gone round mm -hmm. I've, each one's been folded in a different direction and I'm just going to quickly, um, you don't have to do it, but for the, for the sake of demoing, I'm just going to quickly baste a couple of, just do a couple of stitches where my patchwork clips are, just okay, so I can just take to those hold off. it in space. But you don't have place. to do that, um, but I'll just do that. Because they look like the, um, what are those called at the seaside that you blow into? Windmills, don't they? they oh, look yeah. Like windmills. Yeah, exactly. So you can make them in like stripy fabric. It'd be like a seaside quilt, wouldn't it? Oh, that would look great. With st an embroider sticks. Yeah, getting carried away now. But you could have like appliqued sticks on them, couldn't you? Because they look like windmills. I'm loving how your brain is working. <laughs> I love this. I think this is a fab technique. The instructions on their own, 9 99 Half of the stock has already gone. So as with Sarah's first hour, we sold out by the end. So if you want to get them, you need to get checked out now. I think this is just a lovely technique. 
Um, but remember, all of the fabric bundles come with instructions as well. And the one that Sarah's using, that beautiful Liberty Fabrics, I think that's an amazing price as well for that because you get all the, all the Liberties in it. But this is, is a really nice, really nice technique. I like unusual ones. Right, okay. Right, so you've I've just, just literally tacked. stitched those down, yeah. Um, and I've okay. done it in the seam allowance so that those stitches wouldn't show in the end. And that's a step that I'm just doing because I'm demoing and I just want to make sure that it's easy for you to see okay. what's going on. So, so that would, would you normally do that if you were making it? Absolutely not. <laughs> You should go, yes, yes, and I'd tack it by hand. No, well. I always say to people, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> um, I am quite a lazy sewer, it has to be said, <laughs> yep. So I won't pin or tack if I don't need to. <laughs> I would just kind of hold and probably say a few rude words underneath my breath when it doesn't go right. <laughs> well, this looks pretty perfect. So if you've done this lazily, then it is, it is perfect. So... Um, what we've done here, I like to think, is we've created like our centre pinwheel. So just looking at the picture on the front of the pattern. But in these same squares, we've got to put in corners for the other pinwheels as ah, well. Ah, OK. So before I think about sewing any of this together, I want to make sure that I've got my other bits lined right. up. Right. Oh, so, so you kind of need to assemble it. Yeah. So when you're, um, when you're thinking of your layout, you've got five different colours to play with or more if you're making something bigger. So just think about what you want to go in the middle. So I've chosen the most colourful one to go in the middle and then all of the other colours are kind of okay. going to be cascading around. Um, and we're going to be making it in rows because it's basically a four by four block. So it's four right. squares across by four squares down. But we're going to start in the centre and work out. OK. Just for our layout. Right. Basis. So I've just got to decide now. So I'm going to possibly put the green up there. And that one over there. Well, I guess also laying it out like this before is that you can then move it, whereas if you sewed it all in one... Yeah, absolutely. But you can actually go, yeah. oh, no, I don't like the green there, or you can swap it around at this stage. Yeah. Um, so I think that looks quite nice. I've kind of put the, the lightest and the darkest opposite each other and then kind of the middlings yeah. opposite yeah. each other if you're into colour and tone and all of that. Um, so then we've got to position these ones. And if you're... Feeling a bit unsure when you're doing this at home, a great thing to do will be to look at the back of the pattern because the, the yeah. graphic really yeah. easily shows you what you've got to do. And so this one down here is going to come down because you can't just assume it because you've, it's only part of the pinwheel and you haven't done the rest of the pinwheel yet. And I've got, I guess you've got the centre pinwheel to use for reference Exactly. Well, which way round you've got to fold it. Mm. I'm, I'm using clips, but you could use pins. That is, that's completely fine. Um, so I've got to think about this. That one's got to go up. And then that means that one has got to go across. Um, at this stage, another way of working out which way your pinwheels have got to go is that this one here is the same as that one there. Yeah. OK, so as you go across, all of those ones will be in a line. Oh, of course. So if you yes. see on the back of the pattern, yeah. the same ones are going across. So again, I'm just going to quickly um, tack these down. Well, I guess as you add more and more, you probably get better at it, but yeah. it's quite, quite good to do that. But it does show how you really don't need much fabric and to make a bigger quilt is lovely. It'd look quite stunning, wouldn't it? You could really make the colours pop. Mm. I love this one because it's a really gentle palette with that really kind of ditzy one. That brings it yeah, up. but I like this pink one. I think the, um, the Liberty is lovely. The pink one is the most popular. Is it? Shall I show you the sample? The pink Liberty is the most popular, but then it is beautiful. What a lovely way. Oh, the ribbons, they, they're just there if you want to make it, make it as a fidget quilt. So there's enough fabric to make this size. So you can make this into a cushion. 22.99. You get the full instructions and you get um, five fat eighths and half a metre of fabric. So that's everything that you need to make this. That's, you'll have enough fabric for the front and the back, I presume. You have enough for the back. Uh, sorry, how much fabric was there? Half a metre. Yeah, you should have, yeah, yeah, of the backing, of yes. the white, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
And also, obviously, full instructions come with that as well. And in the instructions are the measurements for making a 36-inch square lap quilt as well. But obviously, if you want to make a bigger one, once you've worked out the sizes you need to cut, it's fairly simple then to work out how much bigger you want to be for it to be. And if you start off with one of the bundles, you can just add to that. Absolutely. Right, I'm just going to do one more so that I can show you how the pattern begins to work as it comes out. So I would make something like this. I would design it, so the layout stage, I've worked from the centre out, but once I've actually got the, um, my design, when it comes to piecing it together, I would make sure that I was working in rows. So I'd join strips of four. Or move your instructions, because they're getting just... Oh, there we go. Caught in the iron. <laughs> Don't have a fire just yet. It's a new studio. It's a very nice. Imagine how much trouble we're getting to. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Right, so all I'm doing is I've just added on the next set of squares so that I can see what I've got to do. And then that one would come in like that. I think this is quite... Um, Oh, I love it. I love it. I think it's really, it's lovely because you do it bit by bit, don't you? You know, you fold, you press it, you put it on, then you fold it up and then you tack it. I can imagine sort of getting carried away with the size of it. You <laughs> ended up with a really big quilt. It's quite, I like quite mindful process. It is. No, it's lovely. Okay. And it's, um, it looks really complicated. It looks a lot which more. Which I like. I know. But like that's that. the trick of patchwork, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? I think all patchwork is generally looks more complicated yeah. than it actually is. And I know as somebody that does patchwork, that might sound mm. like, you know, an easy thing to say. Um, so we can begin to see how this is all coming together now. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew together these two centre ones to show you the next stage. OK. So this one here has got a fold going that way. And this one here has got a fold going that way. So if I fold them over right sides together as if I'm going to stitch them and I'm going to pop them on top of each other and then if I just turn back this edge here, can you see that I've got a fold here Oh yeah, and yes. a fold there and they should be sitting next to each other. So when you come to stitch that corner or stitch that seam, if you run your finger along here, You'll feel the folds, but you won't feel any change in level of the fabric. So they're nicely butted right, up to so each other. Right, so make sure they don't overlap. Yeah, don't they? You don't because it's going to be bulky enough anyway. You don't want those two bits okay. overlapping. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I guess, like you say, because you can feel it as well. Yes. So I'm just going to make sure I am. Have I twisted that round? I'm just checking which side I'm stitching. So I'm going to stitch down here. This is the side I'm stitching. So I'm going to put that underneath and do my normal quarter inch seam and as you are aware I'm just holding it all in place you could pin it if you wanted to When I fold that out, I've got those all attached now down here. Mm. On the back, there's a lot of fabric because you've got all your folded fabric. Oh, OK. Well. Yes. Yeah. So do you remember me talking about butterflies? Butterflies. Yes, I do. I think this is the time and the place. So if you're with, um, with Sarah and I at eight o'clock, she mentioned butterfly seams. Like, what is that? So it's pressing a seam open. It's just basically pressing a seam open. But that's such a nicer term. I didn't know it was called that. Butterfly seams, which makes sense. So you don't do pressing to one side with no, this? No, because you're just going to end up with too much bulk. So butterfly seams. Now, these fabrics are really lovely. Um, fabrics, they're all so different, aren't they? Mm. So sometimes you get a fabric that's a bit crisper than these are. These have got a nice soft finish to them. And when you've got a crisper finish and it's a bit more starchy and mm. a bit firmer, um, I have been known to get my hammer out. <laughs> so when you really want to try and flatten something mm. down, um, 
I do get a hammer and just give it a little tap and just sort it. I don't know what it does. It just seems to sort of break the, break the fibres. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it can do that a little bit flatter because obviously you're going to have you're going to have lots of bulk. In a minute, yeah, I'm going to join the other thing wheel in. So I've butterfly pressed them so that there's less bulk, and that means that they're all nicely pressed open at the back. Uh, it's only a quarter inch seam allowance, so it's you know it's not too much for faff to do. Um, and then if that doesn't work, give them a little hammer. <laughs> so. Well, I do have a hammer in my sewing room, but that's for attaching like um, rivets or yes. press fasteners, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. but not normally for fabric. But. To be honest, it, I mean, no. But I guess it breaks down the fibres, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, I've got one of those um, one of those toolkits you get from the shop that um, sells the big blue bags, mm. and I keep that in my sewing room. Oh, okay. So, um, again, I'm just going to put this pinwheel together. Heather says, I love watching Sarah's demos. What a great teacher. This design will make a lovely oh. cushion front for my granddaughter's bedroom from Heather in Tunbridge Wells. Oh, which Heather, colour I way think I might know Heather in Tunbridge Wells. Well, I don't know. There's probably a lot of Heathers. That I presume be... that's Tunbridge Wells when she says T-Wells. It's Tunbridge yeah, Wells. Yeah, I'm from Wells. Tunbridge Wells. Oh, there you go then. Gorgeous. I think it would make a lovely cushion as well. I think oh, it'd be really cushion, nice. yeah. It'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? It's a real sort of um, talking, talking piece. So again, I've just matched my corners up so that when I run my finger across, there's no real change in thickness. It's nice and smooth. Yeah. And I'm just checking which side I'm sewing down. But like you say, this is a mindful task, isn't it? Yeah. So it's worth taking the time to I get think, it right. Because you're only what, doing a few. Exactly. This is, you know, it's raining outside. It's Sunday afternoon. Mm. What, what have I got that I can do? What, what, rather than what have I got that I don't want to do? <laughs> <laughs> or am I going to tidy my sewing room or am I going to sew in my sewing room? That's the thing, isn't it? So. Yeah, it has to be in desperation to tidy my sewing room. Oh, does it? Mm, I hate doing it. Is that because you'd rather be doing something yeah. else and it doesn't disturb you if it's busy? No. I sort of try, I, I try and put, like, when I've finished a project, put the tools and things away. <gasps> Are you quite a tidy sewer? Not during. Not during. Not during at all. Yeah. So I do try afterwards to put things away, but I hate doing it. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just not a very tidy person. OK. So there we can see the pinwheel coming oh, together. Oh, I think it's gorgeous. So I'm just going to join on the outside edges now. I think and because obviously it's like a, a windmill where it's all folded in a different direction, it has that movement to it. Yeah. It's like it's, you could just blow it and it could turn round. It has got remin. I hadn't thought of it about the, um, the windmills you get at the seaside. But, um, it has well, that's exactly what I think it looks like. A spotty ones would be lovely. And then you see you could applique a little stick on, couldn't you? I'm really into that. You will have to have a stick. They're always on sticks. <laughs> when I think of sticks, I'm thinking of lollipops rather than oh. Do you remember those really big dummy lollies you used to Oh, yes, yes, They used to mean. just last forever and ended up getting put in the bin because you couldn't possibly eat the whole thing. Well, it'd be quite nice. You could even, like, applique, like, a cordon or something, couldn't you? To have yep. some sticks. It's the seaside quilt. I'm really into that. Right, so I'm just going to add on these outside edges. It's exactly the same principle laying everything on top and making sure that it's not too bulky. Mm. And there should be enough fabric in the, um, oh, the, the packs to be able to do scrappy binding as well, which I really like. Oh, so okay. So after up. you've cut out all of your squares, yeah. then you could join together. Oh, that would be yeah. nice. So you've got a little bit of each fabric in the binding going around the outside of the project. And like if you were making a cushion, so you could bind the back to the front as well, couldn't you? Yeah. So you could still have that binding. But it is a bit of a statement cushion. Can you have a statement cushion? I'm making the machine beep a lot today. Oops. So just sticking with a quarter inch seam on all of this, because it's patchwork. 
So would you tack um, all of your little pinwheels on to all of the squares before you did any assembly? No, I would, I would just pin it. Um, but all but you'd pin all the squares on before... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. sorry, assembly. yes, I would, yeah. I would make sure that I like my layout because it's actually interesting. Once you start putting more colour onto something, mm. sometimes you see it differently. Um, it's the same in crochet. Yeah. If you're crocheting a blanket and you add one row of colour on... Oh, see, then it's completely different, Yeah, it isn't changes it? how the blanket looks. And that's the problem because then you think, oh, I don't know now, but I've already gone round two sides. <laughs> Okay, so there are my layers done. So next thing it would be is joining the rows. So I'm just going to quickly press this seam open. So butterfly pressing again, just to reduce the bulk. Otherwise, you, if you try and press it, you're in one direction. You're always going to end up um, with too much. But it's funny because once you've quilted, you've made it into something, you don't really see all of that bulk. You? It's a no. bit like, um, you know, the folded patchwork where you've got loads of layers together, but it, it sort of disappears. Doesn't it does it? disappear. Okay. Oh, just quickly on that one. I'm not a very tidy sewer, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my room is never tidy. Um, I always just seem to have a lot of stuff, a lot of boxes and things all over the place. Yeah. And it's just, oh. And it can be a case with me of if I've got all the stuff, like if I'm dressmaking, if I've got the pattern and I've bought the fabric, kind of in my head I've made it already. Yeah. yeah. I've moved on, show me the next project. <laughs> I've moved on. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, just, yeah, that's true. Or I look at it and think, I wish I could just throw it in the air and then it come down, but then, then I'd miss out the journey. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so we've got two rows done now. So I would make all my rows before I got onto this next stage. Oh, that's gone the wrong way. Um, so I would have all my rows made before I went on to the next stage, but I'm just going to, because I'm demoing. So now these are going to go right sides together. So this is going to get flipped over. And it's exactly the same principle in this centre bit, where right. you've got all of the bulk, that these folds are going to sit on top of each other. And you're going to feel here just to make sure there's no excess. Yes, yeah. And because you can feel it, you haven't got to check it, I guess. Exactly, it's quite yeah. nice, really. And hopefully as well, that should mean that your seam should line up quite well. Yes. Because actually, normally, at a seam point like this, I might put a pin through to make sure that it matches when I've stitched it together. Um, but this is so bulky now, there's so many layers of fabric here that that isn't going to work very well. You're not going to get a pin to travel through no, there and come back no. up. Um, so by actually just feeling, you should find that you're, you're in a good spot. And then... Well, I guess this is where the clips really come in, isn't yeah. it? Because you can't pin it anymore. No. So, I'm just... Oh, that was a very dodgy seam. <gasps> we'll ignore that. We one. have got a few packs of the clips. Not loads and loads. 14 99 I can highly recommend them. I don't I'm know what happens to mine. I keep losing. They just... don't know where they go. Patrick. Uh, clips. Sewing clips. Pack of 100. Now, you, if you try and shop around, you see if you can find 100 clips for 14 99 That's a fantastic price. I think the problem is, is I clip, because they don't, they don't disappear like pins do, but I think I clip things together and forget they're then clipped together somewhere else. Yeah, I think they're a bit like socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's always odd socks. How they're not that lost, happen? they've just they've, temporarily yeah. disappeared. So I would get those. They are so useful for so many things. Crisp packets. So, as I say, you can't actually pin, so you're having to just, as you're stitching through, you're having to just hold. You could patchwork clip, but eventually you've got to take that yeah, patchwork I guess clip so. out. Yeah, at some point. So, you've just got to keep to looking in. all the time you're stitching. And like you say, you can feel it, can't yeah. you? So, it's getting quite thick where it's going through the machine now. So, I'm just making sure as well that my raw edges... So the little bits of the windmills can float around a little bit. So until you get used to knowing where they should feel like they're sitting, just keep checking. There's nothing wrong with sewing a few stitches and stopping and just checking. a little look yeah, underneath. Everyone thinks it's got to go through really quickly, but it doesn't at all. 
again when I get to my next seam because I haven't pinned. I'm just going to do my best to make sure that they're going to line up. Oh, my sparkly cardi looks good on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it looks lovely. Right. Okay, so now we've done that. Mm. Again, it's you can see it's really quite bulky in there in the middle. So what we've got to try and do is press open the back of all of those seams as well. And it's at this stage that you might think the hammer's a really good idea <laughs> just to push down right in the centre. So mm. I'm just going to push on that. And it just helps squash it down. So I'm going to bring that over to the arm. Well, I guess it does. I'm trying to think who we had on before was talking about hammering it. And I think it was... I can't remember. And I think it was to do with this, but it does sort of break the fibres. I'd never even yeah. thought about it. Ironing's great, but sometimes the hammer works. But once it's quilted, because, like, you know, I've got your sample here, it doesn't yeah. look bulky no, at no, all. No, 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 not at all. It's just in the sewing of it. And if you're a patchworker, you just instinctively want to put everything to the side. But um, this is a patchwork project, but you don't have to be a patchworker at all to do it. Well, I know it's funny, isn't it? Because some people go, oh, well, I'm not a patchwork, I'm a dressmaker. But it's all sewing. Exactly. And the skills for, you know, being able to sew a straight seam you need for both, using a seam allowance, cutting yeah. accurately. It's, if you can do one, you can definitely do the other. Absolutely, definitely. Right, so that's now pressed quite a bit flatter. The, if you really feel it, you can feel the bulk, but as you say, once it's gone on to yeah, there, no, see, once you it's can't. made up and it's got some cool, well, yeah. some wadding behind it. And then you've just got to um, just press that the wrong way. Just keep building up your rows. So as I say, I would normally have laid it all out to start with, so I can add on the bits up here. And if you haven't ever tried any um, hand quilting, this is a really good size project for giving it a go. Um, well, it's manageable, isn't it? Absolutely. As well, and I love the hand quilting on your, your sample. It works really well. It does. I don't know. I think because this has got a slightly juvenile kind of vibe mm. to it, you know, um, I think the hand sewing does work really well with it because it kind of carries the vibe through of that kind of like um, naivety. And yeah, it does. But it's also, it feels, but I guess maybe the fabrics, it feels sort of quite traditional and small. And yes. Therefore, the hand quilting works really nicely with it. When you are hand quilting, um, I sometimes get asked sort of what are my top tips. Yes, go on then. And, um, so there's all the sorts of rules, aren't there, about patchwork. Oh yeah, can, we, can you pass me the hand quilted version? just so I can show it. And then, this is what we mean by hand quilting. We don't have this colourway, so this is a running original. Stitch. But can you see the hand quilting? So what, yes, what would your tips be for anyone so who's not done this before? I would say um, that something that, if you're gonna do something by hand, the most important thing is to find tools that you are comfortable with. Right. So there are all sorts of needles and threads and things like that that you should be using. But if you're starting out, I, I would find a needle that you're comfortable with. So the length of the needle is really important. And also obviously the size of it. You don't want anything too thick in terms of the needle because the thread you're gonna put through it isn't gonna be thick. So you don't want like an embroidery needle. Um, but sometimes using a longer needle is easier for people. And some people prefer using a shorter needle. We're all different. Yeah, there's so don't, not, yeah, don't be, be right. told what it's got to yeah. be. Okay. Um, and I would still, personally, I would still spray baste it. So using the old 505 spray, mm. make it really manageable. But you could just quickly put some tacking stitches through it. Um, but find a needle that's really comfortable. And um, don't make the mistake of using an old needle. Um, so a needle that's been passed down and passed down. <laughs> because I've got needles that have been passed down and passed down. And it's lovely and romantic to think, oh, I'm going to use my <laughs> grand's needles for sewing. Um, but actually, when you use your grand's needle and then you use your brand new needle, you notice why you should use your new needle. Um, so a new needle is going to be a lot sharper, mm. so it's going to make the process a lot easier. So if you're going to have a go at it, use, try and get yourself, they're not expensive, just get yourself a new pack of needles um, so that it's properly sharp at the end. And it will just make the process a lot more enjoyable and it will also make it a lot smoother. Okay. Um, and I would most definitely 
um, draw some lines onto my quilt. So you've got options when you're going to do that. You could use a fabric marking pen that disappears, either it washes away, irons away. Um, you could use a hero marker, hero marker, mm -hmm. uh, which is a plastic tool which you can use to draw lines into your fabric. So it creates a crease, but it doesn't actually create a, a line of drawing on your quilt. But that line will stay there for quite a while. Um, there's loads of different techniques for, for adding lines onto your, your project for quilting. But without those lines there, you're going to struggle to get lovely straight stitches. Yeah, and this, straight these stitches. in your sample, these are beautifully straight. Um, what about thread? What thread do you use? So I would use a heavier weight thread than I would use for my normal uh, piecing. Oh, okay, so not your normal 50 weight thread. No, I'd go, I'd go slightly heavier. Okay. Um, or maybe you could use a few strands of embroidery cotton. I mean, this is, you know, what have you got to hand? Yeah. Just yeah, lay it true. out on the quilt, on your project, and just see what it looks like. Because mm. sometimes the weight might make a difference. Like if you're trying to do quilting that's just adding texture but isn't going to add anything to the pattern, then you, you might just want to use quite a normal weight thread. Mm. It's not going to make any difference because you're just looking to add the texture. Yeah, I see what you mean. But if you're looking to add an extra bit of interest to your quilt, then I would definitely go for a contrasting colour, obviously. Yeah, no, and, and then it you works might want to go for a slightly thicker thread. Because um, the red looks lovely. Yeah. And what about actually getting the stitches the same length? Because yours, yours are spot on. Just practice. Okay. Just practice. There is no, there isn't anything. You'll just find that you, as you do it, you find a length that's comfortable for you. So you'll notice that some, if you sort of had the opportunity at a quilt show, for example, to look at a variety of hand-stitched quilts, they'll all be slightly different sizes because actually we all just urge oh, Okay. Um, there's some people who put little markings on their thumbs with pen. Um, have you ever done that with blanket stitch? No, never. Okay. Wow. So, if you imagine that you're holding your work, yes. you can put markings on the end of your thumb so that your blanket stitches are all the same length. So you just put two lines on your thumb and then you're putting your, your needle through at one line and then you're bringing it through at the next line and then you move your thumb along. I know. Yeah. The things you can get lost discovering on um, this internet. I think that's fab. But I guess if it's got to be right, it's got to be right, yeah. though, isn't it? But, but the thing oh, for I me just... about hand quilting, yeah, I think... it evolves. You find your pace with it. And it shouldn't be perfect. No, I like the fact it's slightly imprecise. Yeah. It's near, near enough. Yeah, it shows it's made with love. <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sweat and tears. <laughs> but, yes, yes. A little bit of that as well. <laughs> I know, that's why it's... But then sometimes, like, you know, when you enter quilt competitions, it's got to be perfect. That's why I don't think I don't Well, but that's a different kind of... That's making your hobby into more of a... Yeah, um, I don't think I'd ever yeah. be entering one of those. No. Um, I think, yeah, I think really what you've got to do is enjoy the fact that you're making something for somebody and, um, and, in, and just go into the flow of it. You know, if you're using up... Um, so, say you decided to incorporate into that some memory fabric, mm. so maybe old shirts. I mean, if you're thinking pinwheels and, and seaside, yeah, be beautiful gentleman striped shirts. You know, they would be grab. Uh, yeah, they'd be know. absolutely yeah. and nice and crisp as well. Well, or crisp or worn and soft. Yeah. So you might true. find that each pinwheel has a slightly different character to it because mm. some of the fabrics have been used and softened with wear yeah. and washing, and other fabrics will be a bit crisper. Um, yes, shirts would be great. So if you want the instructions on their own, because you're going to use things, that's the graphic that's in there, but well over half the stock. I collect, there's another, I collect je old jeans and old I do. shirts. I do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these old shirts. got loads of them now. 9 99 for the instructions on their own. I went into my local Patrick shop in Bath once and they'd made a quilt from old shirts hanging up. And from then I started collecting them. I think she'd been to charity shops and bought all sorts. I still haven't made it, but it, this would be brilliant for her. Was it. she including the pockets and things, detailing? No, she just used it and she made pinwheels, not these sort of pinwheels, but that was what yeah. it, it all was. But yeah. she just, it was so, it was all blue and white. It was beautiful. <gasps> Absolutely beautiful. I've got loads of shirts now, but as a memory quilt, and I think a lot of people would like to do that, or even children's clothes would be nice. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Baby clothes, and then you can make them a, like a little... Oh. little... I've still got a big stash of baby clothes. I've got loads of those babies. as well yeah. in the loft. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, my babies aren't babies now, though. But, you know, I've kept their favourite... My Well, not their favourite clothes. My favourite. My, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Did you... Uh, can you... I will confess to having actually bought clothes because I knew it would look good in a quilt. 
<laughs> no, no, I've never you done do that. You do not do that. I never, and I never even thought about making a quilt from them. But when I got part, you know, you could pass clothes on and, yeah. you know, you can't keep everything. Yeah. I've got three of them. Um, I decided to just keep my favourite things or things that I'd made for them. Yeah. Like little dresses and things. But I never yeah. thought about the quilt. Yeah, no. Thank I'm... goodness. Can you imagine what I might have bought? Well, I did buy a lot of summer dresses. Because again, with a, with a child's summer dress, there's a lot of fabric in the skirt. And I mm. bought a lot of summer dresses where I really liked the pattern. <laughs> knowing that that would make something quite good at the end of it. I, have, I mean, it's all still folded up in a little suitcase in the loft waiting to be done. But one day. One day. And I bought an awful lot of... Um, my daughter's clothes off of um, second-hand sites. So it wasn't a case that, you know, I bought second-hand, I sold mm. second-hand. So I didn't, it wasn't like I was just buying from the shops <laughs> and spending a fortune on fabric <laughs> in dresses. Um, but yeah, I did, I did buy with that in mind. So the bundle that um, Sarah's doing now, we'll put that into the graphics. Now, because we, we can see what it looks like. It does look really different once you do it. Yeah. We're in single figures on this bundle now. And the instructions are very low as well. But just think, I mean, it's interesting. Let, let us know what you're going to make with yours. Because I think quite often, you know, you all, you all have great ideas. So we've talked about a few things like shirts or children's clothes or fidget quilts. But I know you all have great ideas. It's, it's just when someone like Sarah, a fab teacher, comes up with a pattern, it sparks an interest, doesn't it? It sparks an idea where you think, oh, yes. All of my very expensive Liberty fabrics I might use for this. Well, that's one of the nicest things about teaching is that um, and meeting loads of people and doing the same project is A, everybody brings different fabrics. You get to see how other people mm. put fabrics together and you can really learn loads from that. And then another is that you give people the basic thing, the project, and then they've got a whole new interpretation on it. Yeah, so I might look at something and say, oh, well, it should be done like this and mm. like that. And then somebody will arrive with a set of fabrics and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> and then they do it and it looks amazing. And I'm mm. like, well, that's challenged me. That's, you know. Yeah, that's it's really question. great because everyone, you know, all, the, all these wonderful creative people, you all have such fab ideas. But, you, you know, it's this little spark of a project to make it, which is great. So it's really, that one's, I really like that, um, this one. I like the grey background on it as well. The grey background is um, really nice. Calico would be a lovely background. Ooh, I love a calico. Oh, we've run out of bobbin. <gasps> oh. Don't worry then, yeah. don't worry. We, we can, can just talk through that bit. We? But yeah, that's what it's going to look like. And I do, yeah, I think this is very gentle. So it's a nice grey. The pink's nice as well. Yeah, it is. It's lovely. Well, actually, they really stand out, don't they? Yeah. Like pinwheels on a cloudy day. Yeah, that's British seaside, that is, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Grey sky. Probably would be today, yesterday. Op Gorgeous, but... Optimistic pinwheels <laughs> on a grey <laughs> OK, so what, once you've joined all of those together, what would the next step be? Right, so um, however you're going to quilt it, um, we have put on the back of the instructions um, a suggestion for quilting lines, because what you do need to do is make sure that you're not quilting through the pinwheels themselves, <laughs> otherwise you're going to quilt them flat. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to find a way of quilting around it. So I always like simple things. So I've gone on the back, I've shown you the, the, the quilting lines that I think would look really good, but you could do whatever you wanted. I mean, you could stitch some buttons into the middle if you wanted to. Oh, yes. And that, and that would work as quilting if they went all the way through to the back. So if you think that mm. your, your centres aren't very good, it doesn't overly matter because they're very, very forgiving. Oh, buttons would look brilliant, wouldn't but they? And could... again, add to that fidget element. Yeah, well. exactly. So you just need to have, make sure you've got quite a strong needle because <laughs> it is quite thick there. <laughs> but you could put... I wouldn't hand stitch like quilting through the middle, but sewing a button on would be quite fun. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about those windmills at the seaside, they always have that spinny bit. They do, the they're brilliant. They? Yeah. And my machine I discovered, despite the fact I've had it well, has got a button stitch. Yes, I know. Who knew? And it's magic because it, all it is is a zigzag that you set to the right yeah. width, isn't it? Because it's got a special button yeah. foot. Yeah. So you could even use you that. You probably, yeah. I mean, you could. It's really thick, so you just want to go gentle and make mm. sure you've got a proper thick needle in your machine because a, a fine needle going through that bit there is yeah, not going to happen. Yeah, that's true. But that would look lovely, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it would be enough because yes. it's only a small project. You wouldn't need to have lots of um, quilting lines on it as well if you just went through the centre of your mm. of your pinwheels. Fab. And then yeah. bind the edge? Bind the edge. Um, the instructions are on the, uh, the link. Um, and, yeah, again, you can just join all your bits together to make some binding. If so you did you, do you think you'd have enough left? 
um, out of the, you would have enough, um, but you'd have, you, would, um, you wouldn't have enough of any one of them. So you would need to join them together. Yeah, so if you joined them all together, yeah. you would have enough yeah. to do. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I'll just recap this bundle. So this, the one that we, um, so used to make this one. Oh, sorry, the one you were working with, right, which is this one here, this one here, um, 22 .99. There are more of you who've got that one in baskets than we've actually got available. So that's that beautiful Liberty one on a cloudy day. <laughs> you know, it works really well with the grey. I think that's lovely. I think sometimes we always use like just white or cream, yeah. but actually the grey is lovely. Remember, you get the full instructions with that one as well, with all of the um, links to the to the um, tutorials for the different really stages. really good binding handout that shows you exactly how to put the binding oh, okay. in the corners and get So, because we haven't got round to, well, the, we've done, Sarah's concentrated on the pinwheels, but there is a bind, there's the link on the back to a binding tutorial of how to do that. So with this bundle, we have got more, more of you have it in baskets than we've got it. That's the one that Sarah's been demonstrating with. The pink one, which is the sample one, the Liberty Pink, so you've got five Liberty Fat Eights and half a metre of white fabric. And again, when everyone has checked out, this one is in single figures. I mean, it's very good value when you think of all the Liberty you've got in that. It's so pretty, isn't it? Um, and then the final one is this beautiful autumnal one. A um, little bit of William Morris there. I've got a bit of Strawberry Thief. Lovely shades of um, browns and oranges. This is lovely for this time of the year and um, nude for the background, which is a nice, soft, gentle, neutral shade that will work, really work well with this. 22 99 for that one. And if you want the instructions on their own because you want to make a bigger quilt, you've got plenty of scraps of your own already. Maybe you've got some gorgeous Tilda or Kaif or Liberty, or you're going to make a memory quilt. Maybe you want to use old clothes to remind you of something, school ties. Maybe. School ties would be great, wouldn't it? I've seen loads of quilts made from ties, and you think, yeah. I mean, you know, but if you've got a lot of ties that you want to use, you could cut them into squares. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm All sorts of things, but fabric or, you know, maybe every curtain that you've ever made. <laughs> and you have, a have you made a lot of curtains? I've made a lot of curtains, yeah. <laughs> But that's random. <laughs> random. <laughs> yeah. Lots of curtains. I made a quilt when I was about 16 from like three inch squares from all the things I'd ever made and, and <gasps> things my mum had made, curtains and all sorts. That's a proper it memory quilt, right isn't mess. it? But, you know, it's a memory quilt. Yeah. <laughs> None of it went together at all, but it was a good memory. Anyway, a there we go. That is. That's a catalogue of your sewing projects. It is, yes. So that you could use this. And I think it's always nice to have a pattern where you think, yeah, I'm going to put those fabrics aside and I'm going to use it for that. Yeah. Or scraps, because you don't need very much. Anyway, this has been brilliant. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's been a pleasure. It's been a joy to be on with you today. It's been an education. <laughs> I've converted to join you, you know. <laughs> And now you know what a butterfly seam is. And I, I do, I do. And I also think this is brilliant. I absolutely love this technique. So um, do you know when you're back with us? Uh, no, uh, maybe December. Okay. Yeah, not next month. I'm busy. Okay, maybe sometime. All right. Oh, right. Yes, um, I've got to recap the quits. The kits, because from Sarah's first hour, if you weren't with us at eight o'clock, because it was quite early, um, the pat we have got a few left. The pattern on there on its own has sold out. We can't get any more. We've tried, but we can't get any more. So the only way that you can get the pattern now for this whole big quilt is in the bundle. But actually, the bundle's forty two ninety nine which is amazing because you're getting eight fat quarters. This one has got 3K fat quarters and then these autumnal fabrics. There are only a handful left of these. And then you get a metre of gold and a metre of nude as well. They are beautiful, aren't they? But you get the full instructions. And it's also got the links to all the video tutorials. So this is the beginner's patchwork if you've never patchwork before if you've wondered what a half square triangle is and how to do it if you thought oh I don't want to use templates every block see is slightly different and you will learn as you go along and there are loads and loads of tutorials in it so this is your chance to learn patchwork and become addicted to it that's the autumnal bundle there's only a few of those left so I'm just giving you a quick warning about that and then we've also got the brights bundle. So, uh, so
So that was the sample that we had earlier. So this is these are the instructions. And then in the bundle, you get all these Brights fabrics. So you've got like apple, green, you've got petrol, lavender, ivory, pink, well, light pink, salmon pink and red. And then for the, um, the main sort of backgrounds, you've got meter, meter of turquoise and a meter of white. And that will make, that quilt there, the one on the right, is just the small version, that's half of it. With this bundle, you can make twice that. Right, autumnal is now sold out. The only way you can get the instructions today is to get the brights. But you get all that fabric with it as well. It is the, just the best. And if you want, if, if you weren't with us at eight, then go back, watch it again at eight, because Sarah demonstrates a lot of it and you can see what it's all about. But it's the only way you can get that. Um, so we'll see you back here in December at some point. Yes, I hope so. Fab. And I'll see you back after the break. Um, Jules will be back. She's got two dresses. Um, again, fantastic dressmaking skills. You're going to learn loads. If you've got any specific dressmaking questions, do ask Jules because she does know everything about it. Um, and I will see you back here in a few minutes' time. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford-upon-Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three-course dinner, half a bottle of wine and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party, and even a tombola, if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday the 25th of November. See you there. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. 
So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. fan of Sewing Street, why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to So Street. I'm just laughing because Cat just crawled along the floor. Um Anyway, welcome back to Sewing Street. So we're back with jewels and more dressmaking. So we learned loads in the loads in the first um, hour with her. But we've got two dresses this time. So I'm going to go through the first one. The first dress is the Ada dress, which is available in two different sizes. Here's the Ada. She's very tall, Ada. Here she is. So, um, Jules, what are the main features of the Ada dress then? It's a really easy make. Okay. And it's a wrap dress. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's got a nice big wrap as well. I know. No so knickers. Exactly. <laughs> no gusts of wind. No or knickers on like the show. That. No. Um, most people kind of worry about wrap dresses and yeah. they're going to come down too low. But this one is quite nice. Yeah, no, it has you got can, a nice height. You can pull it over quite a bit and it is quite high. I must admit, I don't like showing off my cleavage at all. <laughs> I'd like so, to keep mine under wraps. Exactly. So, uh, but I feel really comfortable in this. Oh, OK. Um, it's got a, just a short sleeve. It's yes. Yeah. So it's quite nice. But you could hack it and make it longer if you wanted to. Oh, OK. So, yeah. So this comes in two sizes. Yes. So you have you just have to choose That's which it. one you yeah. want. So this one is size eight to twenty two. That's it. That's the Mrs. one. The Mrs. Yes. So Mrs. is, um, well, actually it says 6 to 20 at the top here. Uh, it is 6 to 20. Oh, OK. Oh, on ours it says 8 to 20 to ignore that. It's sizes 6 to 20. <laughs> I don't know why it says that on ours. It's this one, size 6 to 20, which is called Mrs. OK. And the bust on that one is a 77 to 110 centimetre. But there's, there's the... So if you um, screenshot that, you can always watch it back if you want to be absolutely certain about which size you want. This is the size 6 to 20. And then we'll talk about the variations in a minute. But it also comes in the bigger size, which is sizes 20 to 34. Yes. What are you going to do if you're a size 20 then? Well, this is where our patterns are designed for different shapes. So, although we've okay. got the kind of that kind of cut-off point in the yes. middle, it's down to you know yourself, your figure type. So, are you more of a curvy figure type? Mm. So, do you go in at the waist, but you've got boobs and hips? Mm. Or are you a little bit more of uh, an all-over, kind of even sort of right. body shape? Yes. So, because we, we have fle extra flesh in specific places, mm. even though our frame size might still be uh, the same. For example, the side length on the curvy is shorter because if you've got a little bit of extra padding on your hips, it's gonna raise your oh, waistline okay. slightly. Oh, that's interesting. So you'll be able to kind of get a feel for 
um, your own body shape, yes. basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's the other one, size is 2234. Um, so we're not going to demo this one because um, Jules is going to concentrate on the other one. But there are different versions of yes. this. So if you're going to buy the pattern, this is brilliant. It's amazing value for money because it can be a dress. Yeah. It can be a top. Yeah. And it can be an A-line skirt and a full skirt. Yeah. So you've got loads of different combinations there, which is perfect. So you've got the fuller skirt, which is there. So it's a bit more of a flared one. Oh, OK. Um, you could have that as a slimmer line. So you've got the uh, like a basic A line. Mm. You can have both of those as individual skirts. Right. You can have them as part of the dress, and you could also have uh, the top that's got like a little peplum, so it can have a little bit more of a flare. Oh, here's peplum a picture of it here. Or a straighter peplum. So you've got six different patterns in one. Wow. Which is brilliant. Value. So do trace them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't cut the pattern out. Otherwise, you only have one. Um, now, the quality of the patterns is fantastic. If you've never used one of our patterns, firstly, they reseal. You, haven't, you won't rip anything, which is great, because you, after you trace them, you want to keep in all your pieces very carefully and separate. Now, the instructions are very, very comprehensive. Everything you need to know on there, you've got all of your size guides on the back. Um, and they're really, really comprehensive with all the details you need. And then they come with all the pieces all printed out onto really good quality paper. So it's not going to rip when you use it. And all of the different sizes are marked on here. So what I would suggest is do trace it because if you decide well, I'm going to make the dress now, you might love it and want to make the top later. I won't open the whole thing because I'm rubbish at folding them back up. But you can see what I mean about the quality. This is really big pieces of quality paper. Yeah. This must take some printing. <laughs> Luckily, we have a printer called Big Bertha. <laughs> really? Yes. So, and she spits and out... And she does it? She spits out all the patterns. <laughs> okay. Yes. And then we've got Frankie the folder who folds them all up oh, for really? us. Really? Yes. Do they go in as sheets or do they go in as rolls? We have rolls of paper, mm. so... Um, which is actually quite nice because it means that we're not restricted to paper size. Oh, so trying yeah. to fit, we do have an A0, which is mm. for when people want to get them printed at a copy shop or yeah. something like that. But because we print our own patterns, we can use as much or as little paper as we need. Oh, brilliant. And then yeah. you've, got, and you've got quality control on it then, exactly. haven't you? Yes. Must be a massive printer. She's lovely, she's huge. <laughs> She's a little bit temperamental, so you have to stroke her and talk to her nicely. So now, Bertha, behave yourself. Now, we have actually put together some fabric bundles for the Ada. So the recommended fabric for this is medium weight cotton, poplin, lawn, linen, viscose, chambray, cotton lawn, printed cotton. Yeah. And Anything that's kind of reasonably lightweight that has a bit of drape to it. OK, this one. This is lovely. Look at this one. So. There's enough fabric in this bundle for the largest size, 44 99 So this is a cotton lawn print. So that would be ideal, pretty. wouldn't it? Yeah, very autumnal as well. It's very autumnal. How nice is that? That is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, that's really pretty. Yeah, you don't often have an autumn floral, do you? It would go with that boiled wool that was in the first show. It would go really nice as a lining with that boiled wool. In fact, if you made yourself a dress in this, then have, have the boiled jacket. wool jacket. And you were going to an autumn wedding. Exactly. How cool Perfect. would you look? Forty-four ninety-nine, and that's the that's enough fabric for the largest size. Because it's not always easy to get dressmaking fabric, I have to say. But this is perfect. It's very soft as well. Really, really soft. Oh, I don't know what a hibiscus looks like. <laughs> what do you think a hibiscus looks like? No, I don't know what one of those... Does it look like that? It's a printed denim. Oh, I know what there that looks go. like. Is that a hibiscus? No idea what one of those looks like. This is what it is, anyway. So this is a printed denim, but this is a lightweight denim, so this would be absolutely fine for this dress. This isn't jacket denim, this is dress denim. But isn't that gorgeous? I might even have to, I might even have to unfold that one a little bit so you can really see it. But how nice would that be? That's a really pretty pattern. It's really nice, isn't yeah. it? And I like the fact it's denim, but it's just a bit, it's lightweight. So it'd be perfect for that. Printed denim. Can I do that one next? Love that one. Oh. Uh, light blue denim, okay. 
So if you just want a plain denim dress, very in at the moment, denim dresses, the light blue, just $39.99. Right, and then this one, the black cotton poplin. Again, this is nice for this time of year as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you pretty. can in the summer as well. You actually. could, absolutely. But it's, quite, yeah. it's pretty. And this is a poplin. I love a poplin. Yeah. Because it presses nicely. It does, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so those bundles, there's all enough fabric in those to make um, the largest size of the dress. Right, so the other dress that we're looking at today that you're going to demonstrate for us. Um, now, all the patterns are in one size for this one. Yes, this is one of our early patterns. Okay. We are going to go back over our, our kind of back catalogue mm. and regrade them so that they will be having two different size ranges. Oh, okay. But there's actually a lot of ease within this pattern anyway. So this goes from an 8 to a 22. Yeah. But it does give you the actual um, finished garment measurements as yeah. well. Yeah. And it's the one you're wearing. I, I'm wearing it, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, 24 pounds. So tell me about the pattern. What, what's the idea behind it? And I know there's always a story behind your pattern. Well, actually, I was inspired by uh, Far From the Madding Crowd. <laughs> really? Which isn't a Shakespearean play at all. No. Um, who, who were you, Bathsheba? <laughs> well, I loved those, that kind of bucolic. Oh, so do I. I absolutely sort of, you love know, that. That, that whole oh. kind of feel, that sort of, yeah. And it was those shepherd smocks that okay. I kind of was inspired by that uh, Shepherd Oak would, was wearing. Oh, cool. Of. Is it Carrie Mulligan who was in it? She was brilliant. She's just, it was I such want a, to be her. Yeah, she's so cool. She, she would have worn this dress, wouldn't she? She would have done, yes, exactly. So that's where it came from, really. Okay. Yeah, so that's the idea from it. But Helena was from um, Midsummer Night's Dream, I think. So you should have called it Bathsheba. I can never decide whether it's Bathsheba or Bathsheba. Bathsheba, yeah, Bathsheba, Bathsheba, Bathsheba. But I don't, I don't know. Do you know yeah. that would be? But so that's what it's inspired by. Yeah. So it's a very easy to wear dress. It is. You literally just pull it on. It's a tunic kind of thing. You can wear it on its own if you want to, or you mm. can wear it like I've got it today, layered up. And the one behind you there, that's the that's the dress as well. Yes, that's it. So. It's no fastening zips and nope. stuff. Pull it straight Just over. Put it all right. over. Yep, it's got a little pin tuck detail at the front, which Lovely. is quite nice, uh, that goes into a neckband. And on the back, we've got a little <gasps> yoke. Oh, that, yeah, it is very. So it is kind of very smocky. Gabriel, kind of, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is, Gabriel Oak, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, but you can kind of customise it and, again, do different things with it if you wanted to. We've made it as a kind of a three-quarter length sleeve with um, some tags Oh, OK, it. yes, but you could just do it as a short yeah, sleeve. Yeah, which is what I've got here. And I guess it could be smock length or Oh, absolutely. Longer. You can make it shorter if you want to or you can make it, you know, really long. It's perfect, isn't it? I've got a similar dress, like a denim one, and I use it a lot in the winter and I put long sleeve tops underneath yeah. it in woolly tights. That's it. It's a perfect kind of layering thing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So even if you made it in a lightweight fabric mm. with a T-shirt and a pair of jeans underneath it, True. It's yeah. going to take you right the It's way Christmas through. dinner, isn't it? Because you can just expand. Exactly. <laughs> in that yes. You should always have a Christmas dinner dress. Perfect. That has lots of space in it. It's yes. gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, right, we have got some fabric bundles with this one. Now, this is the way yeah, Can we do this one? Because I love this That's one. That's gorgeous. That actually. is gorgeous, isn't it? No, actually, that would look really nice in the age. And in fact, you could use it. But this, this, the good price? No way. Nineteen ninety nine, and there's four metres. <gasps> That's a bargain and a half. That is a bargain and a half because you could make the, the Ada dress as well with that one. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Well, not as no, but you could make either or four meter bundle. So they're like leaves, I presume. I think they look like ginkgo. Ginkgo leaves. That's it. Yeah, I was thinking it's yeah. that Japanese yeah. thing in sort of rusts and blues. It's beautiful. It's a viscose poplin. Over half the stock of that gone. Let me just show you how lovely it is because it's got that real. Um, it's got a viscose trait. wobble to it. It's got. <laughs> that's a great. The technical description is the viscose wobble, but I know exactly what you mean. That is beautiful, isn't it? In fact, make a lovely blouse in that one. It would be really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lining. Yes. Loads. I cannot believe. How is that only twenty pounds? 
well, 1999, actually. How is that only 1999? <coughs> Visco's Poplin. Um, so I guess all the others. Oh, can I have that one next? Now there, there's your autumn dress. Yes. Single figures. Oh, <gasps> now those are your colours, aren't they? 1999. Yeah, that's definitely mine, isn't it? Lily Floro Visco's Poplin. That is so lovely. 1999 for that one. Bargain. That is a bargain, isn't it? We'll have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we've got the blue one. So this is like, um, I'd say petrol. Yes, yeah, kind of a teal almost. Yeah, it's like that tealy petrol. Yeah. Again, 1999. Right, the other two Biscos Poplins are now on single figures. So about to sell out. Four metre bundle. So even if you're not going to make these two dresses with it, it's a great thing to have in your stash if you love those. That's gorgeous, isn't it? I want that one. Right, and then I think the final one is this. So this is a linen look cotton. So if you want a more, stru more structured, this is ideal. This would be great for Helena, actually. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would work really well. And what a lovely colour as well. 29 99 not a bad price. Linen look cotton, four metres. Quite like that. that. That would look really lovely. Yeah. Black tights. Yes. <laughs> Boots. Mm. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Christmas. It, yes, it does scream <laughs> it, Christmas. It does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Or could be used for the times of the year. Right. So where do we start with the dress? OK, so. Or what are you going to show us? I'm going to show you how to do pin tucks. Yeah, oh, right. Because that is a real little feature of that, yeah, isn't it? That yeah. nice detail. I really like pin tucks, actually. I've used them on... We've got another of our Lavinia dress, which is mm. our summer, one of our summer dresses. It's got uh, those on them as well. Yeah. Um, and I just think they're a nice little detail to add, actually. Well, I like that little... De like, I like this one. It has that little... Yes, yeah, little, a little thing. A little thing. Yes. It's quite nice, isn't it? So... On the pattern, now I'm hoping you can see this, we've actually marked out all of the dots. Now... I've okay, so that's the, just the, the, so the front's all in one piece. Yeah. So actually, if I show you the pattern piece here... I think you've already got it, it's easier to... Um, oh, that's the back. Let's find the front. There we go. So you can see what I mean because all of the pin tucks mm. are actually marked on the pattern. So oh, here... OK, well, I'm going to come over a look. There we go. Oh, so we've got course. all yeah. the lines. Oh, because they're different lengths as well. Yes, yeah, so they're kind of graduated. So what we've got are pairs of dots that we can kind of match up to create the pleats. So all again... And that's where you're talking about putting a hole punch in them. Yes, yeah, a, a tiny, tiny hole little punch. hole punch. Well, I've used a, um, a pair of pattern notches. I've never seen pattern notches. Oh, these are oh. Ooh. fabulous. So these um, are only ever to be used with we paper. Don't sell. We should sell these. I know, they're great, they really are. And they're for just... And they just notch out, so they notch out... Oh, so like paper. if you had... Um... So, well, like you yeah. said, like a dart, the end of a dart. Yeah, so I just do a little notch. But they make like holes that. as well. But if you fold the paper over, because they've got a rounded edge, you can just nip out a little bit and it does the hole in the pattern. That is, is a really genius cool. piece of equipment that I need. We'll have to see. It's we'll have a word. We'll see if we can get some. It's all about the kit, isn't it? it is, oh, yeah. Any excuse for the kit. Absolutely. Yeah, but there are some things that bits of kit where are just... I know. ...genius. Yeah. yeah. Tube turners. Yes. Yeah. Genius, those things. No, they're brilliant, aren't they? <laughs> I, want, I never even knew those existed, though. Oh, gosh, yes. They <laughs> are lovely. I mean, you can get little tiny hole punches. Like little okay. screw, you know, little hole that basically if you put like a, a rubber or a bit of blue tech underneath it, you can just, they just literally go through oh. like a little, like a drill, basically. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah. So they're just pattern cutting stuff. Okay. Yeah. Gonna have to get one of those. But there we go. Mm. So well. I've marked all of the dots on here so that I've actually got my little rows of dots on the fabric here. So what we want to do in order to sew the... And what do you use up, to mark your fabric with? Um, well, I've got my... Uh, I've just got a um, water-soluble marker pen. 
So oh, okay. One of those. Right. Yeah. Or you can use chalk or whatever. It depends yeah. on what's going to show up best on the Right, camera, so you really. just use a, a variety. Yeah. Are you marking on the right side? Yes. Okay. Because we want the pin tucks to be shown. We want them to stand proud on the right okay. side. Yeah. So I'm going to work from the middle out mm. so that we get the right pairs together. So I'm going to basically, so we've got like a little tiny centimetre gap in the middle. So I want to go into the one pin in the, in the one, into one dot uh, in the middle and I'm going to come out on the other dot so that we've actually got a pin going through the pair of dots. And then what I can do, oh, let me do the third one, just so that that will make sense. So I'm going into one dot and out of the other. So you can see the pairs mm. because we've done them at slightly different um, positions. Now, if I fold the fabric now so that I'm pinching the fabric along the pin and then I can slide the pin and pin it horizontally. I see, yes. So, so you don't sense. press them, you're doing it by hand here. Yeah, we're just literally just marking. So Are they different lengths for aesthetic reasons yeah. or for... Yeah, you could have them all the same length. Or is it a design, to. you know, because, But it, lo it just looks quite nice. You know, it's lovely. I just wondered whether or whether it was a practical thing. Not really. It just <laughs> looks quite nice. <laughs> it does look nice. So all I'm doing to do is literally go in one hole and out the other, or in one dot mm. and out the other. And then we can pinch it along. Oh, I see. And then you get absolute accuracy. Yeah. So all I'm gonna do then is just to slide oh, yeah. that along. And then we've got the last pair on this side. So again, in one and out the other. Oh, look, and I've missed one out. <gasps> Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> that was the point at which I asked you the question, you see, oh, about are they yeah. aesthetically, so, you know. You can actually see how I'm gonna mark this in now. So if I lay that back over, so if you do have any that don't oh. get marked. Oh, and by making holes, and when you flip it over, you can still yeah, see the hole. It's really easy to actually see where you've marked. So this is up. quite a nice technique if you need to reduce width yeah. from the front of something as well. In yeah. a pretty way, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. So now I've got my extra pair. So we can actually pin those out now. So I'm going to go back in one dot and out the other. And I'm going to go back into another dot and out the other. So again, all I'm going to do is just pinch those out. But we need, when we sew, we're going to mm. sew from the neckline down to, um, the dot, the bottom set of dots. So if I just pin these other ones out quickly, then we've got all of them done. And what we want to have is a little tiny gap in the middle. So effectively, what we've got is a little centimetre, a scant centimetre in the centre. And then we've got another centimetre pin tuck. And then we've got another cent half a centimetre gap. So in theory, all of the pin tucks should be kind of sitting next to each other. Perfect. Uh, just a quick message for uh, the customer from East Riding who messaged in. Um, Hannah can't access your order to sort that out. Um, so could you phone customer services? 0800 001 4433. They will be able to sort it out for you. We... We can't access your orders and your details, so G GDP or whatever it is. It's, no, it's not that. DPD? 
GDPR. <laughs> TNT. TNT. <laughs> you know, privacy. That's it. So if you've got any problems with the order, phone customer service, ever so helpful. And it's free phone number, so just give them a ring. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Still don't, can't remember what it was, GDP. I think GDRP. that's gross domestic product. I don't think it's that. GDRP, I think. GDPR. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll just think of some GDP. letters and just put them all together. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Right, so that's the last one. So we've got all of those pin tucks pinned together now. There, so you can see how that's yeah. been created. So a little bit bunched up at the moment because we've only pinned them. Mm. But, you know, they're a great, I think they're a really nice form of... Well, they are, and fashion. it's like it gives you that smock effect, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you could have gathered it, but how boring would that be? I know, it's nice to do something different, isn't it? We've really? only got a few anyway. Yeah, that's it. There's only six. It adds a little bit of interest, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's when it. you come to see, this would be my scary bit now, so I've now got to sew them. That's fine, because again, what we're doing now, if you wanted to, and actually I think this is sometimes easier, if you've got um, a wider foot on your machine, mm. you can either do, um, swap it over so you can put like a, um, a zip foot on it. Right. Or you can actually swing the needle over. Oh. So. Oh, okay, so it's, because how far in do you sew it? Because you actually only want to sew about half a centimetre. Right. But if I'm, I don't want that, I don't want the side of my foot here to interfere with the next. Um, so you could use a quarter of an inch foot if you had if you wanted to. one of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be absolutely fine. So, oh, let me find the foot. There we go. So what I want to do is we're going to start with a little back tack. Now, and again, if you cut your fabric on the grain, which you should do, then it should be... This really would make a lovely night dress with embroidery on the neck band and yoke and collect with Devon. Yes, it would. It would, actually. That would be it really, would yeah. In a lovely brushed cotton. <laughs> Can't beat brushed cotton, can you? I know. Like a proper traditional nighty, yeah, actually. Wouldn't it be, be really lovely? Nice. Well, you could use even a different fabric on the yoke, then, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely And can. how nice to have um, pockets in your nighty. <laughs> Gotta have pockets, haven't you? Yeah, even in your nighty. Where are you gonna you... put your hanky? Well I know. Or your chocolates when you're watching the telly <laughs> in your nighty. So how, have you got to the end of that seam yet? Yes, I'm gonna show you the that's next what one. I want to know is how you okay. finish and now, keep talking. All I'm going to do when I'm sewing, I'm just making sure I'm going from the dot to the dot. And then I'm stopping at the last dot. So I'm making sure that I hit that dot and then I go backwards. Now, this machine just has the thread cutter. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut it. And then what I'm going to do then is to go back over and just snip off all the ends. Right. But because we've done a reverse stitch now. So you just reverse. You don't have to do anything fancy no. like threading the ends, but you know, like you do with darts. Oh, no. No. I don't do that. No, I don't either. Do you not? No, oh, gosh. good. No, life's too short. I like never ironing do underpants, that. isn't it? Life's too short for yeah. <laughs> re-threading your thread. I know, but a lot of people when they do darts, they they tie the ends. No. No. Oh, I'm glad you don't do that. No. I actually reverse stitch. Yes, me too. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Now, maybe that isn't. Sometimes it. Well, again, it depends on what you want to do, mm. but it depends on how your machine behaves. Mm. Sometimes when you do a reverse, it kind of puckers up the fabric. So what you can do is actually drop the needle down, turn it round and stitch back into the dart, which is another way to finish up the dart. Of that. Yeah. What I do is I reverse stitch down the sort of the inside of it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But I know you're not even supposed to do that. Oh. To be perfectly honest, I think you do what works for you. Yeah, that's true actually. But I do always feel bad that I don't tie the ends of my darts. No, no, that's a bit like tacking. <laughs> That's like swearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are, though, no, no, I have to say, though, that there are actually times when tacking is probably a really good idea. But if, I, if, I, if I'm tacking, it's definitely on the machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal, is it, really? But when you're quilting, you see, you're not supposed to reverse stitch, you're supposed to tie the ends. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That never happened, ever. But ever then you've happened. got the, the, the 
things on the machines, you've got the little dots where they just stitch. Yeah, but on, he does it. Yeah. It gives a bit of bulky if you care that much. Yeah. I don't. There we go. Yeah, but I guess, yeah, so I guess if you <coughs> stitch back down this again and then cut the ends off. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. So you can see how it's starting to kind of come together. Oh, it's lovely. I think it's such a nice look. I'll start. I think pin tucks are actually one of my favourite forms of suppression. Could the pin... This is a question. Sorry. Yes. Could the pin tucks be tacked first for a newbie, please, from Joyce? If you really want to, <laughs> then yes. But you don't have to. You don't have to. If you really, really want to. You really, if it makes you feel happy mm. to tack, then that's fine. Could you press them? No, because um, you don't want to press them until they're done. Oh, OK. Because otherwise you're going to press everything else. Oh. And it's all going to get caught up and you've got pins in the way and it's all a bit... Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you are and if you really feel you have to, then do tack. Then feel free to tack, yes. But I think, you know, because quite often, you know, when you're adjusting dresses because you've got a lot going too much bulk at the back or at the front, then it would yeah. be a really nice way of reducing as yes. well. Yes, yes. There we go. They are nice, actually. I mean, you can put them onto sleeves. You can do them, yeah, you know, on the sides of things as well. Just so rather kind of, than gathering yeah. a sleeve. Yeah, you could just have a series of pin tucks going across the sleeve head, which would be rather nice. It's quite a nice pattern for if you know when you, well, people do different costumes and plays and things. You know, when you need to be have the smock look, it's really useful to have for that. Yeah, if you do a bit of andran. Yeah. I've still got the dress my mum made me when I was Rosie and sided with Rosie at 16. Oh, really? Oh. Mm. Why have I still got that? I have no idea. But it's that kind of thing, isn't it? That, yeah. That would be really useful. It's quite, mm. um, yeah, evocative, isn't it, of certain kind of past eras, I suppose. Oh, I might have to go back and watch that film now. It's so lovely, isn't it? What Far From the Madden Crowd? I know. Love that film. Uh, yeah. Michael Sheen's brilliant. Oh, he's just well. He's just brilliant. Though. Have you seen the... Um, he did the um, advert for the renaming of uh, the Brecon Beacons. No. It's on YouTube and it's just like... He could just spout the phone directory and it would just be amazing. Really? Yeah. Why have they renamed the Brecon Beacons? Because what it's all part it? of... Um, Branau Brecheniog, I think they Oh, so they've renamed it as well. Oh, OK. I yeah. thought maybe they've renamed it something. You know that film, yeah. I went up a hill and came back down a mountain oh, for that yes. one with Hugh Grant? I love that film. Yeah. I thought maybe they'd realised they weren't beacons anymore. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. It's, yeah. And he's done a film yeah. about yeah. the like renaming. A, yeah, about renaming the, the, the... And it's just amazing, honestly. I'd follow him into battle anywhere. I really would. Yes, no, he yeah. is gorgeous and he has got a beautiful voice. Absolutely, yeah. So, <laughs> there we go, enough about Michael Sheen. <laughs> yeah, enough about Michael Sheen. Let's talk about pin tucks. There we go. I bet he would so, like a pin tuck shirt. I bet he would right to love him. one. Dear Michael. Yes, have a pin tuck, Helena. There mm. we go. So all Would I'm you like to come here. round for a fitting? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fit you up, yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trimming these ends off now because uh, the little bits just get in the way. So uh, as much as having the underbed trim on the machines is really good, you do still have these little bits left. Did you, you, you use your, like, your normal matching thread for this? It's not yeah. feature. I, mean, I, have done, um, I have done a denim one and used uh, top stitching thread, mm -hmm. which was quite nice, actually. So that works really well. So there we go. Amazing. So now what we want to do is to separate those out and give those a press. So the easiest way to do that is to run the iron straight down the middle. OK. So then we're making sure that we've got one set going one way and one set going the other. Can you see that on the overhead or do we need to move over? Do you want me to move it? Yeah, over? I think you might need to go right a bit. We'll go in the middle. There yeah. you go. Ah, oh, perfecto. Oh, so one lot go one way and one go the other way. Yes, yeah. So all I'm going to do is kind of part them. Mm. 
Now, obviously, whatever choice of uh, marking you do, I mean, I've got the little dots here and they'll just wash out. Oh, OK. Yeah, there they're we go. just a nice, nice yeah. little feature. They are, actually. I really like, really, really like pin yeah. tucks. So now we've got those done, we can add the neckband. Ah, OK. So. And that's a nice feature. I do like the feature of that as well. Because like you say, you could change the colour of that. Yeah, yeah, you could make it into a contrast or, mm. yeah, turn it into a proper feature. Now, we have got notches because, again, what we've got is a happy curve and a sad curve that we're joining together. A happy curve and a sad curve, love that. Yeah, it makes it much easier. Now, because I've attached my interfacing, I need to find... My notches actually be easier if I just use the pattern piece. There we go. So this is the downside to marking everything up before you put your interfacing on, because then when you put the interfacing on, it all just, <laughs> it all just closes up all the little snips that you've made. So, so Jules is using a black interfacing here, um, which is perfect for darker fabrics. But when yep. you need it, you need it. We have it two ninety nine for half a metre, but if you need loads. If you're interfacing something enormous or you use a lot of dark fabric, it is cut to order, so you'd be sent it as a continuous piece should you need it. I mean, obviously, for a collar like this, half a metre will be fine. Yeah. But um, black interfacing does make a difference on dark fabrics. It's good to have it in your stash, isn't it? Just in case. It really is. There we go. So, now we've got two of these. So, we've got an inside one and an outside one. Right. So, the outside one is the one that has the interfacing. The inside one... I've just left blank, but then I've just neatened off the edge with a bit of overlocking. Okay. So again, I'm going to pin my happy and my sad curves together. <laughs> and when you look at that, you think that's never going to fit. It will. <laughs> it <laughs> will. I promise it but will. But it looks like, how is that going to fit? I know. But the thing is, now if we've got the middle marked, mm. we know that the ends will match. And you've worked all this out anyway. So well, we know the pattern works. <laughs> so then we've got the notches. We can find those. Where are the notches on the on the uh, on the curve? Okay, of the dress. Of both the dress and we've got a, a notch on the neckband. So, that you, so if you so match you're matching those like up, in the in the middle as well. Okay, that's it. And then we know that everything else is going to fit. So then it's just a question of easing all the raw edges together so that we can match everything up. So there, that part again. Now, if you've got a particularly wibbly fabric, like a viscose or something mm. like that, you can, after you've done your pin tucks, you could do um, a row of stay stitching. Ah, oh, OK, just to... Yeah. Stabilise. That's it. I guess if you've got like quite an open linen or something. It just bends and it, it just wants to kind of behave itself, actually. It's not too bad. Because you've got the interfacing on the neckband piece, that's one of what is going to keep everything stable and allow it to hold its shape. Oh, I see. So even if you've got a, a viscose, then it will be fine because of the interfacing. Yeah. Mm. There we go. So that all fits in there. And it will just kind of ease itself around. Now, if you have got a particularly tight weave fabric, if you do your stay stitch literally two clicks in, from the, your stitching line. So again, just use a normal um, seam allowance, but click your needle over to the right, then that's going to give your, uh, that's going to put your uh, stay stitch inside your seam allowance. Oh, okay. But it still means that you can clip around that seam if you want to, just to get it to bend around the curve. Right. So do your stay stitching just a little bit in. Okay. Yeah. So we can check it's all sitting nice and neatly. So that's how it's going to look when it's finished. So that's all in the right place. So all I need mm. to do now is to stitch it. Excellent. So I'll just run over the pattern. Um, 
the pattern that we that um, that Jules is doing at the <coughs> moment is the um, Helena, otherwise known as Bathsheba, <laughs> inspired by the smocks of Far From the Madding Crowd and Michael Sheen. Now, actually, I think, did you make this before Michael Sheen was in that film? I think I did, <laughs> yeah, actually. So we yes. can't really say that. No. Um, it is, um, goes from a size 8 up to a size 22, which is an 82 centimetre bust up to 118 centimetre bust. Now, it can be made with these slightly like three quarter length sleeves that Jules is the one that Jules is wearing which has a little button tab or shorter sleeves and then you can make it smock length you can make it blouse length you can make it full length absolutely you could make the sleeves longer if you wanted to and then elasticate the wrist oh that would be nice yeah. wouldn't it um, it is suitable for medium weight cottons poplin linen satin crepe crepe de chine viscose lightweight wool and needle cord Oh, it would be nice in a needle cord. Oh, I know. We've got one of the... If anyone's been to see us at a show, mm. then um, we have got one of our samples made up in needle yeah. cord, actually. Yeah, I bet yeah. that is lovely. So that is um, £24. Now, we do have some fabrics. This one. The only one remaining. Wow. In that one. Yes, for this dress is this one. We sold the others. Those beautiful, incredibly inexpensive. I'm not surprised. Ones. Not yeah. surprised. Um, ladies, you can't have Michael. He's ours. But as you're not well, Jules, you can borrow him for a lovely kutch. Oh, I like Julian a kutch. Julian on the street. <laughs> I love oh. that word. That word kutch is kutch. brilliant. I love a kutch. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's you. I know he is. But we love him. And he's got the nicest voice. Um, li linen look, cotton in wine. Um, this is a, there's enough here for the largest size, only twenty nine ninety nine, and that is gorgeous. I think that is perfect for this um, smock dress. It's got a little bit of body, but a nice bit of drape as well. And how lovely! Twenty nine ninety nine. Right. Oh, you've done it. There. So we've stitched. Mm -hmm. Now I need to trim it because what we want to do is to reduce a little bit of the bulk in there. And because we want it to turn back into the neckband, I'm going to snip out a few little V shapes just to take out a bit of the extra bulk. This is where, you know, you can get some of those like, um, Spoonbill kind of scissors, yes. yeah, applique scissors. Yes, the duck those, bill applique scissors. Duck bill, that's it. Yeah, they, this is where those are really handy. Oh, because you can actually sort of get yes. around it without snipping anything else. Yeah. Or pinking shear is one of my favourite things. Yeah. Love a pinking shear. So all I'm doing now, now, if you have ah. got... Do you, would you like to borrow some? Thank you, I think it, but they're brilliant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kat. So these ones, yes. Those are brilliant, actually. Applique scissors. Yes. See, now you think they're just for applique, but no. Oh, yeah, you can. That's the thing, isn't it? You buy a tool for a thing and you well, can Well, I was saying to Sarah in the last hour that a lot of people say, oh, I'm a patchworker, I'm not a dressmaker, or vice versa, but they're the same skills. I know. They're all about... Yeah. No, it is. It's interesting, actually. Oh, can you, I'll, do, I'll get them. Can you pass me the scissors, Jules? Oh, there we go. These amazing. So they are called a pleated <coughs> scissors, but they are brilliant for trimming and grading seams as well. Yes. I guess because you've put them flat and they don't cut. That's it, yeah. You've got, they've got that protection, yeah. So this bit here, that's not sharp. So you can lay that down and then it just cuts that and it stops you cutting the layer below that. Mm. There we go. Perfect. But they're also very good for applique as well. They are, <laughs> yes. But they, I, I, well, I use them for that when I want to cut something but not cut the bit underneath. <laughs> so, ideal. Exactly. 19 They're also very attractive. And I always think they look nice in your sewing kit. They, they look do. a bit unusual. They look like you, you know what you're doing, don't you? Yeah, it makes you look professional. It a bit does. like your um, pattern puncher thing. Oh, yeah. Although you are professional because that is your business. <laughs> 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 yeah. so you are, though, actually, to be fair. Thank you. But if you're not... It still makes you look good, though. It does, it? Do, it does. 
That's why I love pinking shears, because you think, yeah, I'd, yeah. I know what I'm doing with a pair of pinks. And it's only because I haven't got an overlocker. Oh, you so need to get one. I do. I do need to get an overlocker, I know. And I don't know why I don't, really. Oh, Especially because no. it's on special offer as well. Well, there you go. Do you know why? It's, it's a bit, of, I just because I don't think I know how to use it. I mean, <gasps> do you know, we do a Love Your Overlocker workshop. It is our most popular workshop. It's, yes, for people like me who yeah. go, I don't really know how to use it. Well, it's a brilliant opportunity to try before you buy. Oh, that's So true. you can have a go at it and just think, oh, And then right, do okay. I want this or not? Yeah, and nine times out, well, I would say 99 times out of 100, people say, oh, my God, how did I ever cope without one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there. So we've pressed that seam allowance now up into the neck band. Right. So we've trimmed nice away. I know. Well done. Thank you. Oh, but that's a great pattern though, because up. Yeah. So it, you you've worked think, it all out. That really works. Yeah. That it actually it actually all does fit together. So what we can do now is to add the other one to it. So this is how we finish off the inside. Mm. So basically the way this dress is put together, you make up the whole of the front and you make up the back and then you join them together. Ah, oh, okay. Because there's a really interesting thing that if we've got time to show you how to do the yoke. Yeah, we've got about five minutes. That's fine. Yeah. So, so again, this is not a difficult one then? No, not at all. No, no, I don't think any of our patterns are particularly <laughs> difficult, really. No. We, try and, we try and make them as easy as possible. I like the fact like this one doesn't have any zips or yeah. anything. Yeah, that's it. It just goes over my head. Perfect. That is it, yes. I mean, that some of them may have a few more processes. Yes. So, you know, like uh, the aerial uh, cargo pants have got a fly and an elasticated waist and inseam pockets mm. and pargo pockets and all that kind of stuff. But they're not actually taking each thing on its own. It's not difficult to do. Well, that's encouraging. No, then, well, uh, this one isn't. I love this one. I think it's a really nice dress. Lovely. Comfy. That, built for comfort, not speed these days, <laughs> I'm afraid. So. <laughs> there we are. So again, I'm just going to sew this with a 1.5 seam allowance again. And because we've already interfaced the outer neck band, mm. that's going to make sure that everything stays in the right place and we keep the right curve shape. Oh, and I guess because the curve's the same, you haven't got quite the same knitting yeah. issues. No, that's it. But because, and again, depending on the fabric that you're working with, so linen can stretch quite easily because mm. it's a looser weave. So if you were doing a contrast neckband, would you do this lining piece in the same colour as the outer piece? Um, it's up to you, I think, really. Um, it could have it. I would probably have it the same colour so that it, if you do see if, it, yeah, it wouldn't. then it's not going to, yeah. Mm. So we've got that, got that neck band stitched. Now again, what I'm going to do is to snip into that because what we're going to do is to fold back the neck band so that we can under stitch. So understitch kind of does what it says on the tin, with a, like a lot of sewing terms. It holds the facing part of the neckband under. There we go. So before I even press it, mm. <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you can go back home to bed in a minute. <laughs> That'd be nice, yeah. So what I want to do now is to actually fold the neckband back over the seam allowance mm. and we're going to just stitch that side of it very close to the seam. Like how close? Like a millimetre. Oh, oh, like really, 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 really close. Really close. The closer the better. And again, if you wanted to, you can use your, um, you know, uh, your foot as a marker and then swing the needle into place. 
So literally a couple of millimetres. And all I'm doing is just pulling the fabric gently apart to separate it. Now, the reason we don't press is because we want to make sure that we're pressing everything in the correct position. I would see. So because we're stitching the facing to the seam allowance, that's going to pull that under slightly. So it's not like just getting the seam on the edge. We want the seam to kind of roll over underneath a bit so it's actually hidden. There we go. So what that does now is if I fold that back over, you can see it oh, wants to. Yeah, beautiful. It just it wants to wants do to it. Wants to stay there. It? Yeah. So if I press that. So now, yeah, because I think my temptation would have been to press, but by not pressing, you you pull it out of shape. You get a better shape. Yeah. You do get a better shape. So if I fold that back over, you can see how it just wants to roll back and you've got yeah. a very slight little bead of the outer fabric. That's lovely, isn't it? It gives it such a nice detail as well. Yeah, it's a really nice way to, to finish a neckline, actually. There we go. And then from the right side, you won't actually see any of that in a neckband, mm. and it's all neatened it off beautifully. So that just stays tucked under like that. Perfect. And then you can either do a decorative top stitch. Okay, yeah. Or you could stitch in the ditch. Right. And then just, you know, just around that seam. So would you need to do, I guess you need to do that to hold it. Yeah, you want to, to hold picking. something. Yeah, you want to, to um, have some form of stitching to hold the, um, the facing part inside. Yeah. That's lovely. There we go. What a beautiful thing. I want to make that now. <sighs> to go with my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want to, I want to make them all. Um, so I just went through the pattern. Thank you so much, Jules. That's okay. fab. You've taught us loads today. I'm, I'm sure you've all learned lots as well. You know, even whether you're a beginner to dressmaking, which these patterns I do, or, or more experienced, you still learn loads from the patterns. And Every day is a school day, isn't it? Every day is a school day. But yeah. also, you know, it's nice to have something that's so wearable. And that you can then think about all, all other fabrics. I always think it's nice to have the pattern so that when you find the fabric, you know what you're going to make. Exactly, yeah. Sometimes rather than the other way around. Although, I guess, have the fabric and try and find the right pattern. Yeah. Uh, do you I know do. when you'll be back with us? Uh, I am back next month off the top of my head because my brain isn't actually working. No, so sometime today. in November. Yeah, I think okay. it's towards the end of November. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, well, that'd be nice. Yeah. Hope I'm there. I think it might be, I think it's just after uh, Harrogate, actually. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope you feel better soon. You go back home to bed. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the Helena pattern, I'll just recap that. Um, it's sizes 8 to 22. There's also the finished garment measures there. It's an easy fit pattern as well, so it's not super tight. It's a nice and casual fit. Uh, you can make it with a three-quarter sleeve, a short sleeve. You can lengthen it. It can be a tunic. It can be a much longer dress. It's entirely up to you. Just £24. Fantastic pattern. Um, don't forget to write down today's date so that you can watch Jules demonstrate how to do the pin tucks and that scalloped edge, and then you'll be good to go. Brilliant. Oh, yes, we also speak, spoke earlier about the aid address. This is, um, this is she standing beside me. There are two um, sizes in this. There's the Mrs. size that sizes 6 to 20. Oh, well done. Hannah's changed it. <coughs> okay, size is 6 to 20. Uh, this is your perfect wrap dress, but not only that, it's a wrap dress, it's also a top, it's also a skirt and an A-line skirt. So you've got four patterns for the price of one here, £24. It's gorgeous and it's got a really nice flap as well. A nice wide flap on it. Um, and then we also have the other size variation, which is sizes 
20 to 34 exactly the same dress and again it has the skirt the two no the top the two skirts and the dress so you can have either of those thank you so much for joining me uh, for sewing street i will be back with you in a few minutes time for yarn lane because it's monday and we are all about chunky knitting we've got wrap shawls hats scarves um, hot water bottle covers all sorts so if you fancy cracking off your autumn knitting today's the day i've got the lovely mandy cameron in who's going to show us how to do it i'll see you back here in a few minutes time back by popular demand introducing the one the only gemporia festive ball party with your favorite presenters from gems tv hobby maker jewelry maker and sewing street we're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world-famous Stratford-upon-Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three-course dinner, half a bottle of wine and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited. So order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday the 25th of November. See you there. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again.
stuck for ideas for the perfect gift, why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Welcome to Yarn Lane. You can tell it's Yarn Lane. Look at this. It's quite cold in the studio today. This is perfect. Now, this beautiful shawl, jump wrap, blanket, um, has sold out before, so we've got it back. So, welcome to yes. Yarn Lane, Mandy. Thank you. You're nice going to see you. Again. Yeah, you It's been too. a while. It has been a <laughs> long time, hasn't it? actually. Yeah. Um, but we're going to do knitting. I know. Knitting. I know. Just. Uh, now Have these are it. well it's i love this sort of knitting because it's chunky it's very chunky, chunky. so it's very quick mm. big needles um i think these are 10 on this one no 12 mil on this one and this is pure wool 100 percent merino it's really yes soft. it's it's ultra fine the Super fibers are soft. so fine it's beautiful um so the kit for this we finally got back 119.99 now we've got that on two-way split pay as well if you want it so here's the kit here let me show you you're getting all of that yarn how mm. many balls is that then they've got 11 altogether 1100 grams. 1100 grams but you get free needles now you might wonder why um these are circular needles mm -hmm. like why am i knitting a blanket in circular needles it's because you've got so many stitches you're not sitting sti knitting in a circle <laughs> oh, that's right you are yeah. knitting backwards yeah. and forwards it holds the weight doesn't it well it means that the yeah. blanket can sit on your lap it does it rather does. than in your hands but this yarn this it's is magic gorgeous. absolutely gorgeous. how does it do that it like shall I, let's... They, it's, it's just been the way they dye it you know they must just dapple the dye but it's rainbow onto. isn't it so yes if you look at the um the blanket itself yep there's no set pattern to it it just comes it just variegates how it just changes comes out the, the and yarn. then i pres i presume they just the yarn is used to make the tassel it is yeah yeah just a normal tassel lark's head knot and that's it and it's just left it's not combed um or anything it's just as it is so it's quite a straightforward it's gorgeous straightforward pattern, i will really. i will take it off and show you it so um Let's hold it up this side here yeah I mean, I'm the, thinking lying on the sofa. Anything really, or um, mm. it's always nice to have in the car if you're just going to wear it over the top of your coat. Just to oh, we've got a message warm. from Adrienne in Norfolk. I would highly recommend this kit. Oh. It's great to make and wear. I mean, it is lovely. It is. It's warm and cosy. Mm. You could have it over the black, back yeah. of a sofa. Uh, when you go on the sofa, you can lie on it. Yes. Or if you've got somebody, um, you know, who's in a chair or a wheelchair Absolutely. perfect for that yeah, as and well. it, it wraps around and you've got the you know it's kind of reversible well because it beautiful? you know you've got the the really nice and there's um, enough yarn i presume to make all the tassels as there well. is yeah and it sort of suggests that you leave um the tassels you put a sort of half a ball aside or whatever it is um and then niche oh, see. and then you've got enough so you get tassels. the full pattern yeah you get all of the yarn you get the circular needles which are nice and chunky. So this is actually, I mean, it's a nice thing that you could buy for yourself if you wanted to, but a nice kit as a gift. It is. I love giving a kit. It, it is gorgeous and it is suitable for uh, beginners. It's not a difficult stitch to do. Okay. Because the pattern, it, it's, it's, it's 
just these sort of things. Oh, you know, okay, like so patterns. fairly simple. Yep. Nothing... The abbreviations are there, easy, easy skill level, oh, okay. it says. So, um, it is one of our most popular kits, and yeah. it's great that it comes with free needles. needles yeah. And I've, I've been knitting socks recently on the circular, and they're like, tiny. it's such a tiny cord. <laughs> This is like, yeah, which yeah. I guess it would be, wouldn't it? Would it would have to be, yeah. And it doesn't uh, it doesn't adjust the size of, of your stitches. Although no. this part is 12 mil and this is, is narrower, it should, it's purely to hold to the just hold and the, the amount of stitches because you'd need really long, straight needles, wouldn't you? To well, they'd be to too hold. long. <laughs> We've got a message from June. This is such an easy make, my first ever knitting kit. The yarn oh. is gorgeous, love from June. Oh, that's really nice, isn't it? That's really uh, the first one? ever knitting kit. Hi, both. This shawl is gorgeous. I made it last year and everyone I saw wanted me to make them mm. one as it's so super soft and warm. It, well, it, well, it is. Nice. It, it regulates your body temperature, you see. The, oh, we've the got another one. The, Hi ladies, I made this and it's the fluffiest, warmest wrap around. Very easy to make. Love it from Cordia. Yeah. Yeah, and I think okay. also if you're worried about, you know, when we didn't used to use circular for things like we this, didn't, did we? Did we? We had great long needles <laughs> and then they'd be really heavy. Yeah. But you the the weight of it sits on your lap. It so. does. It does, and it will keep you warm while you're knitting it, won't it? Yeah. Loads of and you it, coming in. Should we hold it ourselves? Yes. I mean, all of you are messaging in, so yeah. it's a lovely tri. Yeah. Can you see it? It's a lovely yeah. triangular shape. There we go here. We well, said I'd highly recommend this kit. It's so easy to knit up. Yeah, you start at this corner point, at a corner right. point, or your corner point, and you just increase on one side. Two, sti you knit two stitches, then you make the right. increase because then it keeps the edge nice and neat, and this top edge stays straight. So you would increase down to the point, mm. and then you decrease back up. To this and point. that's quite nice actually, so yeah. you end up on nothing. <laughs> you do. So you, you're, you're working down to the, the, the point yes. at the end. It goes really, really quickly because you know you're reducing and it's that mentality. Yeah, that, yes, oh, exactly. Gonna be soon. Now, this is available on split pay. So if you've not used that, the way it works is what we do is it depends on the price. We split it into half. Now, that's interest free. So you will pay, how much? It'll come up in a minute. $59.99 now, we'll send you the kit straight away and then you pay the other $59.99 next month. So it's just a way of you spreading the cost. It won't cost you any more. Um, and you don't have to. When you phone up or you order online, at that point they will ask you whether you want to do split pay. So entirely up to you. It's zero interest, no credit checks, nothing like that. Um, and as soon as the first payment goes through, it'll be sent out. You don't have to wait to pay for it. It's just a way of you spreading the cost. Yeah, it is. But this is a complete kit. You can buy the kit for somebody, you can make it for someone, or you can just make it yeah. for yourself. It's very wa it's washable, low temperature. Oh, is it? Yeah, you um, just try and so you chuck it in the machine. You can, yeah, low temperature. Um, it's dry flat, but it dries right. very, very quickly because of the 100% merino. Okay. That's one of the benefits of this. It dries it very so quickly. It is so soft. It's so it'll hold. If you're out and you're out and it's raining, mm. you won't. It holds about 30% of the moisture before you even know. Wow. That, that, that it's I guess because it's a sheep. Well, that's exactly. it. They're <laughs> they, out in all weathers, they aren't need they? It. And it has to regulate their body. I mean, it'd be lovely at this time of year, but I'm also thinking in the summer, you know, when we're sitting outside yeah. and then it gets a bit chilly. Chilly, just in the evening. Perfect, mm. because it's not going to uh, allow you to overheat because mm. it regulates that for you. And we've had so many, so many of you messaged in, which shows how yeah, wonderful I, it is. I'm so pleased with those messages to know that from the people that have actually bought it previously. Mm. And well, that's the thing, it. isn't it? Yeah. It's, the real, it's, it's the real people who've really <laughs> made it. Yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting to know how long it took. So Sarah say hi both, the shawl is gorgeous. I made it last year and everyone I saw wanted to me to make them one. It's so super soft. Well, Sarah, tell them it's £119.99 before you've even got your needles out. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you'll make them one. <laughs> Yes, just uh, just tell them where to order it from. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, just, yeah. Get just online, order it. It is absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Um, do carry on checking out for that. I'll just shall I go and shall I bring it over? Oh, shall I keep it there? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, now, if you love the yarn, we've also got the hat. There we go. So. With the hat, you get two balls of yarn. So you get the cream and you get the um, variegated. You get the cable needle and you get the pattern and it all comes all packaged and you get to make a hat. Beautiful. Again, a nice gift. So those, those the needles were £13. You get that for free. Nineteen ninety nine. A nice gift to give someone as a kit, but also a nice gift to actually knit it for somebody. 
So you can choose actually, because everybody likes to have a kit, don't they? So if you know a knitter wants something nice to yeah. make. It brightens up a dull day, doesn't it? If you wear it out wearing it does, all yeah. these rainbow colours. And fat and in fact, if you've got the blanket, you need the hat. You do don't need you? The so hat. in the Yeah, I mean look. So on the winter you can wear the blanket and the hat, and the summer just the blanket. <laughs> Uh, Sue says, hi both. I'm going by the recommendations. I've bought my kit. Thank you, love, Sue. Sue, you will love it. I mean, you, will. you know. You will. You won't regret it. It's gorgeous. Oh, I mean, and thank you, everyone, for messaging in with your recommendations. It, it really does make a difference because it's you lot that make you want to do it. Absolutely. It? You want to hear from real people. We do. Yeah, we do. And that encourages us to, to do more. Yeah. It motivates us and it's so, it's lovely, so lovely to hear. But um, hat is gorgeous, isn't it? So I've got the hat there, 19.99, and then on the side, it's the same yarn, so it's both using this cream and the variegated as well. But isn't it gorgeous? Love that. Right, brand new one. I'm going to move back over. The Breton Stripe Wrap. Now this, I'm loving this one. Isn't this gorgeous? Let's open this one all out. I'll hold one end and you hold the other. Yeah. We need it that way around, yeah. don't we? Yeah. So again, it's your full wrap. Look at that. It's but in beautiful shades right. of green and yeah. cream. And I think it's the same size. It's the same size. It's Ooh, the same. Go. Um, it's not quite the same pattern. But it's the um, same. But it's it's um, stocking stitch pattern. But you still increase two stitches in by a, a knit front and back in the in the stitch. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. This is available on three way split pay. So the full price for it is 179.99. It is so soft. <laughs> oh, I really want the this. The fibres are incredible. And, and do you know what's good about this is that you can sit on the sofa with this, but you've got your arms free, free. and yeah. knit. Yes. <laughs> and if you just get a bit too warm, you can just slip it back yeah. because you know you. Still and then if you like cosied covered. up and you just go, oh, it's lovely, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Mm. You know, if somebody comes to the front door, you think, oh, I've got to go. No, I've got to oh, go. I was going to say, go downstairs. That's because my lounge is upstairs. Oh, okay. So you have to go downstairs. So you go down into the hallway, which is quite cold in my house. And so this is 100% merino. It, it's all 100% wow. merino. So yeah. 179.99, 100% merino yarn. Um, so merino yarn, why, do, why does everyone love it so why? much? Okay, I've got my list here. Right. So um, it's hypoallergenic, non-allergenic, so there's no itch. Right. Because that's because of the um, super fine fibres. Okay, well, no, I mean, I'm an itchy person. Yeah. And, and it's a biodegradable um, item. Uh, okay. So if if you were to sort of say, leave this piece outside, like it would come off the sheet, because it's yeah. a yes. coat after all, it will biodegrade within 12 months. Wow, do not leave easy. your blanket outside. Can you imagine <laughs> the disappointment? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After 12 months, go, where is my blanket gone? Yeah, don't lose it. <laughs> yeah, don't lose it. It will biodegrade outside. <laughs> it's six times stronger than cotton. That's amazing. It is, isn't it? You wouldn't expect it to be that, would you? No. Very, very durable, very strong. Wow, very no, strong. I wouldn't expect that at all. Yeah, and um, we've said before, it's thermoregulating, so it, it keeps you warm in the winter. Yeah, so it's cold hot and cold. The, keeps you cool it's, in, in oh, the I summer. I cannot tell you how nice this is. It has, it's able to react to your body temperature, oh, which is okay. quite, yes. yeah, quite key, isn't it? Yeah, so um, that when you're, it can be nice and warm, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, stain resistant. <laughs> okay. Again, makes it easy. Yes, wash yes. It's odour resistant. It's odour resistant. Mm. And um, Ooh, so, if anything nice. does, I wish it smells nice actually. <laughs> if you're next to um, what a fire, a fire, mm. yeah, if you're next to a fire, mm. and you then the next day you won't smell that fire because it's absorbed that oh, odor. Wow. It doesn't release the odor until it's washed. Amazing! Uh, it's incredible this this yarn, what it can and wow. can't do. Um, we've said about the no itch, so it's really soft and gentle next to the. The, the skin um, it's again renewable because the sheep yeah grows a new coat exactly every year, isn't it so it's, it's amazing super chunky super cheeky chunky I super cheeky chunky yeah. so you get the needles with this one obviously and again it's the circular so if you do have problems when you're knitting and you make your wrists ache by having the circular the stitches are sitting on your lap and you're only going to have yeah. you're only knitting with that that's right and these are finely sanded and glossed Oh. So there's no snagging because you think, oh, wood is going to... Yeah, gonna but no, they are very no, soft, super, aren't they? Super fine, sanded and glossed, so they, the stitches just glide on and off. And this is the whole kit for it here. Yes. Let's have a look. We've got yeah, the whole kit for it. Still I'll get, take this um, one off. Let's have a look. 
here. It's 16 100 gram balls. Oh, wow. On that one. So 16 100 gram yeah. balls. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful, isn't it? Eight of each. Does that mean that's slightly bigger than the rainbow one? It's, uh, Have a look. Yeah, it's a similar. It's not. It's not knitted in this way, but it, it's similar. And I think because of its colours and the stripes, it would suit anybody, wouldn't it? As well. It would. Yeah. And I, I really think green's coming on trend. Mm, it's cool. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Right. Then we've got another blanket, the weekender blanket. Where's that one? That's oh, you've here. got that one. Yeah, I've got that one. Look at this. And I've got the kit. Absolutely stunning. This, this is, is amazing. The st I mean, stitch on this, it's look, very bone stitch. Look at the stitch on this yeah. one. So what's the dimensions of this blanket? This one is... Look at the stitch. This is like something woven that you'd find in a it does, posh... It does look woven. A posh it? country house hotel. The colour on this is beautiful. It's like a sort of a very soft and gentle, like a periwinkle yeah. blue. It is. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So this comes out... Um, 106 centimetres by 167. Okay, so good just over size. a metre. Metre and a half. half. Is just a bit more than a metre yeah, and a half square. 42 and a half inches by 67. Oh, that is beautiful. So it's amazing. 119.99. Again, you get the whole free, the free knitting needles. But look at the knitting needles. Hey! <laughs> look at the size yeah. of these knitting needles. Isn't that fab? Well, in this in this one, yeah, you get. Um, oh, I thought you got big chunky knitting needles. You get two patterns, so right. you get the garter stitch pattern for beginners and the herring herringbone pattern, which is for easy. Oh, I see. I think there should be two. Is it one set of needles, which is for the garter stitch pattern? Right. Which is what's three. You'd need twenty mil needles for this weekend, this herringbone. Oh, for the herringbone. Okay, so you'd need that separately yeah. if you were doing the herringbone pattern. Yeah, which is really easy. I'm, I was so... It's gorgeous though, <laughs> isn't so it? So pleased how easy it I is I don't know whether we can't sample. really... I'll have to hold this up because we can't do... You know, I forget now in this new studio what's overhead and what's yeah, not. It's, so it's, let me hold it up. Look at the pattern in that. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? It's gorgeous. But it'll grow really, really quickly. It does. So if you don't... If you don't want to do the herringbone, you can do a garter stitch. That's what the needles are for. If you do the herringbone, and you'll you need, need 20 mil. Needles. You'd need yeah. 20 mil needles. Yeah. So you still, because the, there's two patterns on the instructions, you're mm -hmm. still getting the free set of, of needles for one of those patterns, okay. which is the, the garter stitch one. Right. Yeah, so you'd need separate ones. But if you've already stitched the other one, maybe you bought that last time, mm. um, and you're looking for the next challenge, next pattern, I mean... Yeah. I'm thinking, if you're loving the it's, yarn, yeah. end of the It's bird. just a two-row... Two, oh, row, two row pattern. Well, we're gonna, you're going to show yes, us that in a minute. Yeah. We're just going to go through the rest of the kits. Um, so remember the split pay on this. So it's $59.99 now. We will send you the kit straight away. And then um, $59.99 next month. You don't have to wait to pay the whole thing. And honestly, it's just a way of you spreading your payments. It is interest. But if you're looking for your next wool couture kit, yes, this, this is, is the next one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this oh. is. It is, and the colour of it. Uh, it's gorgeous. You know, I think you're quite right in saying sort of periwinkle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because it's kind of yeah. that bluey, bluey, bluey grey, purpley, bluey grey. Yeah. It's a mixture. I think mm. if you put it next to blue, it would come out blue. Yeah. If you put it next to um, purple, lilacs. Or I mean, it's lovely. It's very. It would look very good in a neutral set, but also mm. with quite a floral set as well. It just makes me think country house hotel. <laughs> well, without a doubt. On the end of a without bed. Without a doubt, yes. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's a really lovely big size. So, you know, it's a really nice snuggle up thing. It is. You won't yeah. need the heating on with this. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. <laughs> keep you nice yeah. <laughs> Right. Next one. The Hannah blanket. Pop that down here for me, shall I? So this is a, a slightly smaller one. Yeah, there's two there. One's got black on it. Right. This is the Hannah blanket, isn't it? The Hannah one. Here we are. Again, this is your same composition, it's your merino. It is. It's still 100% merino. I mean, uh, this one is smaller in size. It is. This is your garter, just your straightforward garter stitch, easy. So it comes out. Yeah, I don't know why that's it. That says 63, but it's not. It's actually 59.99. Um, again, you get the free knitting needles with this you do, one. You do, you do. So this is a real beginner pattern. I mean, actually I'm thinking um, baby blankets. Babies, pram blankets. Yeah. And what you wrap them up in. Mm. And, they, 
And again, because it's merino, they're not going to overheat. You, no. you see a blanket like this wrapped around a toddler and you think, oh, they're going to get too hot. No, but inside. they won't do. But it's it doesn't. a lovely lap blanket, mm. really perfect just when really you want to warm up your knees, but a lovely, and because of the neutral tones. Yeah, suits anybody. Baby blanket, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Or a gift, you know, because you're getting everything. Remember all of these kits, because they're complete kits. They make ideal Christmas presents for people. They do, they do, and the instructions are all here. Yeah, even uh, if they can't knit, they can yeah, learn. Yeah, there's videos out there, Woolcature videos, so. Okay, so the, yeah, if you go on the Woolcature website, if you're a complete beginner, or there's a stitch you're not sure of, you can go onto their website. The details will be in the instructions that come with the kit, um, and then you can learn Ooh. from them. Yep. So that's Thank Hannah. You. The naturally neutral blanket. Is that this one? I right. I would say so, yes, because I've got it on the pattern in a different colourway. Right. It's, it's oh, yeah, so this same. is the naturally neutral yeah. blanket. Yeah. Again, another beginner, beginner skill level sort of thing. So if you want to teach yourself to knit, this is one of the ideal, oh, okay. ideal packs. Love the colour. So you've got black, you've got that lovely periwinkle blue, you've got a nice, soft, dusky pink, charcoal grey cream and then like a slate color at the end mm -hmm. so again nice gift for somebody look at the colors in that Shall it's hold gorgeous it isn't it see better you hold it up yeah isn't that beautiful again all of these are in this chunky merino yarn so it just depends which one you want 59.99 again um remember you will get free needles with this one as well but uh, nice for a beginner because it really is the simple. It's the sort of thing that get, really gets someone. Maybe they, mm. you've taught them to knit. They can mm. do a little bit of knitting. They can, and they're, they're 15 mil needles, so they're quite chunky. Well, mm. they're really chunky. Yeah. And they've only got to do four four rows, and they've already done sort of uh, yeah, and they've done this. You know. <laughs> so the hardest part for them would probably be the cast on. Oh, yeah, to that's begin true. with, and, and uh, again, you just got to practice, haven't you? Really, it's like everything. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But that is beautiful, right? Hot water bottles. Ah. The monogram one. I need to move over here. Um, where is he? Where's the hot water? Oh, he's down the front with, with the mon. No, that's not the monogram one. Oh, okay. It's the dusty pink one. No, is that not? Oh, okay. Yeah, we haven't got the finished sample for that one. So. You will get, in the kit, you get the hot water bottle and the needles for free. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now I can see it. And the needles themselves are worth £4. Now, the great thing about this is, I know it says M on it, but it comes with an alphabet. So you can choose what letter you put on it. And the fact you're getting the hot water bottle and the needles, what a lovely gift for somebody. Just 26 99 To knit them a merino ch hot water bottle cover, how gorgeous is that? Um, and it even has little yarn pom-poms as well. It's beautiful. And uh, we're going to do a little demo for this one later as well. Right, and we've also got another hot water bottle cover. So pick him up in this gorgeous mustard. Now, again, you get the free hot water bottle and the needles, and I love the tassels on this one. Look, so I presume you make the pom-poms. You make the pom-poms and you make the, uh, the cord. And you make the cord as yeah, well. And well, look, isn't it lovely? It's like a proper jumper, <laughs> isn't it? I think that is stunning. So that you'll get everything again. So again, what a lovely gift for somebody. Mm. Or you could give the whole kit to someone because you've got the needles and the hot water bottle. It kind yeah. of includes everything, doesn't it? That is just toasty. I'm in a, a knitting group and they've been asked to make umpteen hot water bottle covers because it seems to be, again, one of yeah. the things. Because, you know, it means um, having your heating off half an hour less or something. Exactly. You know, it's, it's Under a blanket with a hot water bottle. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. I mean... Yeah. At the moment, if you want to keep your heating costs down, yeah, a hot water bottle really does help. Yes. Um, have we been through them all now? Oh, scarves. Oh, sorry. Car scarves. Okay, so I've got the grey one and the pink one. Okay, so the this is an app. Absolute beginners. Well, it's called it's called the absolute beginners scarf knitting kit. Comes with free needles. But do you know what? If you're not an absolute beginner, you're going to find this a breeze. It's a beautiful. Um, it's like a slaty grey. 
So you're getting the needles, you're getting the um, yarn, and you're getting the pattern. Yeah, two patterns in one on that one. Oh, is there? There is, yeah. So okay. you've got a garter stitch pattern and then the basket weave pattern. Right, okay. So this is, you get the two patterns, but they will both, so they will mix. Oops, that was a little bit of a needle <laughs> landslide. Um, so in the pattern for this, can I show you? You either get, you can knit the garter stitch one for absolute beginners. This is the pink version, which we've got as well, but you can knit the gray one also comes with this pattern, which is like a basket weave effect. Isn't that lovely? So this one, 29.99, obviously the yarn is gray in this one. You can either do that really simple garter stitch one, or you could do this basket weave stitch one. But the pattern comes with both. So that's the grey version. Um, and then the absolute beginner's pink version is, um, again, you've got the three balls, so 300 grams of the cheeky chunky merino yarn and the free needles worth eight pounds. And then you've got the pattern. So you can either do the really simple garter stitch or you can make this lovely basket weave. That's so nice. I really like that. It looks really really effective doesn't it what a beautiful scarf right so let's go i'm going to go back to mandy should we start off with the breton the breton the breton okay. stripe breton and you can stripe. i'm just move a little bit of space there we go so the way this one that um, mandy's going to demonstrate now is the breton scarf so this this gorgeous well, it's not a scarf, is it? <laughs> no, I know. It could be. You could make several out of it. That would be the, the <laughs> oddest scarf. It's more of it's more of a wrap. There we go. I'll wear it while you knit. <laughs> okay. You could make um, um, loads of scarves out of this. It's 1,600 grams in this kit. So you can see here how it's uh, working out. So this is my increasing edge here, and this is the edge that gets left straight. Oh, so okay. All the, all the increasing and the yarn changing and the yarn wrapping for um, your shaping is all done one side. So this side will always remain right. straight. So everything's done this, this end. Oh, okay, got and it. And as you can see, like a lot of my stitches are on the cable, so I'm yeah. just gonna push them on there, bring this round, and I'm ready. You sort of feel like, am I going to be knitting in a circle? Yeah, then? you do, you do. And, and I, I sometimes get a bit like, mm, yeah. But you can just let go of that needle. Because it's just a needle, yeah. it's just a long needle. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite strange. So here, because I'm carrying on, carrying, ho holding up my yarn as I'm going up the stripe, so I'm ready to, because it's six mm. rows of each colour. So all I'm so you're not cutting off yarn? No. Oh. No, too many ends. That'd be so, so many ends. But I suppose you could because you'd cover them in the tassels, wouldn't you? Yeah, but that's a lot a of ends, isn't it? It is, it is. So I, I'm just, um, I just wrap the yarn around and then I'm going to knit my first stitch and that holds that yarn up here. Oh, okay. And it carries it on up. So you just so. wrap it round. And that's my knit stitch, so. I just get onto the next one, second one, and then this is where I do um, the increase, which is a knit front and back. Oh, so it's not right on the edge. That's right, yeah. If okay. it was right on the edge, I think it, it would be a bit bumpy. Right. A bit. That would be for me anyway, a bit all over the place. <laughs> so you're going to knit into the front of the stitch, but before you um, normally take it off, you're going to knit into the back of the stitch like that. And there and it does create a bar which you can see on some of the other rows down here you can see the bar going across and that's oh okay my, my yes increase. yeah and now my three stitches are four and i'm literally going to just knit all the way across to the other end and then i will purl back and it's that's how straightforward it is on this um, stocking stitch and just push my stitches from the cable onto Onto the, the wooden, wooden needle, yeah, and then I just keep. It's a lot easier because imagine if you had great big long needles yeah, here, they'd be all sticking and in. And you'd be doing the, the chicken yeah. needles, wouldn't you? Yeah. They'd be, they'd be knocking what, everything around. And it's all right at this stage, but <laughs> then it gets really, really heavy, doesn't it? It does, it does. So, yeah, it's very, very easy to, to knit with. Like I said, the, the needles are so um, finely sanded and glossy 
that the yarn does just Oh, look, and this yarn, off actually, it. I've just noticed, comes yeah. out of the centre of the balls. Well, I well. I pull it out of the centre mm. of the ball because I've, I, personally, I think it keeps that... that, that yeah, but it's not, it's not all yarn comes out the centre no, very well. No, it, it's not tightly twisted no. like a lot of, um, uh, say, acrylic yarn and things like that. Um, and if I pull it off this side and it jumps everywhere, I find that it, for knitting, it it loosens that um, texture that it's the way oh, it's been spun. I see what you mean. Yeah, no, but it comes out really well because sometimes you start from the centre and it doesn't come out very <laughs> it well. It doesn't. No. Yeah. Well, I can't guarantee that. I don't think they did, but it was only a couple of metres that I had to oh, okay. unravel anyway. But that again is it's just a, a personal preference. Um, I love this. I feel like a pacer. <laughs> For any younger Pacer. viewers, you won't know what they are. <laughs> I don't think I do. You do those green and white stripes, um, sweet, a bit like Chewitt's, only there were green and white stripes called Pacers back in the 80s, no, I, I think. Don't remember them. Do you not? No. Maybe they only had them in certain no. places. They were Spangles like. Spangles and things mm, like they that. They were like, they were chewy like a Chewitt, but they were green and white. This colour oh. as well. Love so them. I'm just going to anymore. flick this round now, you see, to, to work. Okay. The same as you would with. Your own needle. So just, yeah, round. don't keep going round and round. Yeah, no, and round. You'll end up with a very strange blanket. Just pearl back for my stocking stitch. Just purling. So does it take a bit of getting used to these big chunky needles? Um, Yes, but I think after you've done a few rows, I, oh, okay. I'm getting more t used to the fact that there's only this area to hold because I hold my straight needles quite uh, oh, quite a okay. ways back. So I'm I'm getting used to holding it near yes, so near the point. Um, but I do, I do. Everybody knits in lots of different ways, and I, as you can see, I naturally hold the cross there anyway. So um, it's, they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, I guess you just get used to you it, do, don't you? You do, and, and this just slides as you're going along, they just slide onto the cable yeah. because the way you would sl naturally slide them at the end of your straight needles. But they just fall onto it. It just falls onto it, yes. I don't even have to worry about doing it. All I, all and I the do. needles come free in this kit. Amazing. Worth I 13 think, pounds. I was just going to say that. I think it's 13 pounds. Yeah. That's really so good. So that's really it? good. A real bonus, that is. So and I'm just going along to the end. And that's it. It's a two row. It's a two row. And you get loads, loads of yarn in this, in this. Yep, six, 1,600 grams. 1,600 grams. Wow. <laughs> so you get exactly the same. You get eight balls of each yeah. of the yarn. Remember, it's 100% merino wool. 1,600 grams, 179.99. And that is available on three-way split pay. Yep. So you pay one payment now of 59.99 and then you pay the next payment next month next month next month by which point you will have finished the blanket you will and if sure. you don't need it so um long or such a deep point mm. if oh, you could just stop you can just stop if it says increase up until you've got 96 stitches mm. then if you didn't want it to be 96 oh, that's stitches, true. the measurements are on the pattern yes then you could say go to 80 stitches and then yeah, depending decreasing. on how long you and want And then it. you'd have some left over for but what a lovely your little hat. Lean. So I've just come to the last stitch here. And the way mm. I carry it up on the last stitch, this is, just, this is just my preference, is that I put the green over it as well. And then I purl them together here. Oh, OK. Because now I'm going to change to the green here. Yeah, and I guess this is the end that you put the tassels on as well. Yes, so um, you can use so you can measure it by your increasing. So you could do a tassel every every second increase. Ah, I see. Um, and that's just a marker for you, or you do it at the end or the middle mm. of each of each stripe. You just yeah. So on this one, I'll just show you if I laid it flat. Yeah. You can see. Um, yeah, they've got yeah, like two two each stripe two per colour. Yeah. So it's just done on the inside, say mm. like on the second row in, and then the. And there's enough yarn in your kit yes. to do that as well. Yes. Oh, lovely. Um, I just need to recap the Ellie blanket okay. because the, uh, the other wrap, the Ellie one, <laughs> is massively popular. And we, we sold out last time. I don't want you to miss out again this time. A couple of times. 
So this is beautiful. I love this. So with this one, you get the cream uh, merino yarn and then you get the variegated and it gives it this beautiful finish. And what they've done for the tassels is the tassels are actually a mix of both. Right. When everyone checks out that we have got fewer than 20 of this kit left, um, and last time we sold out, so if you want to get hold of this, mm. it, and the time before that, so we have only got a few left. Yeah. It is beautiful as it's well. It's still sort of a stocking stitch effect. Right. But you um, slip a stitch. So you knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, oh. knit one, slip one, and then you're um, purling on the way back, or, or it's the other way around. You either purl one, slip one, purl one, slip mm. one, and then knit across. And that's what gives this raised stitch effect here. Oh, I see. So that's why it looks different to your, your stocking stitch. You're right, still doing so if we your, look at them together. Yeah. You're still doing your knit and purl rows, but on the rainbow one... Can we go overhead just to see? Oh, sorry. Are we out of shot? <laughs> yeah, no, they're just sort of out. <laughs> and then they can see, because yeah. it's quite interesting so, to see how it looks yeah. like the... Can you yeah. see, if I come over, look, how this, with this one, You've got the raised. stitches almost jump? Yes, and that's your slip stitches. Right. So... Um, it's uh, change yarn, purl one, slip one to the end of the row. So purl one, slip one, purl one, slip one, mm. purl one, slip one. And then you knit to the end. And then on your next one, it's purl one, slip one, purl one, slip one. And when you're knitting it, the slip one, when you knit it, kind of jumps around yeah, because yeah. you've slipped it. Yeah, so that I mean. stretches the length of the stitch to create this raised Oh, it's area. lovely, isn't it? And, and it's like ribbed, really, isn't it? Because you've got a line of... Mm. Um, but it almost um, makes it even more variegated as well, doesn't yes, it? It's really it blending in together. You've, you've got the two depths. Okay. Depths. Um, beautiful. Please do check out on the wrap. It is gorgeous. It's lovely. Love this. Always very popular. Right, I'm just going to go to the hat so you can get ready yes. for your next Which, uh, your next demo. Um, I'm just going to do the... the um, yeah, sorry, Mandy, we're going to do the weekend. Do next next. The, the weekend. weekend. <laughs> I'll just recap the hat. Been massively popular as well. Just nineteen ninety nine. Again, it uses this cream yarn and this rainbow effect yarn. You get one ball of the cream, one of the rainbow, um, and you get the free needles worth thirteen pounds and the um, pattern as well. So this makes a really good gift for somebody. There we go. It also makes a really nice kit for somebody. So whether you um, choose to knit the hat or whether you want to give it away to somebody, or a dinner, or as a gift. $19.99, it's really nice. It's a nice, warm, cosy knit as well. And remember, because it's the merino wool, it is hypoallergenic, because it won't be itchy. So it's a nice um, hat to have, particularly as the weather's getting a little bit colder. Right, so let's go back to the... Now, this is the most popular of our new blankets, let me show you, which is the we it's called the Weekender. I, I wonder whether it's because it's kind of like you've gone for a, a weekend away, country house, hotel. Nice. Mm, wouldn't that be lovely? Actually, you know, if you were going away somewhere and you could just pop this in the car as well. Yes, it is. It's, it's just gorgeous. Everybody's going to fight for it. They are. One of those they things that are. once you've um, made it, mm. it's whenever you get visitors or even the family that you know you live all together you everyone's going to have this. little fights yeah. yes You're i going think to have so because about this. it's a really calming gentle soft mm. color yeah and it's really yeah, calming and... gentle soft yarn so it all goes together doesn't it yeah there's not a name on, on if you've done the ellie just... blankets well maybe this is your next stage yes. now in the kit you get all the yarn you get the needles for free um and the beginner one is the, the garter, the stitch, garter stitch, where it's just garter stitch. However, this blanket here has been knitted in this herringbone stitch. Uh, yeah. And you will need to buy separate needles yeah, for that. Yeah, because the, the needles that come free with the kit yes. um, are 15 mil, and you need those for the garter stitch. Right. The herringbone, you need 20 mil needles for. Okay, so you would need to get separate ones. Right. Yeah. Show me how did this so, clever stitch is done then. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be making it because <laughs> <I, laughs> so you just you knit your very first stitch at the end, which is what it says, and okay. then it will say slip one, knit wise, and then you knit, and you've got your little asterisks so you can repeat the pattern. Right, it's just okay. Two stitches. So, oh, where's my yarn gone? Lost it. There we go. So we're just going to slip a stitch, then we're going to knit the next one. 
Right. Okay. And then you'd normally pass the slip stitch over, but you're only going to pass it over to the next knit to the previous needle, and you're going to knit into the back of it and slip it off. And that creates Whoa. one of the lines that go across. We'll do that again. So you slip mm -hmm. one. Slip one. You knit one. Now, I tend to just slip it to that point mm. and knit it. Oh. So it comes off. So you slip knit. Almost. Slip knit. <laughs> slip one. So it's no slipping the whole thing off. Yeah, you yeah. slip knit. Knit one. And then you slip it, knit it. And that gives you that bar that goes oh, to the left. Okay, that's really clever, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so we do that all the way across to there and off. And then you're going to slip, knit, and then bring it over. If you want to go back to the other needle to knit it, you can. I just find it easier just to do it on the same so there's my slip one, I'm pulling it over. I've never, have you ever it. seen this no, before? No, I haven't. Never seen and I, this. And, and I've really enjoyed making this, this yeah. uh, swatch, which is almost cushion cover size really, isn't it? Uh, I hadn't come across it before. That one, you slip it. Oops. Yeah, I mean, I've done plenty of slip yep. stitch, but never slip knits. Okay, slip, knit, slip knit it. I like that term, slip knit. Slip knit. <laughs> <laughs> slip one, knit one. And then you just do something slightly different on the pearl row, which makes the bar go to the right. Oh, and I've forgotten where I was now. Slip one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Easy done, isn't it? Over. But because it's just two stitches, you, yeah. this is a very good in front of the telly. And, and it's very easy to pick up. Very easy to pick up. Oh, yeah, because I guess so, you can already see where you are. Yeah, yeah. But as a, a stitch, if you've not done it before as well, like you say, um, yes. I haven't done it before. So I've come to the last stitch, and it does just tell you to knit that one. Okay. So that's what I've done. Because it does give it quite a chunky, solid feel, doesn't it? It does, it does, yeah. And um, my tension's very much, very similar to what the blanket's mm. uh, been made in. But it gives you your tension and everything in, in the pattern. I just need to check what I'll do first on the next row. So it's purl two stitches together, but don't drop off the stitch of your right hand needle. You purl it into it instead. So you don't have to do anything in the beginning. I've got my stitches too. So I'm going to purl two together. Purl two together. But then I'm not going to drop those two off you um, first time you give it a needle and then then you go into the middle one, so the middle of those two before you drop it off. So I'm to use my nails here. So you go into there. It's the first one, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's always the first one, yeah. Good catch. So let's go back here. Pearl into that one. And do that. And then you pull them off. Right. So you pearl two together, it'll be easier to show now. Pearl two together, don't drop them off. Pearl into the middle. And then drop it off. Okay. So pearl two together. So pearl two together. I'm sure I'm doing it right, aren't I? But don't drop the stitches off your right hand needle. Instead, pearl into the first stitch on your left hand needle. And, and then drop them. So pearl two together, pearl, pearl two one. Together. Pearl that first one mm. of those two together. And then off. We'll do a couple more, you'll be able to see yeah. on the other side the stitches forming. Well, at least it's, it's very interesting to knit. And it that's is. the thing, isn't it? It is. But you haven't got to worry about a 16 row pattern where you need your lifeline in and no. just in case yeah. you drop a yeah. stitch or anything. So here, oh, let's, you yeah, can so let's see. Get a really close up of this. Yeah. There we go. So on the knit row, my slopes are going. To, yeah. the, to the left when you're knitting it, but on your pearl row, they're coming back across. It is really, way. I mean, it's a work then, of art. And that's it's it. It's beautiful. And that's all it is, and it's really pretty. Just a, Can you imagine, I mean, a blanket this size, 100% merino wool, mm. what it would cost? <laughs> <laughs> I if, know. You were, if you were to purchase it, make yes. that. Oh. Wouldn't be 119 dollars no. it would be a No, I think more. it would be five times that, really. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's, um, that's how straightforward it is. That's fab. Um, that's gorgeous. Thank you so much for showing me that. We're going to do the um, the monogram hot water bottle next. Okay. I will just move the blanket. I've got a floor full of blankets now. We haven't got the blanket, have we? Um, you can choose 
Let me take these off you. You can choose which initial you have on the um, hot water bottle. It's entirely up to you. The kit is in this lovely dusky pink and cream. So you will get a chart that will come with your kit. So you can choose what you put on it. Or do you know what? If you don't want to do that, because it shows you how many stitches you've got, you could make your own chart. You could. You could have a heart. You could. You've got you've got the graph area there. Mm. So you, you can, can put whatever you like. Whatever, yeah. Whatever you, whatever you like. Whatever. Obviously just object. one colour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is that small uh, the back the back of it the, bottle, okay. the hot, hot water bottle cover it's the short side as, as they're calling it so this is short side and you start with with the neck the ribbon on the neck mm -hmm. and then you do so many rows and then we get to the eyelets which yeah. I'm ready to, to show you how to do and then you cast on three each side to create the shaping to go round and then you so this is this is a flap. The long side will start here, but mm. you'll carry on right. a lot longer. And I think it's lovely bit. to have something that's personalised, but nice and subtle as well. Yes, yes. So, so in the kit, you off. get a ball, no, two balls of the um, the dusky pink merino yarn, and one ball of cream, and you get the free hot water bottle and needles. Right, we've you got do. a I couple think of it's minutes. A two litre hot water bottle. It's about ten pounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we've got to make the eyelets. I've done the ribbon, which is knit one, purl one. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to knit two together. And because I've lost a stitch, I've got to make a stitch, so I'm going yarn over. Two together. Yarn over. Two, two, and two together. Oh, okay. And yarn over. And you can see the yarn overs. And those it, are the, yeah, the eyelets. They are, and that creates the eyelets. So when you um, do your... Okay. Row coming back, and that's all. And there's enough across. yarn in here to make the rope cord and yes, the pom poms and that's as really well. Easy as well. The rope cord, you just cut a length, you fold it in half, you continually twist it until it starts twisting on itself, oh, and okay. it becomes a cord in its own. And you use the old-fashioned yeah, card. Yeah, I know. Method. I love that. Although, if you have a pom pom maker, it's quicker. <laughs> you do. But it does make <laughs> gorgeous pom poms. It does. So, on this second row, we've made the eyelets. We're just purling. So when you come across... Oh, yeah, what happens when you hit Yeah, up? some people go into this bit. If mm. you want a small eyelet, fine. I like the big eyelet, so I just go into the back of it and purl it off. So then I'm purling that stitch. Oh, okay. And then yeah, I wouldn't know which one to go, whether yeah. to go in the front or back with so that. So it depends on how big you want your eyelets, really. And that's what the so cord and the, the cord goes through. It is. So you, I mean, you automatically... A, that's such a lovely present for somebody. Yes, it is. And like you say, you can personalise it, can't you, with their yeah. initials. Mm. Um, you could even draw a, a basic cat or a dog, depending on what... Well, you could, because you've actually got quite a lot of squares there. You've got yes. 20 by 20 squares. Yep. There we go. So there's there's my eyelets on here. Oh, I see. Just made my eyelets. If I stretch it out a bit, you can. Yeah, no, I can see, can that. see that. So just eyelets. like, let me show you this one. So just like Mandy's done here. Yeah. That really simple of just slipping one. That's your. And eyelets. that's it. And that's it. Because you've only got 13 stitches, it's not mm. like you've got a long line of them to do. So the next row will tell you to cast on three. And the way I do it is just like my normal cast on. Sorry. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Happy New Year. Quite long ready. needles for this. Um, I'm just going to cast on the way I normally cast on, which is the cable cast on. Oh well, that's so lovely. That way, pop it on my. And do like that. And do that. So that's one. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you so two. much, Mandy. It's been really yeah, lovely. That's gone so having quick. You here. It's gone so <laughs> fast, hasn't it? Um, thank you for joining me today um, on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Please do keep on checking out, especially for the Ellie Blanket. We're very low in stock. Um, coming up tomorrow on Sewing Street, um, John is presenting at 8 o'clock. He's loving Kay Fassett. Mm. I think that will be all things fabric. Oh, the fabuloso Wendy, Wendy Orlando's in at nine o'clock with her shopper to shoulder bag. I've seen a picture that looks I've gorgeous. I've got it missed her by 24 hours. Oh, <laughs> me too. Love Wendy. <laughs> and I haven't seen her for ages. Um, at 10 o'clock, it's all about the sewing room tools. 11 o'clock, Wendy will be back with her Bargello cushion. And at 12 o'clock, it's all things sewing machines. So um, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. Anything you've got in your basket, please do check out. Um, otherwise, you'll miss out. And thank you for joining me today. I'll see you back here on Thursday and um, be here for Amber Makes Third Birthday um, with Amy where we've got three shows so you have a good rest of the day sewing and I'll see you back here on Thursday. <laughs>